Welcome to Sydney Parade in South County Dublin for the Bukit Championship final between Balbriggan and North Kildare. I'm Isabel Joyce, joined by Fintan McAllister. We'll be calling you through the start of this game. Earlier, Balbriggan won the toss and they elected to bat. No surprises there, Fintan. No, again, I think similar to yesterday. Um, like Pembroke, you know, you win the, you win the, like Marine, you win the toss in the final. You know, you look to um, look to bat first. Yeah, big, big prize here for whoever wins this team, uh, this match. Um, promotion to the Premier League. That's a huge, uh, that's a real incentive for both teams. If they needed an extra incentive, that is. Probably don't need much much more incentive than just to win the competition. But uh, promotion would be a huge boon for both teams. Yeah, well, in some, in some ways, there's probably more in, at stake in this game than, than probably yesterday, because this defines your season next year as well, so where you're going to be playing your cricket. Yeah, both clubs have uh, a real wish to be playing at the top level. Um, and Valbriggan have made big moves this year, haven't they? Greg Forge is captaining them. Uh, such a classy batsman. We'll, we'll see him a little bit later on. Yeah, I've played with Greg for a number of years there now, so... So I know a good bit about him. Um, hits the balls in, in, in different areas that, that you wouldn't expect. And uh, yeah, as you say, really classy batsman. Yeah, we know his, his brother Matt probably a little bit better. I know they both play into pro cricket, but Matt would be the one that we know better. But Greg, kind of more of the 50 ever batsman than the power hitter that we're used to seeing from Matt. Um, once he gets in, he's really beautiful to watch. But anyway, we'll be seeing him later. He's, he doesn't even have his pads on yet. But um, it'll be, I think Connor Fletcher will open up. He's also an exciting talent. He's for plays for the Does Leinster Bolts. Connor Fletcher and Dan Dar. He'll be joined by Ganim Dara. But Connor will take the first ball. Yeah, I've played against Connor a, a number of times as well. Now he's he's a serious batsman himself. He's been around for the last couple of years and. He's really been in the runs every year for Paul Brigham. Yeah, exciting game for both teams. North Kildare will be glad in some ways to get out in the field. So I, I know people bat first in the final, but it's it's always nice to go out onto the pitch at the start of the game as, as a group. It's such a funny thing about cricket that only two okay, of you go out when you're batting <laughs> and the rest of you might not get out, out there for half the day. Yeah, and in some ways, going out on the field can kind of clear a few nerves as well. You know, you're involved in the action um, straight away, so that, that can kind of clear the nerves for later on when you're batting. So it's Wasif Ali is going to take the first ball from the Wilfield Road end. I think uh, if he can start well, then he'll settle the nerves for his team. Always important for the opening bowler to set the tone. We saw that yesterday from Marion, didn't we, from Max Nell. He was incredible up, up front. Um, helped them get the start they needed. It was a little bit loose later on, but uh, the game was kind of won by then. So Wasi Fali from the Wilfield road, en road End to Connor Fletcher. Really nice shot first up from, from Fletcher. Shot of real class, but doesn't get it through the infield. Yeah, straight the covers there, but, but good intent straight away from the first ball and straight out of the middle of the bat. I'm sure these lads probably were looking at the, the stream yesterday, looking at the, how the pitch played and, and what the ground was looking like, etc. So. Yeah, the same pitch as yesterday. It was a little bit sticky, but um, a little bit of dew this morning might help the ball just come on a little bit better. That one just kept a little bit lower, but uh, it'll be slow when they hit it into the outfield so they'll have to run well Balbriggan especially these first 10 or 15 overs until the ground dries up and the conditions here are quite good for Balbriggan actually it's overcast might be a bit of swing it's probably a good toss to lose kind of like when you're playing up in Stormont uh, did you see the stats on, on batting first in Stormont I heard something about it yeah I'll talk about it just now 
just a little bit of extra bounce there from Ali. Well, bold, good length. Yeah, so in Stormont, I think it's 13 of the last 15 games played there were won by the team batting first. But the toss, people win the toss and just bowl first every sing, like, nearly every single time um, because they can't resist it. It looks like it's, you should bowl first. <laughs> right, Basically, yeah. you're, like, you're looking at it. I, I know the stats say this, say, say we should bat, but I just, how can you not bowl first on this? And uh, we saw it again. Zimbabwe won the toss and bowled first on, uh, on f what day was it? Friday. And Ireland set a really big t uh, target. They probably would have would have won that game if it hadn't rained. And we were going, why, why don't you listen to the stats? 13 out of 15, that's huge. <laughs> but they fell, f fell into the trap. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, back to this game. Good start from Wasi Valley. Four dots so far. Good attacking field. There's two catchers and a ca um, in one slip, one gully, and one in front of the bat. So they expect it to hold up a little bit. I think it's a good field, Finton, having that catcher in front of the bat. Yeah, big time. Yeah, just if you watch it from yesterday, you know, some of them kind of came through um, a, bit, a bit slower, and they could just pop there and could give a catch straight to him. So that's the first over gone. Oh, misfield, and that's disappointing for the bowler. He'd done a really good job. It was going to be a maiden, but uh, Hannah Fletcher was alive to it, came through for a single. So one over gone, and Balbriggan one without loss. Yeah, I think he'd be really happy with his first over there now. He just, um, that he's him to only one run from it, which came from a misfield. So he'd be quite happy with that. That'll give him a bit of confidence. Yeah, first ball was a little bit shorter probably than he meant to, but Fletcher not able to place it between the fielders. And opening the bowling for North Kildare and doing so from the St. John's Road end of the ground is Muzamil Shazad. So Muzamil Shazad. Well, the second over. having a quick run through I think technically only the first bowler of the day is allowed to do the run through but I don't think it's a rule that umpires make people stick to really exciting talent Muzamil he's the leading wicket taker for Balbrig or for North Kildare there this season and he's done well enough to be in the mix for the Ireland under 19, so someone to watch. Yeah, great to see the youth uh, coming through Norkel there. Chance, but down, it was a sharp chance. The keeper to move to his right, it was low. Made a good effort, though, he'll be disappointed that one didn't stick. Yeah, it was probably a difficult chance there. It came through quite quickly. Um, he rocked onto the back foot there and the ball probably nicked when he was behind them. Tough chance, but I'm sure he probably still thought that he could have could have grabbed it. Would have been a big wicket too. Yeah, it would have been huge, wouldn't it? What a moment that could have been for North there. So a life for Fletcher. Um, it's two types of fielders, aren't there? There's the ones that would say that was too low, was well, not my fault, or there's the ones who think, oh, I should have taken it, and put themselves under pressure. Usually, a better player if you if you expect yourself to catch those. Yeah, I think he'd probably be disappointed with himself looking at it there on the replay now. Really nice action, Mazamil. Just has that little pause at the top before he gets some really good um, transfer of weight through his front leg. Yeah, both bowlers, uh, both open bowlers have have started really nicely here. If they can settle in on this area. And he's got away with that. That's the that's the full toss, and Fletcher just catching it on the inside of half with the bat. 
Probably a chance for the first boundary. Would have settled his nerves. It's always difficult after you've nicked one. You're trying to put it behind you, but you can't help but think about it. Very true. Karazmas fielding that. No doubt we'll see him stretching the whole way through the innings. Lo loves, loves a stretch, Wackar. Yeah, I've played uh, a couple of years with Wackar as well at Malahide, and the, he was then with Clontarra for a while. Certainly was. That's a really good length. I think that was probably a front foot ball, but he's played it on the back foot. Really good over from the youngster, Muzmil Shazad. It's a maiden, and Valbergen are one without loss. So yeah. we're gonna have the first look at the left-hander. Yeah, great start here from uh, from Norco there. Um, two overs in, I think the nerves will be settled. You know, just getting those that first over through without a boundary is, is ideal for them. So they'll be looking to push on this again. I think if they don't go searching and just, just keep sticking to that line and length. I'd be very happy. Well, the key is not searching, especially on a wicket like this. It's just stay on your line and length, set good fields, and uh, the pressure to score runs in a final in particular is, is very difficult. So Ganem Dara be his first first ball of the day. Captain says he likes to dig in to score his runs. That's a, a good trait for an opening batsman. Yeah, great. All opening batsmen have to have that a bit of guts about them just to, to get through a new ball in tricky conditions when, when you don't know what the wicket is like or what it's going to play like for yourself. Solid. Very solid. Yeah, positive on the fence there. So pulling well in tandem these two. This is Wasif Ali pulling his second over from the Wilfield Road end. A full, but there is. Good protection on the offside. You can see James Smith there just shaking his hand. That one was hit well. Yeah, that was it harder, James there. Still holding his hand there at the moment. Difficult to get, get it past James, such a such a big guy. We'll see him bowling later on, I'm sure. Yeah, you can cover a lot of ground. Clinton just getting attacked by, by a wasp here. That's the problem with uh, commentating outdoors. <laughs> Rick mentioned we didn't, we didn't name them earlier on. Our two standing umpires are Will Houston. He's at the Willfield Road end, just signalling to his partner that there are two balls left. That's, that's Willie Clark. Yeah, two very good umpires. Well, Tom Stanton mentioned it in his speech yesterday that the umpires were really good and apologised for giving them so much stick, said it was really important to have good umpires in the final and I think he's completely right. They can change the game. Yeah, I think the two yesterday did an excellent job. Um, both of them went unnoticed and usually that means you've, you've had an unbelievable game as, a, as an umpire. Yeah, I always think that uh, if you can't remember who umpired the game, it means they've done a good job. It's just getting a little bit too full here, Wasif Ali. Been driven a couple of times, just that time did well off his own bowling. It's sh shuddering, shuffling action into the crease. And now he's aired in line. That's really well played by Ganem Dara. First boundary of the day. Yeah, lovely little tuck off his legs there. Um, fine, fine leg, he's, he's quite wide there. Just wondering maybe if he could come a small bit straighter. 
Yeah, yeah uh, he was almost at, I wouldn't say deep backward square, but pretty closer closer to backward square than, than he should be. I don't think he would have cut it off anyway. You're not going to have a fielder there, but yeah, he could do with coming finer. Three overs gone. Balbergen five without loss. Again, it's just that arc for a left-hander into the into the pads, kind of. Right up in the block hole. Connor Fletcher just looks a little bit edgy here. You're not used to seeing him like this. He's normally such a laid-back guy. He is a yeah, very cool uh, customer, is Connor. Um, I'm sure he be just looking to get his, his boundary away as well and that might settle a few nerves well, the real bonus for Balbriggan this year has been their new coach Andre Botha back in the country and already his team into the final yeah Bowles what a, what a legend for, for Irish cricket he has been yeah, really good coach, great knowledge. I know he's doing a couple of one-on-ones with some of the lads from Clontarf, and uh, looks to be doing. They look to be doing well. We'll we'll give him some credit there. It's always hard to tell, isn't it, what, what the reason is. And there it is, a full one on the legs for Connor Fletcher to get away his first boundary away. Places it well, back with a square, and that's four more. Yeah, just a full toss, bit of a freebie for him there to get off the uh, get off. The to his first boundary and that'll definitely settle a few nerves there but um, yeah back to Boatsy it's it's great to see him back in the in the country spent a couple of years back in South Africa yeah it's great to have him back and also for just because he's a legend of the Irish game but such a good coach it's so important to keep top level coaches in the country especially the ones that are willing to work with the youngsters try and keep that talent pool coming through Much better from Muzamil Shazad. Yeah, and he's he's done a great job with with Balbriggan, getting them through to the final. Um, and it'll be their first time if they, if they do if they do go up. I think both sides actually, whoever goes up and wins this, it'll be their first time in the in the Premier League. They've kind of been there thereabouts, haven't they, Balbriggan for a while? But this and that's onto the legs again. Not a full toss, but too full. And there's lots of work to do for Wasi Valley. Keeps it to two, though. Well, fielded from him. Yeah, did well. Get around, cut it off. Yeah, the, I was just going to say the intent shown by Balbriggan for recruiting Andre both shows that they mean business, doesn't it? I think when you invest in your coaching, coaching your youth and your first team, it shows that you've got the right mindset. Yeah, big time. They've got a good use structure in place in Balbriggan. Short, but came through a little bit quicker than Connor Fletcher expected. Ends up kind of swatting that straight. Yeah, probably not where he meant to hit it, but, but gets two runs nonetheless. So good over that one for Balbriggan. Four overs gone. 13 without loss. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see now. I'd say we could see a good um, contingency from the from the Fingal making their way. Well, you've seen a few trickle in, but uh, hopefully the sun, it's not due to come out, but maybe it will, and we'll see the, the wall fill up. Balbriggan just mentioning their uh, youth structure. We won the boys' junior A-League this year, I believe. It's kind of the, I think that's the biggest one the juniors it's before players start falling away or going to other sports and they're old enough that uh, one player can't kind of win it for you yeah they've invested heavily in, the, in their youth system and it's starting to pay uh, the, the dividends now one just walked past their young young own birch he's seven about 17 years old and um, he's got he's got a big future in the game loves his cricket Yeah, 
Yeah, good to see him walking around with Adrian Harper. The Harper whole Harper family putting so much work into Balbriggan. They'll be absolutely cock a hoop if, if Balbriggan can win this game today. Beautiful, beautiful shot from Ganem Dara. Classical left handers off drive. Doesn't come much better than that. Yeah, lovely shot. Just really lent into it and just pierced the field for four. Straight through the covers. He looks in good touch. It's been a nerveless start for Ganem Dar. That one he just hits a little bit straighter, but in the previous shot, none of the fielders moved. He was so perfectly placed, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty pretty much textbook. Bit of a better length from Wasif Wasif Ali. Conditions do favour bowling at the moment, so North Kildare will be desperate to take one early here. That's a, an even better length. That's where he needs to live, Wasif Ali. If he can stay there, then he shouldn't go for too many. Yeah, I think that'll be important for him. Is, is just honing in on that area for the day. It's not really a, a wicket that a bowler of Wasif Ali's pace is going to get you out. It's, he's got to just be patient it's, and, and force the batsman to make a mistake. We saw that yesterday, Pembroke's bowling attack was similar to, to this, but... Uh, they were a long time without a wicket, whereas Marion had the pace of Max Neville and uh, and Jack Carty, and that seemed to be causing a bit of trouble. Five overs gone. Balbriggan 17 without loss. Yeah, that seemed to be the big difference. Um, just when, when you have a bit less pace, um, you really have to just stick to stick to your line and length, and that's how the wicket's going to come. You're going to throw a batsman into a false shot. Um, whereas when he had that extra pace yesterday, someone like Max Neville, he was he was able to get it to kick a bit and. And that's where he got some wickets. Yeah, he, he was able to hit that famed ridge that uh, Pembroke is supposed to have. You, can, you can't see it, but there's just a length that uh, that the ball can kick off. But you can only really hit it if you bowl at a decent pace. So Muzamil Shazad bowling his third from the St. John's Road end. Too short and Connor Fletcher starts to look like he's in the mood. Rocks back and eases that one through square leg for four. Yeah, just a little bit short and he, he really latched onto that one and and confidently played it played it towards square leg for four runs. A couple of early nerves, but he looks to have settled them now. For a seam bowler, if you're if you're coaching them, um, Finton, do you tell them to air rather full or short? Which would would you prefer to see? I think you'd rather see them go to too full. If 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 they are going to go either short or full, but and that one is too full. Fletcher just punches that one. The fielders will think they're in the hunt, but they're not. Too easy for Fletcher. That's back to back boundaries. Yeah, two from two fours in a row from Fletcher. He's really putting the pressure on the bowler now for the back end of his uh, of his over here. He just barely even hit that, did he? Kind of Fletcher, he kind of just punched it. Yeah, just leaned on it a bit, and the timing was there to make it make it to the boundary. Really bent his back there, Muzamil Shazad. Is Determined not to let that one go for another boundary. Yeah, much better line of length on that ball. I have to work out hard here now to close out as over.
And we'll just hurry Connor Fletcher a bit. He's definitely bowling a bit quicker than those first two the deliveries. <laughs> yeah, I don't Maybe think... Maybe a bit, uh, bit of anger. Yeah, the short one, the, the first ball was at a nice gentle pace and then he just floated one up and... That was similar to the second ball really, but just at a better pace. Yeah. Called a no ball by umpire Willie Clark. Pulled away, but he doesn't get all of it, so just two. A bit of a nightmare over this for Fuzzamil Shazad. 11 from it so far, and uh, a free hit coming up. Yeah, I think Fuzzamil just needs to try and get out of this over now. Just really focus on, on what's been working for him in, the, in those first couple of hours. What kind the field of it can't be changed because it's the same batsman on strike. Goes for the short one, hit high, but uh, James Smith not able to keep it to one. It was up there for such a long time, they ma managed to run too. Yeah, it went high. <laughs> so six overs gone. A really good one for Balbriggan. 13 from it. They're 30 with a loss after six. Yeah, I think Bal Brigham will be very happy with the start that they've got here now. Again, like yesterday, if you can, if you can keep them wicketless for as long as possible, you're going to set yourself up for a platform for a big score. <coughs> we saw yesterday Marion scoring 82 in their final 10 overs. Bal Brigham certainly have the ability to do that. Really good, what well, good balanced lineup. I think if they can hold Nathan Rooney back till that kind of time, he could really do some damage late on. Yeah, he can be very dangerous coming in on the back end. It's funny, much like the final we had yesterday between Pembroke and Marion, uh, these two sides met in their last fixture. Paul Brigham coming on out on top there. Farouk and Azir made 69, not out. And uh, yeah, they won. Uh, Paul Brigham won by about 70 runs, just under 70 runs. So they'll come into this the favourites. Yeah, they've been fairly dominant this year. It seems in the in the in the league. Yeah, one loss there to Railway Union. Railway, a really experienced side, and if one of their experienced players comes off, then it can be really difficult to beat them. But uh, they'll be disappointed not to be here today. Yeah, another side that's always been there, thereabouts, um, at the top of the league, looking to push uh, to get into the Premier. Good over here from Wesley Valley. It can be difficult sometimes when your your partner in crime, the other opening bowler, go, has a has a big over, puts the pressure right on you. But he's done well. Good hand from James Smith. Got him. Dara called uh, Fletch, Fletcher through, and uh, could have been trouble. Yeah, great hand that from James Smith. Um, just put a bit of doubt in the running there. Nearly could have been a mix up. Really good fielding from the tall, tall right arm bowler. It went to his left, and uh, really agile work. We'll be speaking to a couple of people today. Looking forward 
to that Jim Bennett will be on and we'll have Stella Downs again who uh, has been such a good president for Cricket Leinster this year Jim Bennett of course will be taking the role next year no doubt he'll have a few stories to tell us I always have a few good stories Jim I look forward to, to hearing them just walks down the track changes the length Ganem Dara and times it perfectly to just about reach the rope a well deserved boundary yeah again similar to, to, to one of his other fours there just straight through the covers just lent into it looks in really good nick a really lovely shot so seven overs gone boundary off the last it's 34 without loss So they're going to stick with Muslim El Shazad. Had an expensive over as third of the spell, so he'll want to come back well in this one. I think it's a good decision not to take him off. The youngster can dent the confidence a little bit if you've an expensive over and the skipper pulls you off. Yeah, true, yeah. So it's good, good to see them keep faith with him and hopefully he can come back with a good over here. Really good start, good pace, good line of length. Yeah, very good from the young man. If he can straighten that up a tiny bit, I think he'll be he'll be in business there. Slightly cold day down here in Pembroke, not like yesterday. I had put the sun cream on in hope, but uh, <laughs> it was hope. <laughs> rather than belief that uh, it will be a sunny day. <laughs> maybe a bit of wishful thinking, all right, yeah. I haven't put it on yet now. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll wait for the sun to break through those clouds. Puts everything into that Fletcher. Good fielding in point. And uh, Wackar has to chases it down, keeps it to one. Yeah, great stop there. A point that was hit that was hit fairly hard and just got himself down. Stopped the boundary, definitely saved three runs there. So we do have a left right hand combination in play. It hasn't been too troublesome for uh for North Cadair as of yet, because there haven't been many singles, but if these two stay together for any length of time it gets very frustrating, doesn't it, as a fielding team. Yeah, big time. I think you've seen yesterday as well with the left hand, right hand up front how how difficult it was, you know, fielders are always having to move, bowler has to adjust his line and length, it's, or his line. I think that, that this might be the first time that uh, Muslim El Shazad has had to bowl to the left-hander. Straight away, in good areas. Yeah, nice that, on the money first up. Well weighted from Ganem Dara, two full for Muzmil Shazad and well placed for another boundary for Dara. Yeah, lovely shot, just a little whip of the wrists and well timed and, and off for four runs. We had the Your Club, Your Province Grand Prize raffle, one of the prizes yesterday. It was business class flights to New York City, Finton. The ticket was drawn by Stella Downs, and uh, it's too short and wide down the leg side from Shazad. Whose ticket came out? Do you think? Oh, I was I was here for the draw, right? Uh, a great man and all well. <laughs> yeah, Harry Tector. I keep on getting a. I keep on getting thanked for 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 that, but I didn't pull the ticket. I just read the name, but uh, I'll take it. Uh, I tell you, Harry Tector, he's, he's in the runs. He's on a trip to New York. I tell you, if, if he fell out of a window, he'd go up. 
Yeah, he needs to buy a raffle ticket, doesn't it? Or uh, not a raffle ticket, a, a lotto ticket. <laughs> this kind of form that he's in. <laughs> His partner Gabby Lewis is in England as well, playing playing cricket for the Vipers. Really good to see her getting a chance in the English um, franchises, but I'm sure she'll be joining him on that trip. So, Muzamil Shazad comes around the wicket. I think this is this is a good ploy because you can see that uh, Dara is strong through the covers, likes to get on the front foot and drive through there. If you can bowl straight and set your field straight, then it is difficult to score down the ground here. Yeah, he definitely seems to enjoy the width, so so this isn't a bad ploy. If you can come up and come around and just, just straighten it up. Yeah, and just back to Gabby Lewis. Great to great to see her um, getting across there now, and it's well deserved as well. You know, she's she's had a fantastic year. Yeah, she has had a good year in in uh, the Arcus Super 50 and 20 tournaments. Hasn't quite as uh, she obviously hit the hundred against uh, Germany as well, but disappointment for the Irish girls in a game against Scotland. I think they'll feel like they missed out. They had the game kind of. Not in the bag, but they might have thought they did and then kind of threw it away. But good batting from Scotland and in particular, Catherine Bryce. She's yeah. a good player herself. She is, yeah, I have to say. Um, I think they're relying on a couple of results now, isn't it, for Zimbabwe to... I'm not really sure how Zimbabwe, how Ireland would not qualify, to be honest, because it's the highest ranked team that doesn't qualify from the regionals and if Zimbabwe don't qualify in the regionals then I doubt they can possibly go ahead of Ireland in the rankings so I won't count our chickens before they're hatched but uh, big shout here and straight away Will Houston shakes the head don't think I'll have much going for it really it's probably the first time that uh, North Korea have had an opportunity to go up so they went up with with some gusto yeah, good shout. Um, quick decision from Will Houston there, and the right one as well. looked looked like it was probably going down leg. Well, now that they've hit the pads, there's a little bit more energy in the field from North Kildare. Since those first few nervy overs, it's been pretty chanceless for uh, Bob Bergen. The air is in length, and that's. A beautiful shot from Connor Fletcher puts the kitchen sink into that. And that one races over the rope. Yeah, just rocked back and cracked that one through the covers. Um, he's gonna he's gonna try and make them pay for the missed chance earlier on, and he he's certainly starting to find his feet here. Yeah, well he was dropped on one and he's he's now raced up to 26. He simply cannot give this guy a chance on the back foot. He's so good there. I think the good thing for this Balbriggan team is that there are a number of players that will want to win this game for their team and that's always a, a good thing in any match really but especially in a final if you've got players that they want to be the one that's done it then uh, it's not they don't see it as pressure they see it as an exciting thing and I think Connor Fletcher is one of those yeah I know he loves Balbriggan and he'd be desperate to do well for a side here today finish to the over from Wasif Ali just the one ball left the problem for, for him is he had bowled one poor delivery and it went for four if Belbergen get one or two of those and over then it's going to be a, a very difficult total to chase yeah they'd be delighted with the start here Belbergen um, to be fair he's bowled quite well um, in, his, in his first spell opening spell here
Yeah, and finish as well as well. So he's bowled five. North Kildare have bowled nine in total, and Balbergen are 44 without loss. And if you're just joining us, you're very welcome to Pembroke Cricket Club for the Buicat Championship final between Balbergen and North Kildare. North, earlier in the day, Balbergen won the toss, decided to bat first, and they've done well so far. They're 44 from nine overs without loss. It's Connor Fletcher and Ganem Dara who were in the middle for Balbriggan. And uh, the opening bowlers for North Kildare have been Wasif Ali and Muzamil Shazad. Yeah, and they'll certainly please the lads in the 10th over there, you know, with the wickless now coming into the into the 10th over, so they'll be really happy with the start. It's a funny one, isn't it? When you're three and four, you're you're really hoping that the, that the opening batters don't get out. You're like, stay in there, stay in there, stay in there. What, what, at what point does it change to, I hope they get out because I want to get in and bat? <laughs> 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 So, first bowling change of the day, Devanj Bansali, bowling from the St. John's Road end. Left arm slow, and just bowls a little bit down leg to start off, but it'll just be one, there's Fielder out in the deep, but Wakar Asmas tidies up for mid wicket. Yeah, again, just that kind of bread and butter shot for a lefty, just a little tuck in off the hips if you get it too straight. Usually, left arm is quite like bowling to left-handed batters, but uh, he just got that one slightly wrong. Probably so used to bowling to right-handers, he's just pushed it a little bit down leg side. So now he'll be bowling to Connor Fletcher. And he does manage to get it across. A real lift. Bit of a nightmare for the wicketkeeper, isn't it, when, when it skids through like that? Yeah, big time. Yeah, he did, did well there. That one just kept a bit low. and It's one of those ones you're just hoping that it doesn't pop up and hit you in the chops. <laughs> yeah, you got to just wear it, don't you? <laughs> yeah. It's a good work from Moise Hader behind the sticks. But that one was far too full. And Connor Fletcher lifts that over extra cover for four. A shot of real class. Yeah, that is a difficult shot to play, and he's played that superbly. Just straight over cover there for four runs. Yeah, particularly difficult with the left, the angle the left hand is bowling across him. To get that over extra cover is really impressive. Yeah, he's really settling into his, in his innings here nicely. Is Connor? Gets such good extension with his wrists. A better length from the youngster. That one was full, but and goes along the ground towards the boundary. Really good running from Connor Fletcher turns that into three. Good chase, saves one run. Yeah, he hit that quite hard. I was surprised it didn't go to the boundary. It must have just caught a bit of a yeah. puddle of dew, didn't it? Yeah. Can you get pu puddles of dew? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can. This might be particularly heavy dew in that corner of the ground. Good to see the Balbriggan faithful coming in, Albert Harper. Just saying hello there as he goes past. Huge amount of work done for him on the Balbriggan Square all summer nowadays. 
yeah, he loves he loves Ball Brick and Cricket Club. Um, and what a servant he's been for them. Just airing in line again there, Devon Bansal. He hasn't find, found good areas against the left-hander yet until that delivery. So a mixed bag from the left arm bowler now. Ten overs gone and Paul Brigham 53 without loss with that. I bid you adieu for now and welcome Craig Senior into the commentary table. Morning, Fenton. Morning, all. Morning, Craig. Well, that's a fine start. Carl Brigham would be happy with that. Yeah, very happy. And um, there was one missed chance earlier on uh, of Connor Fletcher. A tough chance, I have to say, but he's um, he's certainly settled into his innings here now nicely, and he's really starting to strike up with some confidence. It's been some nice shots played by the batsman. Yeah, there has, yeah. They've, they'd be delighted with this start going at fives at the moment, so... Again, and, and keeping keeping it wicketless as well, which has which been a real plus for Paul Brigham. Well, we saw that in yesterday's Premier League final, Buller Kit Premier League final, which Merriam won. The, their top two batsmen put on a fine opening partnership. Nicely played away on the offside behind points, and that's made its way all the way to the boundary. No feel of cutting that off. That's a super little shot. Yeah, super shot. There's even there's a man back there, but he's he's just waited on it a bit longer and and pierced that gap behind point there. Super shot, four runs, to, another four runs to his name. Nice timing, nice direction. He'll be pleased with that shot. More circumspect to that delivery. Just plays it back down the pitch. Well, yeah. It doesn't look like rain, but certainly overcast at the moment. Yeah, just a bit chillier than yesterday, but I think I think hopefully we're we're okay today for rain. Yeah, I hear it was raining down in Leak Slip a couple of hours ago, but luckily that hasn't reached us, so long may that continue. Jay Smith with some fine fielding again at mid-wicket. He's been throwing himself about. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's, he's been super there. I think uh, Connor will probably be disappointed that he missed out on that one. Uh, full toss on, on legs. Don't be looking to put that one away to the boundary. Oh, sort of nothing shot really to one outside of the off stick. Goes through to the keeper. See our sponsors, Boer Kit, have uh, set up the speed gun down in the nets. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was going yesterday as well. I think there was plenty of um, Your competition down there. I'd say, yeah, the youth, of, the youth of Pembroke were down in the nets yesterday all day. It was great to see. Nice, nice line and length from the bowler. I don't know how myself and yourself are going that uh, speed gun there now, Craig. I don't know if there's my days. There, my days are gone. I don't know if there is minus figures for both of us <laughs> now. If you can get it on the, I think I'd be classed as a, a fast off spinner or something. <laughs> a speed eye bowler. Another one encouraging just to wave at the bat at it. Touch of the Zorros about that. Flashing blade. So that's 11 overs gone. The score has moved on to 57. And Gareem Dara has moved on to 37. Um, Gareem, yeah, Connor Fletcher is yeah 37 and Gareem Dara is on 17. 
That's what I get for copying numbers out of your program. <laughs> But again, going along quite nicely, five and over. Balbriggan would be delighted with the start, especially with no wickets down. Commenting on how cool it is, surprising both batsmen looking for a drink after just 11 overs. Cup of tea, maybe. Now this is Dinesh Bansali, the left armour down at the St John's end. I've already told the North Kildare side that I apologise for getting any of their names wrong. Again, I'd be happy if they all wore numbers, all teams. Yeah, he'll probably be under a bit of pressure here. The first over probably didn't go to plan for him. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he comes back in this one. Started off very nicely. He's the youngest member of the North Kildare side and charged with a, an important task here. That one's played out on the offside. The boundary rider will come round for it. He keeps it down to a single. Yeah, done very well out there, keeping that to the single. It was the clean pickup that dissuaded them from taking a second. Yeah, attacked it nicely, stayed down low and got it straight in. Yeah, Connor Fletcher took a bit of a liking to Dinesh in his first over. One lovely shot through the covers anyway that I saw. Looking for a full length there. It just feels strange this being sort of the last day of the season. It just doesn't seem right to be finishing. Oh, that's cut away behind point, and that reaches the boundary before third man can get round to it. Yeah, I think I think uh, the Norkel there balls really have to try and start pitching it up a bit further to, to Connor Fletcher. He's rocked back there now a couple of times and he's creamed them through the offside for for four runs. A very classy player. Same wicket as he was used for the Premier League final yesterday and uh, I think we sort of came to the realisation that bowling stump to stump was the way to go. Yeah, and I think that's the way to go again here today. Um, just put it on the top of off stump and... Again, he plays it out there this time. The fielder has moved from third round to behind point. So it's only a single this time. Uh, he's starting to look in a really good touch here as Connor And it's in short. He really is just latching onto and and hitting it powerfully. He could be unstoppable if he keeps going the way he is. Just has, has relaxed into the role of opening in this final. Yeah. Dinesh gets his first wicket. Darrow just foot across, hit on the pad. The cry came up and the umpire, Willie Clark, had no hesitation. Yeah, I don't think the batsman had any complaints either. It looked pretty, pretty stone dead. So 63 for one, as Dara departs for 18. And he was out LBW to the youngest member of the North Kild Air side. He'll be delighted. The score on 63, Gareth Dara departs. LBW to the bowling of Devanch Bansali for 18. Did you see the viral clip from the women's semi-final yesterday? I did indeed. <laughs> As you hear Andrew Blair White's dulcet tones in the background, Farouk Nata is number three and he enters the fray after that uh, LBW. So the first wicket has fallen with 63 on the board. Uh, back to that clip there, I think it was, was there a, 
I looked at it last night, um, a million views yeah. that was on it. I was within a couple of hours, but... It certainly spread. I mean, you can see why they're called viral, because it spread as quickly as coronavirus, that was for sure. <laughs> it was uh, some clip, and it was nice that it was the uh, non-striking bats uh, dog. <laughs> yeah. As soon as she called him, she was there. The first time today, from the Wellfield Road end of the ground, is their captain, Manjeet Singh. Manjeet Singh now, coming on at the Wellfield Road end. Captain of this North Kildare side. He'll want to be leading by example now. Yeah, and I think they, need, they needed a wicket um, at this stage, and the two lads were just starting to get away. Uh, away from them a bit and another f four or five hours of that could have been uh, the heads really could have dropped from Norco there so that'll give them a big lift and and see if they can kick on from here so Manjeet Singh now Well, he's not afraid to give it some air. First ball up. Just gets driven to mid on. Yeah, don't mind seeing that. He's he'd be looking to settle in nice. I think if you can take uh, anything from yesterday as well. His spin really kind of did the brought it back a bit in the, for for Pembroke. So it'll be interesting to see how they go here. Yes, the idea of making the batsman put the power into the ball. Especially in a cup final. Will I, won't I? It's always the question of the batsman's mind. That's a late choice there by Farouk Nazar. It's in the air. And the skipper has broken through and he takes a wicket in his first over. Fruit Nazar, not particularly enamoured with that, but uh, he has to go. Yeah, Fruit just probably went through a shot a bit, um, a bit too quickly there. Probably just a bit hard handed at it and good, good field place from there. They had to manage in short there. Um, Has certainly put a, a joyous mood into the congregation of North Kildare players there now. Captain will be delighted. As I said, lead by example, takes a wicket with his second ball. Yeah, he'd be delighted with that, and that'll definitely put a bit of a, a spring in the step of the, the North Kildare outfit here on the field. I presume. Farouk Nazar, of course, had scored 69 not out in the league game between these two sides when... Uh, 64 for Nazar depart, caught by Imran Ohak off the bowling of Manjeet Singh. Incoming batter for Malbriggan is their captain, Greg Ford. Greg Ford perhaps entering the fray earlier than he expected to. Yeah, Farouk Nazar scored 69 not out in the league game. He'll be disappointed. Yeah, brings Greg forward. Um, classy batsman as Greg. Plenty of air given there. Ford hits it straight down the ground. Yeah, I was actually thinking that maybe they could, maybe could have brought mid on up there. Um, just just when he's on zero, two quick wickets have fallen. I thought maybe just put a bit more pressure on the on the batsman there by bringing him up. I think perhaps North Kildare spent too much time in the huddle smiling and congratulating and not enough thinking about the next batsman. How they could press home the advantage of taking two quick wickets. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see now how Connor Fletcher goes about his business after the two the two wickets. They'll have to try and rebuild here now a bit. Well, that's a fine first over for Manjit Singh. Exactly what he wanted to do for his team. Yeah, he'd be delighted with that. So, after 12 O's, the score has moved on to 64 for two. Connor Fletcher has moved on to 43 of those 64. Ah, the scoreboard, 65. And of course, Greg Ford is off the mark. And he'll now be facing. 
Devanch and Sally. Yeah, I've played with Greg for the played with Greg for the last three years uh, before this, so so I know him quite well. A serious batsman who hits it in in different in, in strange places he can. But when he gets going, he he can be unstoppable. He can, he can be great to watch. away into the covers and that's all it was just a push brings up the single Greg Ford of course saw, sc scored a century in the first league game when they were playing Cork County and he'd be he'd be really hoping to play a, a captain's innings here today Full length from the left-hander, and this time Fletcher just drives it down the ground. Nobody's stopping that until it reaches the sight screen. Four more runs, takes him on to 47 now, and the score on to 69. Yeah, just a little full toss, but um, Fletcher good enough to, to put that straight back past him for, for four runs. Shorter. That allowed Fletcher just to rock back onto the back foot and play it out to the point boundary. Yeah, he's, he really is playing well off the back foot here today, I have to say. Anything short, he just he gets right back in his crease and launches it on. See what you mean about the unusual shots. Just playing that one down to the man who's standing at about somewhere between third slip and gully. Yeah, he can he can hit it in strange areas, can Greg. Um, but when he gets into full flight, he can he can be it can be great viewing. Difficult to set a field against, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, big time, yeah. Also played a few games with the with the Monster Reds this year. It was great to see Monster back in the IPs and doing quite well in them as well. Of course, first allegiance always to Leinster, but always good to see. Yeah, the no, it's good. The Monster it's doing well. Great for the competition that there's the four teams in it. It's better for having the four teams in it and. So I feel Cricket Island have done quite well with moving players around, making it more competitive so we get to see the best players, not necessarily the best from a province players. So the yeah. Menjet Singh continuing in second over. Yeah, a super first over for him. And here we go, captain to captain. Those two wickets have certainly brought a bit of chat back to the field. Yeah, and I think they think if they, if they get another wicket here now, they'll, they'll really fancy their chances. Not excessive spin on this pitch as we saw yesterday. But get the right line and length, you'll get the reward. Forward turns that one into a full toss and just plays it straight down the ground. Another four for him. Yeah, powerfully struck down the down the ground again, as you say, just that full toss and just really lent on it. And when he hits it, he can hit it hard and powerfully, Greg. There's no stopping that one going for four. Once he beat the bowler, there was nobody else going to stop it anyway. It's 
It's in the air. It's just over. <laughs> and that one has crashed into us over here at the commentary desk. I think that would have hit me <laughs> if I didn't have such fine reflexes. <laughs> no, you could see that one coming from a mile off. Uh, evacuation just happened. Lovely shot, lovely four. And Ford has certainly entered the fray intent on doing some damage here. My only hope is that our cameraman missed that. <laughs> So that's the end of the, I'm going to guess, 15th over. It's just that's the first four. And then here's the second one. Straight towards just over the fielder. And that came crashing into the comms table. Yeah, got over there for a bad rigging. Scores have moved on to 80 now for two. And now Connor Fletcher on 49 faces Dinesh Bansali. James Smith just doing the tidying up and the covers, making sure that Fletcher has to wait another delivery. Quickly onto that, rocks onto it, plays it out on the leg side, and that's enough for him to get to the half century. That brings up Connor Fletcher's half century or 55 deliveries with eight fours. Yeah, great knock so far by Fletcher. Brings up his 50 in, in good style, and he'll be looking to kick on, no doubt. He'll be looking to go on to try and get three figures here as well. Well, plenty of overs to go. Ford trying to play that down to a vacant third man. The man in the gully area sort of picked that one up. But you can see the intent. Yeah, if these two lads stay in, it, it, it could be dangerous. They, could, they can really go, go hard at it. And that's going hard at it straight away. He took a couple of skips down the pitch. Got to the pitch of the ball and drove it straight back past the bowler. Almost contemptuous. Yeah, I think Greg Ford is making his intent clear here. He's not going to let try and let the, the bowler settle. Certainly giving the bowler something to think about. No change in the field, though. Again, he's looking for that vacant third man. Yeah, you're quite right. If these two stay in, this, this could get big. Oh, we're going to be very happy. They're going along well over five and over. It's a good base they're setting. And these two certainly are looking in top form. Yeah, I think Pat Brigham will probably look at this as their as probably their two best batters and and key partnership um in the game, so they'll be looking for these lads to bat as long as possible. One wonders if Manjit Singh, as well as thinking about his bowling, is thinking about what's happening at the other end. Whether he needs to make a change or just try something different. Another one just played up to long on. Yeah, and still still opting for, for the tree out just tree out. Has the option to drop on one more, but Gonna stay with just a tree out. My worry would be here that Greg comes down the track and hits another another one over the top here for four. I 
think that's a much better pace here from Manji. He's just gone a bit flatter with that. Oh. Oh, just clears the fielder at long on. I think he got a hand to touch the ball, but uh, not enough to hang on to it. That one was floated up by the skipper. Yeah. And the Balbriggan skipper pucked it for six. I think his heart would have been in his mouth there for, for, a, for a little while. Great effort there on the boundary. But he's definitely come in and made his uh, intent quite clear. Yes. This time he has to adjust at the last minute. Came down the track looking for the big one. Yeah, I think they probably need to start looking at maybe putting those, um, putting their four out. They're only using three at the moment, so. Just to stop that boundary. Of course, they're trying to ride that balance between attacking for wickets and defending boundaries. and Manjeet just discussing various placements of the field. Played away and slapped down by point. Keeps it to a single. Great stop there for him and that'll give, that always gives the side a bit of a lift. Keeper deciding to come up to the stumps. Um, I think this is a good move. Good move from the keeper here. Just gives the Belbriggan batsman something to think about if they're going to dance down the track. That one's too short and that's slapped away in front of square. Another single. Was if Ali, the only bowler with an economy rate of under six, his is three and a half, and then the other three bowlers are all going for six point. Yeah, it was Ali. He did a great job up front. Nicely played. That's a nice classic shot for no run. Shows as well as the unorthodox shots. can play from a textbook as well. Yeah, he certainly can. That's the shot he was trying for a couple of times last time this bowler was on. Yeah, well placed. Just delicately put it behind there through the vacant kind of third man area. Just to show how well Balbriggan are going, they're now on 97. Just three short of getting the first hundred on the board. Oh, that's short to Ford. Played away to deep square leg. One might almost think that Gregory Ford has a bus to catch or something, the speed he's going at. Yeah, he's got in and raced, raced on the 24. Strike rate of about 120 at the moment. So 18 overs gone. Balbriggan on the cusp of 100. Connor Fletcher with his 50. He's now on 52. But Greg Ford. And he came in a few overs ago, and already he's shot on to 25. 
So another seven overs till drinks. <laughs> Captain Manjak Singh is to continue from the Wheelfield Road end. And now, now they're opting with the with the four out. I think this is a good call from the captain. Again, just punched up to long on for a single. It seems as well as power, Greg Ford has some patience as well. Fletcher plays that out through the covers. Fielder will get to it, but won't stop him picking up another two. And that's 100 up for Balbriggan. 100 comes up. Yeah, 100 up in the 19th over, and Balbriggan will be delighted with that. Kind of a good rate, two set of batsmen. He flows it up. But Connor Fletcher now, he's seeing it big. If these two lads bat for, for the next 10 overs, we could be looking at a mammoth total. for a single, easily taken. Yeah, just worked into the leg side. Normally if we have a fielder standing in front of us like this, it annoys me, but having seen that one come into the table earlier, I'm kind of glad of the protection. <laughs> 19 overs gone, Valbriggan have crossed the 100 threshold. They're now on 103 for two. Connor Fletcher's moved on to 55, and Captain Gregory Ford is on 27. Well, you'd feel that Bergen are probably the happier of two teams at this stage. Yeah, I think they'd be very pleased with the with the coming into the 20th over here with their first 20. Um, Norkel there really probably needs to try and break this partnership sooner rather than later. Yes, if these two are still in at the 30th over, one suspects the score will be close to 200. Just the four bowlers used by North Kildare at the moment. Best figures belong to the skipper. As Tanesh Bansali goes for four off his first ball. Greg Ford forcing that one through the covers. Yeah, just a full toss. If they've, they've, they've bowled a couple of full tosses to Snorkel there, which they probably won't be happy with about, and nearly every single one of them has gone has gone to the boundary. So they just need to drag that length back a bit. Not that far though. <laughs> Greg Ford saw how short that was and was on it in a flash, and has hit it out to the leg side boundary. Another yeah. four onto the total. Yeah, probably just overcompensating for for being for the full toss in the last ball and that one just too short and you fall short of a man like Greg Ford. You're going, you're going to go for four. He was onto it so quickly. Tanesh now halfway through is over. This is seventh over now. Again short, this time it's in the air out towards Cal. It reaches the grass and it reaches the fielder. Two yeah. more for Ford. 
Yeah, it didn't catch that one as nicely, but still makes two runs off it. The wide open spaces of Sydney Parade being utilised there. It was in the air for a while, but no fielder within 30 yards of where it landed. I think the important thing here for for an oracle there now will be just trying to go back to bases, basics. Well, that's what they need, just good line and length. Just try and stem this flow of runs that are coming from these two now. And they call the 20th over. And at this stage we'll make way in the box for Isabel Joyce and President-elect. Gentlemen, Jim. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. So two wickets gone. It's been uh, it's been mostly Balbriggan so far. Of course, those two wickets were huge for North Kildare, but this is the partnership here. Connor Fletcher and Greg Ford, both looking in ominous touch, just waiting for the president-elect to uh, make his way over it. Until then, I'm still joined by Craig Senior. He's bowls with a good flight. He's not afraid to give it air. Manjo, he's had some success, but he's also had a few boundaries struck from him as well. Well, you really need to be brave against someone bowling this pace. They would have been really pleased to get rid of Farouk Nazar quickly. But Greg Ford is going well, already on 38. It's taking him no time at all. And now I'll make way for your guest and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Craig. So, joined by Gentleman Jim, as we've decided which is your is your name, President-elect Jim Bennett. Thank you very much for joining us on what I'm calling our commentary table. Thanks very much, Isabel. Lovely to be here. Thank you. So, um, I hope you're enjoying the cricket, but even even more so, um, enjoying the idea of uh, being the president next year. Something you're looking forward to. Uh, yeah, looking forward to it might be a bit strong. Uh, according to my wife, it's, it's my unparalleled facility for picking up unpaid work. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, yes, we'll say looking forward to it. We're, we're apprenticed at the minute because I've done seven or eight finals and uh, she's hugely impressed that there's going to be more next year. <laughs> Well, we really enjoyed you joining us for the presentation yesterday. Um, it's a huge honour, really, being Cricket Leinster president. Something that uh, y you think is an honour as well? It's, a fen it's phenomenal. I would be the first one from uh, the first one from the hills and over the 50 years of the club, and it's the, only the second Finn Gall man, uh, Matt Sheridan prior to me and that's so it's, it's, a, it's a great honour. Yeah, it is a huge honour. Stella Dines does such a good job as... She's fantastic. Cricket Leinster uh, present and what's uh, she she always brings the coffee as well none for you though Jim today some, she wasn't some you win there you are such as <laughs> such as life yeah I'll speak to her later about that he might be in for the second round but uh, a great final on show here today we saw a really good final yesterday it looked like it was going to be a little bit of a damp squib but uh, Pembroke came back strongly they were great they were great and they stayed at it Isabel you know that uh, when you think you're batted out of it that they persevered and you know had uh, I suppose had a little bit more attacking early on uh, they might have even been closer but it was it was a good game and some some fine cricket in it um how do you feel the the hills went this year we were very pleased um you know the introduction of um relegation gave us a bit of a shock because we, we didn't think we were going to have an overseas player. And then um, Darren, uh, Dylan Blignot became available and Murray Cummins as well. So um, it was it, we had a very good season. I mean, we third in the league 
uh, the only team we played badly against really was, was Merrion and uh, had a decent in the T20. So we were very pleased with the season. I suppose your first concern is always that you're not going to get relegated and that didn't happen. So we were delighted with the year. Yeah, good. And the women's team look, looks to be having good resurgence as well. They're, they're actually competitive and we're very pleased. We're delighted. We have two women's teams and they've competed in practically every game, which is it's tremendous. Uh, we're very concerned at one stage, you know, that, that you know we're going to be playing down the grades and we have some good young cricketers that are ambitious and yeah. you need to be able to provide an outlet for them. And uh, you, there's no outlet if they're playing, say, Division 3, they, they feel that they have to move on. So we're delighted that we're playing at a decent standard and, and competitive. So Im Imran Al Hack comes on for his, his first bow bowl of the day from the St John's Road end, pulling a slow right arm. Um, well played from Greg Forge, but um, umpire Will Houston at Square Leg is signalling one short. He feels that Connor Fletcher didn't get his bat in when he turned to go for the second. So you don't see that very often, Jim. No, you do not. You do not. And, and we, the last day we were here in Pembroke about a fortnight ago, and one of the two umpires here today signalled one short run during a very exciting game. So it actually was very much appreciated by, by the assembled multitudes. <laughs> one short run went down beautifully. We were all delighted to see it. <laughs> Well, it's all happening here. Umpire, uh, umpire Willie Clark has signalled a no ball. It's so very unusual again to see a spinner overstep, but there's going to be a free hit. So where is Greg Ford going to send this one? Going to send it long and over, extra cover. That's a shot of real class. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. It's one of the most difficult ones in the game, really. Yeah, no, a beautiful shot. And see how quickly he's up to 40-something, 40 44. Yeah, he's really taken the game to North Kildare. He has done, yeah. Well, Michael Cotter is talking to him while I was off air, and uh, he reckons since Fletcher was on about 20, he's been scoring 100. He's convinced. Oh, very good. That, that's what, that's what, that's what uh, yeah. he's convinced. So um, if he does get to the 100, then he'll be claiming that. But I said he's put the mockers on him. So we'll have to see. He's not on comms today, so no commentator's curse for, for, for Kotze. For, for, oh, yeah, that, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't his day. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're moving very quickly along. 122 from 20 for just two. And it's not an easy ground to score runs on. No, no. And, and I suppose it's the good old Fingal one. If you ask somebody what's a good score here, I'll tell you at the end of the second innings. Uh, you kind of never know. But I mean, the 260 yesterday, but I mean, these lads are on track for more than 260 well it was looking for one, at one stage like they might get to 280 300 but uh, a couple of wickets they always say add two wickets onto the score and it doesn't look too bad 21 overs gone sorry 22 overs gone and bell break and are all the twos one two two for two yeah, that's, from that's, 22 that's a lot of twos that's a lot of twos yeah 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 that 999 it's it's a whole lot of, of if you keep your your numbers in sequence is this something that you've done before, Jim? Commentated on a cricket match? Not commentated directly. Uh, when near FM are stuck for somebody to speak, um, not even knowledgeably, just speak, uh, <laughs> I get a phone call from Fergus Carl, and I will then be asked, depending on how bad the shortage is, for how long I want to speak, for as long as I like if I want, about anything I like, <laughs> usually about cricket, but it doesn't really matter. Just talk. Uh, <laughs> so, that, And my wife will say, yeah, that's more of it. Uh, you know, yeah. And does anyone listen to you? Uh, so, no. Uh, that that's just that's the story of my life. Just keep talking. <laughs> well, it was working out for you because my my mum told me she watched the post match presentation yesterday, and she always enjoyed Jim Bennett's. Uh, droll humour is what she said so yeah. you, you kept kept one person happy oh, that, that's at least good, yeah. that I know yeah, that, you got yeah, a good yeah, round of good. applause so yeah. I think you had a few more more um, fans in the in the assembled crowd Yes and I've had a, I had a text from Heatley Tector to thank me for my reaction when his young lad won the big prize now I don't know what the reaction was <laughs> but I do know when I went home and my wife said to me how'd you get on I said oh it was great lovely day um, I did man of the match you weren't speaking in that dress were you that get up oh I was and I, said, I hope there were no cameras there there were 
it's filmed and everything. Oh, so, so this morning, there's a suit in the back of my car. I wasn't allowed out because uh, I have now disgraced the family twice, two days in a row. And they'd be all talking about her for letting their husband out. And then, of course, I had another crisis. I left on my shirts to be uh, dry clean with all this speech and I'm done. They were lost in the laundry. Oh, no. No, a shirt missing. So, But there were extras at home, so I spent the night taking pins out of shorts. <laughs> But we've got a change in the bowling at the Wellfield Road end. It's the opening bowler, Mozamel Shazad, coming back for his second spell. Is that the underage man? Yes, he's Very the youngster. Fantastic prospect. Yeah, absolutely. He's lovely action. Yes, lovely, lovely. Lovely uh, smooth he, action. He was very good against North County. Took serious wickets that day and, and they were very, very impressed with him. Yeah, he's certainly an exciting prospect for North Kildare and Irish cricket in general but probably doesn't quite have the pace yet certainly not in this wicket to be bowling that length No Pulled strongly by Conor Fletcher he's so quick onto the back foot they're going to come back for a third And that's unusual here Run in three Yeah well it's the time of year isn't it yes. uh, the grass is a little bit longer usually it's lightning isn't it but uh, time of year a little bit of a little bit wet it was dewy this morning we're just drying up around now but at the long uh, the boundaries are very long uh, square aren't they they are yes they're, that's a decent hit not to have to, to run three so fair play to them if he's aired it's probably just in his length Muslim al Shazad. Uh, he's back on the right length there but he's been short and full um, kind of something that happens with young fast bowlers Yes, it's, it's it's getting it's getting it right and, and, and being convinced that you're doing the right thing, you know. And then if you get a bit of tap, it tends to unsettle you as well, you know. That it can, it's the end of the world. Uh, so, but he's a fine prospect. Well, if you can get one of these two out, it'll be huge for North Kildare. What'll be game on? And what they definitely don't need is a run out that can really kill a final. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, even looking at Ireland, was it on Friday, where where they had two run outs near the end? You know, where if the yeah. DLS came, became very important, yes, they, yeah. were, they were sort of wicket sacrificed. I don't know why they. Uh, that was really, really not smart because we knew the rain was coming. Like everyone knew the rain was coming. We didn't know it was going to be as bad as it was, but that's really well bowled from well the youngster. Bold, yeah. uh, well, we didn't we didn't know how bad it was going to be, um, but we knew there was going to be rain. So twenty three overs gone. Um, a decent one from it. A uh, decent one for North Kildare. Um, Balbergen 126 for two. But yeah, the, the in particular the Adair McBride run out was poor. I thought it was. Yeah, and and Andrew, if he hadn't been out, would be the highest in the world. His strike rate was 600 to yeah. one. Uh, you know, but it was a sacrifice because he had hit a beautiful six himself. So there was no necessity. He was well capable. Yeah, it was straight. And he was sitting to the shorter boundary. He hit his only ball for six. And I, they mustn't have talked about it because he was not ready to run either. Like no, 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 no. It, was, it came as a surprise to him yeah, that he was he expected to run. Looked up and saw it there saw barreling a, a, a towards him. man barreling down towards <laughs> you. Yeah, 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 kind of unsettled you a bit, all right. One one of our lads on the glory, so we're, we're an old gentleman who used, had a great big shout when there was a run, but he was playing in the civil service and he caused a fellow who wasn't minding what he was doing in the Phoenix Park to run out. The non-striker ran in the Phoenix Park when he heard the shout of yes. <laughs> so the poor old devil, that was his claim to fame. <laughs> he ran out and fell in another ground. That's amazing. It's Imran, Al, Imran Ulhaq coming back for his second. Um, good running from good running. Greg good Ford. Good running. The boys are very businesslike, very purposeful. Yeah, really poor throw from Wasif Ali in 45 there as wicketkeeper won't thank him for that um, he, he looks dangerous enough um, Imran Al-Hak Imran yeah Imran al Hak has a little bit of height and just got a bit of extra bounce in that first delivery except with these lads you wouldn't want to be throwing it up too slow no no no. when when, when the eyes light up now the, these spinners would be the bane of Fingal cricketers lives because <laughs> they don't think they should be allowed ball to them at all uh, so they always were got out to the spinners that's, that just happened you know ego but uh, he, he, he'd want to be pushing it through a bit well I remember bowling to the hills in a T20 match one of my only performances in, in Division 1 and uh they were the same against me. They thought, you know, too slow. My bowling was too slow. They'd have to 
hit me for plenty of runs and instead they just got out. I had plenty of mammies on the sideline. Not only that, I was with me. the two mothers. <laughs> side <laughs> yeah. by side with the two mothers. And then the lady comes over and says, I'm after getting the first lad. And then you got, I said, you're after getting the second lad now as well. And I'm with their two mothers trying to pacify them. Both women having to be sedated. Uh, that the lads had been out to a woman. Uh, it wasn't what you do, you know. The slow bowler uh, got both of them in for Trinity. It was for Marion, actually, was at that Marian? point. Yeah, it was for Marion. Um, in the T20 game but then because you got the same two fellas out the end of the day were at Trinity I, th- I thought but uh, it, might, might have, it might be the, I know you got the two lads anyway and I was with their mothers I sit and sit <laughs> yes. and I'm minding my own business <laughs> yes. yeah. well no better man to pacify them that's a good shot off the back foot from Beautiful. Conor Fletcher waited waited well and just bisected the fielders backward of point so disappointing end to that over from Imran Ulhak Pembroke then here in Pembroke it's Balbriggan are 134 for 2 from 24 um, almost halfway through the allotted overs and if they do accelerate in the back end it could be an ominous total for North Kildare to chase down it could be even batted out of it you know that, that um, I mean my man Ford is on a very quick 48 now so it's it's looking at a big big score unless unless they get one or other of these fairly quickly yeah he's come in and really accelerated Connor Fletcher's looked good almost all day. He was dropped on one, and That's how right. costly has that That's been? That's right. That was a big drop, and and now with uh, Matthew Ford or Greg Foot moving it on so rapidly, uh, you're looking at a very very big score here for. Well, I'm told that uh, the North Kildare wicketkeeper Moyes Hader isn't. I think it's the second time wicketkeeping, so we'll we'll give him that one. They probably weren't expecting him to hang on. Would have been a bonus for them to have him take a catch behind to dismiss Connor Fletcher, but would have been a huge wicket for them. It he would have been, yeah. And my, my great friend Mick DeWire, who was an outstanding wicket keeper, he reckoned he never dropped a good fella. Now, he said he dropped a lot of other ones, uh, <laughs> but he never dropped one to cost a match. You know what I mean? Yeah. Allegedly. Uh, but no, a lot of other fellas, he didn't include them in his list. But it, it's a nice one to look back on how serious it is when you, know, when you drop a man and he goes on to. Yeah, you know, there's nothing worse, is there? You it, just want the ground to swallow you up if you, if you drop the, the big wicket. The big wicket. I was at some game recently as well and a young man had dropped one of the... And he said, I can't, I, I please... He was praying, actually. He was on his knees that, that young man had be got out fairly quickly because it was a serious enough drop. But one of the youth matches, I think, and it was a catch, handy enough catch, and uh, the young man was in an awful state. Yeah. You know, that that's... Uh, you know, and no one drops them on purpose. And, and unfortunately, it seems, with the better cricketers, you're more conscious that you could drop them because the consequences are going to be worse. Well, I, I look at it the other way. I'm like, no matter what, I'm grabbing onto this ball. Like, it doesn't, I don't care how I catch it. Um, I, I actually think that these days people spend so much time worrying about their technique when they're out in the middle. They can sometimes get caught up and they want to catch the, it the correct way. I'm like, do it correctly in training. When it comes out in the middle, you just catch it catch whatever yeah, way yeah, 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 it yeah. comes. Because all I can say in the book is caught, yeah, Isabel. Exactly. It, it won't, it won't say it. Because I'm Matt DeWire, my pal, other pal wanted, he wanted an extra note on the book for drop catches because he <laughs> yeah. was an outstanding spirit. I'm sure he had plenty dropped off yeah, his ball yeah. so he just wanted a separate note uh, so the people would know how well he had bowled well I always thought uh, my inside edges for four were just were even better than the good shots for four because it annoyed the bowlers so much it did yeah. it and really it worth says, more yeah and it only says four in the book exactly you know, it only, yeah, yeah. I mean the great Jack Nicklaus when he was asked about technique he said are we playing how or how many uh, you know so that's that's all you well, know I, when, when I'm coaching um, how to catch I do, I do place a lot of emphasis on technique in training and I'm like the point of it is though that you don't need to think about the technique when you're playing that's, yeah, that's, that's why you practice technique so much yeah and, and then it becomes automatic yeah you know? Exactly. If once you get in the middle, you don't. You're you're, you're not thinking about. Te- well, you shouldn't be thinking about technique because that's how you get out. You need to be just thinking of the ball. Yeah, yeah. The good old. I mean, I heard it done a man a lad when he was asked, you know, about coaching, how much impact it had, and he's like, no, no, no. When it hops in front of you, you hit it. Uh, so I'm very dismissive of. of sorry, you know, I mean, somebody says oh, you must have a lot of time spent on coaching with, and taking. No, no, no. When it hops in front of you, you hit it. That's that's. Ah, different strokes for different, different folks, and yes. I think that's th- that is true for some people. They just simple simplify the game, and it works for him. It doesn't work for everyone. No, Not no. all of us have that talent, unfortunately. No, <laughs> and you know the number of people who who got better quicker so the coaching courses. So fifty for Greg Ford, six fours and one six. Got got it almost a run a ball, and that's half the over is gone. We're going to have a drinks break. Balbriggan 
sitting pretty, 137 for two. Um, Isabel Joyce, I'm here with Jim Bennett, the incoming Cricket Leinster president. We're just chatting all things cricket, and you were mentioning, sorry, the coaching courses. Yes, yes, and some cricketers, I know what the lads would have said to me, how much better they became when they understood the mechanics of the game, that it actually improved their own game immeasurably. Yeah, coaching does make you... A much much better player. This just we're looking at the this, the cards. That was the batting card you saw on your screen. This is the bowling card, one wicket apiece. For Singh and Bansali. Um, well, I mean, I try and get anyone that is is uh, really keen on cricket to do a coaching course because I think if you can if you can teach someone else how to do it, then you're much more likely to be able to do it yourself. That's right, and we would have found from the day I found from my day job. Uh, the things I didn't understand that much as a student. You had to work appreciably harder when you're trying to convey it to somebody else. Yeah. You know, so when you're teaching sort of Irish grammar or something and, and uh, you know, the, or elements of maths, you had to work much harder because when you look down a room and you see everybody bewildered, uh, it doesn't do a lot for your confidence. <laughs> so it might be as well to find out, you know, I mean, why have I puzzled half a sword? Uh, so it might be better that you straighten yourself up and learn how to do it properly. So I, I found that that was a, a great encouragement to me. And then I taught adult classes at night, you know, when we were saving up to get married. And that was very helpful because parents just bring in homework that they couldn't do for their children. Oh, OK. And I wondered, was I causing that same dilemma yeah. in every household and source? So it, it, it made you aware that when you're setting homework, yeah. that it has a consequence. That well, it, you're, you're so right. And I, I actually really th um, like the idea of parents that d didn't play cricket just having a game so they understand the stress that their kids are under when they're playing and they understand the game a little bit more because I think some parents don't understand what it means to their kids when they do poorly or when they do well. Yeah, um, and, and being involved. You know, I mean, if, we, if you look at, at somebody hitting a golf ball, you, know, you put it down and you hit it. Uh, it seems to be very straightforward until you have a go. So, and the cricket is, is quite similar. And the better you are, the easier the game looks. It's that art that disguises. Absolutely, yeah. Know. Well so put. It's, yeah, so it's like it, ballet, it, isn't it? Everyone thinks they could be a ballerina until oh, yeah. they try and just stand on one leg. Yeah, yeah, try I mean, and stand on one leg, yeah, yeah. spin and actually make it look like you're not trying. Well, even <laughs> in a normal course of events, if one of us now went out there and tried to stand on one foot, we could struggle. And that's, exactly. and that's, without, that's without doing, doing anything. Yeah, and that's yeah. without doing a pirouette at all, you know. So uh, these are, it's not easy, is it? You know, no. these are, yeah. Incredible skill to make it look look easy. And the, actually, these two in the middle at the moment, Connor Fletcher and Greg Ford, are making it look pretty easy out there. I don't think it's actually an easy wicket to bat on. Look, looks a little bit uh, a, a little bit easier than yesterday, perhaps. It, it, perhaps it is, yeah. Doesn't it? I don't, it's not sticking anyway. It, no. The ball is coming on nicely. I, you'd always have a sense, particularly with Greg, that he likes the quicker stuff. Yeah. Uh, but no, they're making it very, very, you know, they're very much in command at the minute, anyway. You know. Well. I mean, of course, Greg grew up in South Africa. Actually, both players did. So you find a lot of the time people who come over from the warmer climes, they, they prefer the pace on the ball. It's what they're used to. Yes, yes. Yeah. But uh, they're both doing well against the slower spinners as well. I know that it's very composed. There's, there's no rash shots being played, you know, so... I thought they played uh, Manjeet Singh in particular very well. He's a difficult, looks like a difficult bowler to face, but those moon balls. Did you have a look at those? Oh, it's up in the air, yeah. When is it going to come down? <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. What will I do with this one? Yeah. You yeah. Think, through, think through three or four shots before you decide, I better block this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, yeah, you've played it a few times before you actually get to it, yeah, yeah. Well, we're almost ready to get back out there for the second half of this first innings. It's the Bukit Championship final between Balbriggan and North Kildare. Balbriggan won the toss and elected to bat first, and it was a good choice from skipper Greg Ford. He's out in the middle at the moment. He's just passed his 50. He's joined ably by the opener, Connor Fletcher, 65. He's on, so Balbriggan, 137 for two. Um, a good total on this ground. We saw yesterday it was 260. It looks like they might pass that. Um, but time will tell. A couple of wickets can change everything. And this is, uh, we were saying earlier, Jim, this game nearly has more meaning than the uh, than the Premier League Grand Final yesterday because whoever wins gets promoted. That's right. It has a bigger consequence altogether. And I suppose at, at the other end, let's say Balbriggan lost, having won the league by a distance... Uh, I mean, the, the two clubs have worked very, very hard to 
progress and you know sort of back 10, 12, 15 years ago before the divide between junior and senior was abolished Balbriggan had been a junior club for so long and they just became a senior club at the time when the divide was abolished and they got into division 2 now they look as if they're going to be well we won't jump the gun, but it's a fantastic achievement. You know, and the two clubs have structures in place to play in Premier Cricket. So it's a big, big ask. So um, the consequences are far greater. It's a bit like the playoff in the Premier League, yeah. where, where the first and second, when they play off, you know, this 100 million match or whatever it is. Now, I don't know what the money is in Cricket Leinster these days, but it's probably not, it's probably not that much. Uh, <laughs> you know, even though I'm, I mean, I'm hearing about all this money the Balbriggan got, somebody left him. I'm told it's not true, but I said to Albert Harper, I would have to mention it at length. Uh, there's, no, there's no truth in the rumour at all he's told me uh, so that's 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 some you win and some you lose but I told Albert I would discuss it at like, given that we're only three miles down the road in the hills and hoping to get some of that money as well but no it doesn't exist it's, it's a figment of somebody's imagination well we thank our sponsors Bua uh, it's Bua Kit for the win they've been great supporters of Leinster Cricket this year um, great providers of kit but yeah I heard that rumour as well and I've also heard that it's not true so we'll, we'll just we'll put keep we'll just keep spreading the rumour but make sure we say it's not true yeah and That's scotch the, it frequently well I've spoken yeah. to a number of Harpers now this morning uh, to ascertain the exact sum of money uh, <laughs> just in case they want to give some to me to assist my retirement fund uh, but no I'm told there's no truth in it good bad or indifferent but I will continue to investigate because it's only right that all sources should be uh, ascertained before you actually cancel it completely <laughs> I like that you've spoken to a number of of the Harpers. Um, there are a number of them around, and you can kind of see them gingerly doing lap after lap of the pitch. I think that if if uh, Balbriggan get promoted, it will probably mean the most to that man there. He's just walking past us now. He's Here's a, the legendary Albert Harper is just passing me now, uh, and. Not the last time saying a bad word. Oh, oh, Albert, you wouldn't say a bad word. That wouldn't be your farm. And better than that, at a historical sense, I taught Albert's brother. In my first job, in my first job as a teacher was in Balbriggan, and I, I taught Brian Harper. Uh, we'll we see him walking around the ground at the minute. You'd see, you'd know that I had had an impact on his life <laughs> when, when you when you see him walking around. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. I'll tell you if I spot him. Yeah, it's, well, you'll uh, know about that finish, that, that, that bit of finish and finesse. <laughs> when you see him, you'll know he's a past pupil of mine. Well, Imran Ol Hak is going to bowl his third over. Bowled too short in the first delivery and was pulled straight by Greg Ford. The, the man down at Long On is very wide there. That's probably the widest Long On I've, I've ever seen. Yeah, he's um, covering a lot of acreage, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I think he's. He's nearly covering two positions, but kept it to the single. And uh, good fielding. No, well fielded. From North Kildare. Well done. That's the young youngster. Mumazil Shazad. Um, really beautiful shot from Connor Fletcher. But yeah, you kind of get the sense that the that the Harpers are walking around gingerly. They they want it so much that promotion to, to the Premier League Oh it means so much and then to have the, the, the field called after their dad their late dad Jack Lord of Mercy who as a matter of interest is 14 years dead today uh, it, it means an awful lot and to have invested time effort everything into having a great club so they've, they've done brilliant work Well I, it's a place I love going to I have to say Balbriggan you're always so welcome there and uh, great to see them starting some girls cricket as well that's right, and it's the only club where you get sausages. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Rooney cooks sausages for me; they're lovely, okay, and that's Audrey's mother. I'll have to, I'll have to. You hold might them be on the healthy that. option, though. You'll be eating lettuce or something. No, I'd love them. I'd love them Would to you? give nice me a sausage. sausage yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to mention it when I'm going past Do the Balbriggan yeah, tent, yeah, yeah, so they know yeah. for the next time. Mrs. Rooney does the sausages. A good dive down to third man there to finish that over. Greg Ford coming through for a single, and it's. 26 gone now. Paul Brigham moving along nicely, 140 for two. These two just look in the mood, don't they? It's so difficult as a bowling team when you've two men in. And, and, are, and well set. Yeah. And, and just not taking chances either. And, and have enough runs got that they don't need to take chances. You know, they don't have anybody sort of ringing in to say, would you ever get on with it or anything, you know? <laughs> that happened. I, I we was, saw that yesterday, didn't we? Well, I was doing a match in Balbriggan and there was one of the lads whose wife was watching the game and she rang the husband to tell the son to get on with it, not to stop <laughs> blocking the ball. The young lad was under enough pressure with all his mother ringing in. More blocks than a wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. 
it's going to be opening brother Mamazil Shazad again. He's uh, he's built a good pace on occasion today. When he's when he's dropped that pace, he's been a bit easier to get away. But he bends the back again, and uh, Greg Ford so good at dabbing it down to third man, third man yep. just rotating the strike. That they'll be delighted. Uh, North there that they got rid of the left-handed opener, Ganem Dara. That was looking to get a bit frustrating, the left-right combination. That's right, and, and very hard to bolt and very hard to set a field to. Just making sure I get my names right here in the in our programme, it says... Mumazil, but it's Muzamil. So apologies if you're listening and you're getting frustrated for me saying that wrong. Muzamil Shazad. A really exciting prospect for North Clare. Good to see some youngsters coming through. A few on the in a few exciting youngsters in Paul Brigan as well. Not necessarily in the team today, but uh, they put a load of work into their youth structure. Oh, they're superb. I I did. Uh, I think it's Colts. I'm I'm totally confused now. I don't know what age groups mean anything anymore. But I saw young lads playing cricket, so we, we'll do it at that. And there was a girl keeping wicket, so it's not. That's it, the juniors. That was the juniors. That's juniors. Yeah. I I don't know anymore. But I saw uh, this young Dunphy, who was a beautiful cricketer. Yeah. A very tall boy. Very very good. There's a son of um, Shahid Iqbal on it as well, and uh, a very 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 good. Uh, they they won the double this year. Yeah, and they're a very talented team. Very 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 talented team. So uh, and great work. And it's great to see it because you often see with some of the regulations, we say with retirements, they militate against small clubs because you tend not to have depth. Yeah. You know, I mean, a big club could have 12, 11 yeah. cricketers. The smaller clubs might have, might have two. And with retirements. You're not allowed impact. Yeah. You know, so it's a, it's great. It's a fantastic achievement. But actually, in youth cricket this year, it's great to see so many trophies were shared around. Yeah, you there know, was a, a wide a spread. A spread, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, and that's Izzy McLean is keeping wicket for the boys team. Really good to see her. She's very good. Being encouraged along because she's the, kind of the oldest of the bunch of girls they have there. They've good uh, good group being uh, moulded into shape by... Adrian Harper, he's... That's right, Adrian's involved. No, it's very good because that lady keeps her our seconds, I think, uh, that young girl on Yes, she does. Yeah, and very good. And I mean, the day I was there, now she was going up, to, I think, to Mullingar the following day to play representative cricket of some sort. I don't know what it yes, was. Yes, she was. She was representing Leinster under-13s and kept wicket and kept wicket very well. No, and she's very well. tidy wicket yes, keeper. She's very good. Well, I think keeping on the boys' team is, is always going to make you better. Um, so 27 hours gone. There's a decent over that from Mozamil Shazad. Two from it. Balber going to move along to 142 for two. Um, North Kildare as well, of course, do a huge amount of work on their both their women's and their their youth sides. Um, two women's teams as well, but great to see that uh, that the hills are facilitating the growth of. Balbriggan's um, girls section by including them in their women's section while they don't ha while Balbriggan are yet to have a women's team. That's right, and we also have some girls from um, North County, uh, you know, and and uh, it wouldn't be something you know that you'd have a lot of wonderful cooperation among the clubs. We tend to be rivals, but we would also support one another. So we have girls from North County again who are not at that age group, but I I think. I mean, I would have said five or six years ago, I mean, when we were talking about diversity, where we really were struggling that we didn't, where all the clubs weren't, weren't fielding girls' teams. Yeah. So I think it's great that that series, thanks to your own work, that that is now happening and recognised as something that should be done and, and you know, uh, and developed. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been asked in the past, um, what, why, why should you have a girls' team? Why is it good for a club? And I thought it was an odd question because I thought, well, why wouldn't you? It's half the it's half the population. <laughs> so you half know, the population, yeah. why do you have a boys team? Why do you have any teams at all? It's the same. The, the answers would be the same regardless of. Uh, but it's you know, hopefully times are changing and and, yeah, and socially it makes an awful difference. It does yeah, because with the games being so long, it's great to have people around. You know, boys and girls playing cricket and being friendly with one another and so on. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it makes an awful difference to a club to have people involved. You know, I mean, yeah. particularly now, I mean, with with the games taking so long. 
You know, yeah. cricketers are arriving about three hours early to visualise and then going home about three hours later. Although they, some I find another might be going early, some of them like going to ballet and <laughs> opera, so they like the games to finish about half five. But they're there in the morning from half past nine, ten o'clock, visualising. So it's it's a it's a longer day. So it's important to have people, the whole family involved. Yeah, it needs to be it needs to be welcoming for everyone. And you know, you get that age old thing of where you can't you hear a guy can't play because. I'm going to put in air quotes here. You can't see it, but the wife won't let me away for the day. That's right. Or two days in the weekend. Whereas, if they, if if um, the wife or the husband say my husband is obviously very, very very comfortable, very comfortable coming to my cricket matches. Yes. Um, you want them to be feel like they can come down and, and want to come down and be included in that. So, they're apart from just providing the service for the general human race, it's, it's got benefits for the club as well. A huge benefit, and I'm going back a long, long time when I would embarrass you, Isabel, where we arrived in under-11 match to Hills to play Merion. And Merion had two ladies on the team and our lads didn't want to play them because they were afraid they might kill one of them. Little did we realise how good the two ladies were going to turn out to be. And to the acute embarrassment of the lads who got dispatched all around the ground, our coach nearly had to be sedated on the way home. Uh, as a result of what these two ladies, I didn't want to allow play, the two sisters, uh, which is going back... That's, well, I'd rather not mention quite how long, how long back. No, that's why I, I'm different <laughs> difference to you. That's the last thing I want is to mortify you. I know air. people can look it up. It's it's over 25 years it's ago now. Case, yes. Yes. yes, it was a long time ago. Different times, but going to be a change changing the bowling now from the Wilfield Road end. It's the first time, first time we're going to see James. James Smith. James Smith. James Smith. Yeah. The uh, fast bowler. He's the most experienced player in in this North Cadera team has played for a few different clubs there's that bit of fielding we just saw really good work from these two working together to try and stop the one but good running from Greg Ford so yeah James Smith Jim Jam as he's known is that right yeah, I can remember James coming through the youth set up uh, he, I think he might have played he played on some of the representative he teams he did yeah he's did a youth yet. international yes 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 and he was with YM I think yes that's true he was YM and then Ternier and now very happy out in North Ladare. Great to have someone of his experience as they try and and make their case to come up to the Premier League. Decent start, but okay. good placement from Greg Ford. That's a really, really good placement. They're going to come back for two. For two, yep. Really just blocked that into the offside. Um, yeah, just mentioning that under-11 game, I, I'm not, I, I don't think Cecilia and I really batted that much we bowled. I, we used to get a lot of wickets. Cecilia famously got Kevin O'Brien out twice in one over. Oh uh, yeah, and it cost five runs each time. You have to go up to. I think the you div- we used to divide the whole score, didn't we? Was that how we did? Uh, no, you took f- oh, five runs five off. Five runs yeah, off. I need to swap. I need to swap ends. Yeah, and, yeah. and then to be famous games where teams didn't score any runs at all, they were nil. Yeah. But they hadn't lost any wickets and won a match because uh, the other crowd just kept losing wickets. <laughs> yes. uh, so it, it, it was it, an odd way of going oh, about oh, it, wasn't yes. it? But you also got bonuses for something else as well. So catches or what was it? it, it, bonus? no, it was bonuses great. for not losing wickets. So that's how you'd get on to ten, wasn't it? That's yes. Right. That's how you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and what what was great about it, it was the best thing was at the end of the game, all the youngsters would gather around you to know who would won, because there was all these heavy, <laughs> heavy, complicated maths to be done. Uh, so it was it was the only sport where no one ever knew who had actually won a game. So it was it was it was exciting, uh, you know. But as I say, our lads, now you batted in pairs, so you yeah, batted yeah. because my lad now on his debut, now, but the older lad, the, the only instruction he got from Mick Dewar was don't get out. Yeah, and he ended up on not not out. So that was considered was to be enough, successful. Yeah. 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 No, no, he only blocked two balls because the fellow was good at counting at the other end. The uh, that single brought up the one fifty for Balbriggan. Yeah, Cecilia used well leg spin and uh, I think with good flight. So Kevin O'Brien danced down the wicket, missed the ball, and I can't remember. I, I think he was either stumped or bowled. We had a decent wicket keeper at the time. Two wicket keepers, two different ones. Ian O'Hurley. Ian O'Hurley, and I think John Blake and he did some of the wicket keeping right. as well. And, and uh, then so he was he was out, swapped ends. There was a single next ball out again. Oh, I, 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 Cecilia will have to let me know. It's, I can't remember if it's two or three times that she got him out, but the ego definitely got hold of him that day. That would have been in, de- deflated, all right. That wouldn't do much for you. No. Uh, there was because one of those games between Railway and Mary. Yeah. Was it Duncan Smith ran through? No. I don't know which of them won, but they were bowled out for a very low score in the final. Yeah. Uh, no, that was a superb, if you remember, that Merrion underage team. Yes, Eddie yeah. would say it was the best underage yeah, team it was the best ever underage the team. Club. Yeah, it was. Uh, they were fantastic. And none of them none of them playing anymore, unfortunately, which is, well, not for Merrion anyway. But, uh, 
Yeah, Cecilia and I got banned from uh, that under 11 team for the final, semi final and final for being women. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> so not easy. Different times. Different times, different times. And and I mean, I was involved in the youth branch at the time and there would have been an awful lot of discussion, but a lot of it, it revolved around danger. Yes. Uh, because at that point, helmets weren't compulsory. Well, they were certainly compulsory for, for me and my. I uh, mean, Cecilia, but we played with them. Um, did we play the cricket ball? No, it was, it was an incredible ball, ball at yeah. under 11, and then it was a hard ball yeah. at under 13. Well, I know I, after that experience, I didn't. we didn't play boys' cricket again until we played in the men's side, but the danger thing doesn't really make sense at under 11. Anyway, great to see that it's the, the law has changed and uh, it's really only at the senior level that danger comes into it and people have to get permission to, to play. So that's the end of the 29th over. Valbriggan 155 now for two. And 156, two excuse me. And the two lads very, very well set. There's John Morgan and Anna just passing by, two legendary fink cricketing people. Yeah, great to see them here supporting. Um, Greg Ford is really scoring at a good rate. He's almost caught up to Conor Fletcher, even though he's only been in for about half the time. Had a good bit of the strike since coming in though. 56 balls for his 53. Connor Fletcher, 72 from 85. Sorry, excuse me, 62 balls for his 60. The score score has just changed. Um, we're going to see Imran Ulhak again for the 30th over. And same as the last over, he drops short, but Greg Ford manages to pick out that very odd fielding position once again. Yes, yes, indeed. I think we'd have to call that double wide long on. It's, it's a, that's a serious, that's an awful lot of real estate to have to cover, <laughs> that poor man up there. <laughs> Maybe they've decided that, that if he hits it straight, it's four, so they're just going <laughs> to, they're going to just defend the squarer boundaries. They do say that the slower the wicket is, the harder it is to play straight, so perhaps they just think it's it's too slow for the ball to be going back down the ground. Yes, that's uh, interesting now as to what tactics North Kildare might ad adopt to restrict the score, because it, it's near no one to restrict the score, rather, I mean, obviously if you take wickets, but it's a, it's a, it's a big dilemma for them now. They're looking at, I mean, if you're looking at the, you know, the idea of the 30 overs and doubling, you're looking at an awful score. Yeah, you are. They, they, they're looking straight down the barrel of 300 at the moment. It's a tough one. They need to take wickets, so do they attack and then, you know, they're in the danger of getting hit for even more runs, or...? Just look to contain, which they haven't. And that's the wicket. They have taken the huge wicket of Greg Ford. Snuck through celebrations. Imran Hulhak has his man. Big wicket. Big wicket. Commentators, course, there we are uh, with uh, Mary, or Balbriggan scoring 360 runs. And the next thing, the main man is out clean bowled. I better apologise to Greg when I see him on my way around. <laughs> Greg Ford goes for a well-made 60. That one's really turned, just got through the gate, just turned. didn't get in line, did he? Didn't, he wasn't in line for it. It was really good length. Um, he'll be kicking himself, Greg Ford was batting so beautifully. But uh, he's, he's done a good job for his team. And uh, we were just talking earlier, actually, Jim, about when you're in on the sidelines and you're a bit nervous for a final you're hoping that the openers stay out there for a long time you're like just stay out there keep going keep going and then you start thinking no no like I want to bat come on yeah you're, yeah, you're, get there, out. Lo you're there long enough yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come Warren on, come comes on. out with a bottle of water would you ever get on with it <laughs> no, uh, uh, get on with it and let me come in and yeah, have yeah, my go yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. no that was that was a serious partnership four from eight leaves four six from fifteen ninety four ninety four 94, really good. That's the kind of uh, a match winning coming together, that especially the pace they, they the, got. Yes, that. That there were no balls wasted. The coming batter for Val Brigham is Chris DeFratis. So, Chris DeFratis joins Connor Fletcher, the mainstay of this Val Brigham innings so far. He's on 73, but Chris DeFratis, the left hander, gets his chance. Always nice coming in at number five with. Plenty of time left, but a healthy score on the board. But and able to enjoy himself, yeah, that he can also let himself get in as well, that he's not under any big pressure to start hitting straight away. Well, they've 
brought the field in somewhat at North Kildare mid off and mid on now inside the ring they're going to try and put the squeeze on see if they can run through a few quick overs here without too With much it, damage yes indeed yeah oh no they're coming in all right their tails are up so Good. that's 30 overs gone and Balbriggan lose a wicket in that over 158 for three Okay, so with that, thank you so much, Jim Bennett. We'll definitely have you back, I hope, in the second innings if, uh, if you'll have us. That's the batting card so far. And uh, we're getting plenty of messages in saying how much everyone's enjoying that commentary. With that, I'll welcome Craig Senior back to the commentary table. And uh, I hope you, you were able to hear some of that, uh, Craig. Uh, yeah, what a great guest. I said we'll definitely have to have him back in the second innings. You can, you can have a chat with him. Uh, later on, such a great servant to the game and a great choice as uh, incoming president of Cricket Leinster. Well deserved and it's a good move by Cricket Leinster because <coughs> we know Jim will be at a game every single day he can be. Yeah, and it's, if he's making a speech at, at dinners and things like that, then it's somewhere I want to be. This is James Smith back again, bowling to Connor Fletcher and a bit of a misfield, a, a rare misfield really in point. That partnership between Ford and <coughs> Fletcher, I mean, that was just 94 quite quick runs. Yeah, they ran, They really were batting at a good pace, so they'll be, they'll be delighted to, to see the back of, of Greg Ford. It was a really good delivery from Imran Ulhak to get rid of him. Turned well, got just about snuck through the gate. I think it might have might have caught the glove or the pad, or I'm not really sure. It seemed to connect just with something on the way through. And just had enough momentum to take the bales off. And a big appeal, but straight away, Will Houston shakes the head. That's definitely pitched outside the line. That's the problem with bowling over the wicket, uh, especially when you bowl at the pace and that uh, that James Smith does. He's always going to pitch it outside leg if it's hitting the stumps. Yeah. Right arm over, still the left-hander. He's going to have to do something special with the ball to get the LBW from there. Well, he'd have to be bowling a Yorker length, really, wouldn't he? Still, that's what North Kildare need at the moment, is chances and opportunities, if only to keep the spirits high. Well, I think that wicket of uh, Greg Ford was vital at this point, because if they can get a few through a few overs now without much damage, um, then they might find they can take some wickets at the back end as as Balbriggan look to accelerate. You know, as the batsmen start to chase runs rather than accumulate them, chances will come. And Fletcher just looks a little bit stuck here. I think he prefers to be on the back foot, to be, to be fair. Um, good on the front foot, but I'd say his stronger suit is the back foot. He's just slowed down a little bit in the, since... Uh, even since Greg Ford came in. Yeah, well, Greg Ford went off at such a pace. Uh, he wasn't hanging around, run a ball uh, for his 60-odd. Seems um, to offend his groove here, James Smith. And, uh, it certainly let um, Connor Fletcher just quietly go about his business, knowing that runs were coming at the other end. But yes, James Smith is pulling a good line in length here now. As you say, he's not letting Fletcher get on to the back foot too much. Possibly just spotted Fletcher coming there, just dropped it a little bit shorter, but Fletcher able to push it down the ground. Long on is out in the boundary. So a good over from, from Smith. 31 overs gone and Balberg 161 for three. Slightly murkier day today than, than yesterday, Craig. Yeah, still see the towers up on the mountain, which is always a sign. And as long as you can see the towers, I don't think it's going to rain for a while. And hopefully we'll stay away from any rain at all today. Very still. Yeah, no wind, not a breath. 
That's probably why it's not too cold here. Do We do have the, the jackets on today, but uh, no need for a scarf as of yet. It's looking like poor weather again tomorrow, though, for the Ireland-Zimbabwe match. It would be really disappointing to see Ireland really improve their performance from game one into game two. They'll want their opportunity to take a full 10 points tomorrow. Flashing blade outside off, missing the ball through to the keeper. Yes, Ireland will rue the missed chance of picking up a full 10 points in that second game, having posted 2-8-2. Oh, that's just a easy, gentle run. Long on comes in to fetch the almost stationary ball by the time he gets to it. Yes, yeah, really just a block for one. Absolutely no chances being taken by Connor Fletcher here. He's planning on on batting the 50 overs, and I think if he does, then uh, Bell Brigan should come out on top in this game. Usually if you've someone in the top five scoring a century, you're, you win more games than you lose. Imran El Hack to the left handed De Freitas. He's gone straight back over the bowler's head. Just a couple of feet wide of the sight screen for a nicely played four. That's a beautiful shot. Just lifted it over the bowler's head. Didn't try and over hit it. That's the problem with bowling straight as an off spinner. You can get, get punished down the ground. Drags the length and the pace. Adds a bit of pace onto that one. It's cut away. Didn't want to get hit back over his head again. I think he'll, we might see him leave those fielders out for both batsmen now. We see this wide long on come back into wide, place. Wide, wide mid on. Yeah, uh, double wide, on. I was saying yeah. earlier. Yeah, he's actually... Just short of Cale Corner. Yeah, he's, kind of, he's wider than the, than the scoreboard, which is remarkable. So De Freitas scored a boundary of his first ball this over and then they just turned the strike over and without really much effort they're going at sevens and eights here well Brigham. Chris De Freitas picking up where Greg Ford left off. Well, well over five and over now. And the foundation in place for a... Oh! Could finish the over, but uh, Belbergen will be pleased with it. 32 overs gone. Belbergen 168 for three. And we were mentioning earlier there's a danger man to come in. You'd have to think he'd come in next, Nathan Rooney. If he comes in in the back end, he can be really dangerous. What they won't want is him facing any of these spinners because he can really punish them square. Loves a slog sweep. It's a big boundary, but uh, no doubt he wouldn't have a problem clearing the ropes. Well, certainly it's the bowlings from the Wilfield Road end. I think that's one of the shorter boundaries down to that cow corner. Fletcher's walking down a little bit, trying to change the length on, on Smith. It is difficult to play play him if, if you stand in your crease because he's such a tall guy, but not bowling at huge pace. So if he bowls in a good length, it, it's very difficult to, to score any singles. It's always a worry that one's just going to pop a little bit and make you play it in the air. With two short and good placement. It's kind of plugged in the outfield though, so uh, the man up Long on, comes around and keeps it to two. I think they, they thought that was a boundary, and the fielders as well thought that was a boundary as soon as it left the bat, but uh, just didn't hit it quite as cleanly, I think. You might uh, have hit one of your puddles of dew. <laughs> Those puddles of dew, they're dastardly. <laughs> Shuffles down again and clips into the leg side. It's clever batting from Fletcher, just putting Smith slightly off his length. And again, like yesterday, the left hand, right hand combination causing changes in the field, change of line for the bowler. Makes it slightly more difficult. A 
that's well kept out. Good line and length from Smith. The Fraser's there just playing it out on the leg side. I'm getting plenty of messages in from people saying they really enjoyed Jim's commentary. It's very enjoyable listening to him. So we'll definitely have to have him back on, I think. <laughs> keep keep the spectators happy. He's been good, um, Smith, at, at adjusting his line to the left-hander, showing his experience, most experienced man in this team. I'm surprised it took so long to, to bring him on, actually. Uh, yes. I wondered if perhaps he was actually carrying an injury into the game, and that's why he hadn't come on earlier. But when you see him bowling balls like that, you do wonder why they were holding him back in reserve, especially when Ford and Fletcher were going so well together. Yeah, his height just adds a little something extra. 33 hours gone. Belbergen 171 for three. So with 17 overs remaining, Belbergen have the potential here to, uh, to go big. And one wonders when they'll press the accelerator. Well, I think we'll see Fletcher continue to just knock the ball around until want to get towards 100, and then we might see him kick on. But... Uh, Krista Freitas hasn't been holding back too much since coming in. It's a nice position for De Freitas to come in with such an established batsman there. He's already on 80. Yeah, we were just saying that um, as a number five, coming in with 20 overs to go with the score, I think it was on 158 when he came in. It's really lovely position for a number five to come in plenty of time to make an impact but you're not worried you're not trying to mind your wicket too much yeah you're not having to rebuild that's always the tricky one for a number five as difficult as it is sitting on the sideline with your pads on far more difficult to be thrown into the fray very early with your side in a tricky position whereas here he has a steady partner at the other end and he can play as he wishes to So Connor Fletcher gets off strike. I'd be interested to see if Chris De Freitas decides to take on the off spinner. He is turning away from him, and we've seen Olhak get a bit of spin, so he might be worried about dancing down the track too, with too much abandon. Keeper standing up to the stumps for the off spinner, of course. He's, um, I don't think he's the regular North Kill there keeper. Reverse sweep comes out. It's a real flourishing shot and a, a strange one, really, considering there's a third man and a backward point in play. Really good over from Imran Ulhak. 34 hours gone. Um, Balbriggan, 172 for three. Yeah, I think he'd probably do better to play the regular sweep shot with the, the field that was in place for all the hack. There seemed to be an element of premeditation about it. Well, I think but you have to premeditate the reverse, don't you? But perhaps it's uh, an indication that De Freitas is looking to push on. Feels he does have the freedom. Smith to continue then from the Wilfield Road end. Yeah, he's built three overs for 16, so slightly expensive. <laughs> good fielding in mid wicket there. They've been good in the field, uh, North Kildare kept the energy up. It can be difficult sometimes when, when you're not taking too many wickets and the opposition are scoring well, but uh, they've chased everything down. And that's the problem there for Fletcher, that that kind of length from Smith 
just gets up a little bit more than for the other bell is. The extra height helping. Bit of a ring on the offside for Smith. Whereas on the leg side, just the one man finding for the single. Something that's a great addition to final day on the far side of the ground, a speed gun, gun to check the paces that uh, any children in the crowd are bowling. It's in the air, a chance. And gone. Connor Fletcher can't believe he's just done that. He's had I mean, a stern word of himself. 81 for him. Good catch from Murtaza Siddiqui in the deep. Settled himself. And uh, he never looked like dropping that one. No, he, he was rock solid under that. And that's fourth wicket to fall. And I think you're right. I think that with the ball breaking score Nathan Rooney. 172, Connor Fletcher departs, caught by Murtaza Siddiqui of the bowling of James Smith for a wonderful 81. Yeah, so Nathan Rooney, the danger man, comes out. There's an element of... Uh, I really don't know what Connor Fletcher was thinking there. There was a man posted down there. He didn't get all of that at all. Nathan Rooney. And he was staring down the barrel of a, you know, a, a century quite a, quite early in the game. He would have had plenty of time to play shots like that in a few hours, having passed the, the century mark. I don't know if it was a conscious decision to try and up the run rate. It's not like the run rate was particularly low before. I think it was just the red mist. Saw one he couldn't leave alone. Lost his head for a minute. That's and all Siddiqui, it takes. Siddiqui taking a fine catch. So De Freitas and Rooney now. Yeah, 172 for four now. Two big stands so far in this Belbriggan innings. 63 for the opening stand and for the third wicket, 94. Other than that, North Kildare plugging away. Bit of miscommunication, not really a chance down at the bowler's end. So difficult to run someone out there. They really need to be standing still at the striker's end for you to affect a run out from there. And also to have somebody at the stumps at the non-striker's end. Otherwise it has to be a direct hit. Well, it's a bugbear of mine, the, the bowlers who just call bowler's end all of the time, regardless of where the ball has gone. Bit of a habit, they get excited, they want the run out down their end, but uh, and so often rarely the, happens. Often they're 10 yards away from the stumps to start with, having just finished their follow through. So here's the new man to the crease, Nathan Rooney. It's a big ball, but uh, he might we might see him just knock it around for a few balls and try and take the game a bit deeper. And calls. Taking on the arm straight away. That's well run. Yeah, he runs there a little bit gingerly having taken that second. Don't know if that's just from tiredness already or he's got a bit of a niggle, but uh, yeah, good running from him. Yes, as cool as it is, not, not exactly the weather for hamstrings. Uh, one assumes that everyone has warmed up properly. That's a funny one about cricket, isn't it? You, you're warming up for a while and then the captain wins the toss, elects to bat and you're down six or seven. Two hours later, you're expected to go out and run a quick two. 35 over is gone. Bell Bergen, 175 for four now. Well, North Gildare have done well, just taking the occasional wicket, but they're, they're starting to feel that Bell Bergen are gonna start attacking for these last 15 overs, six wickets in hand. It's always a difficult one to decide when exactly to launch because if they launch now and lose a few wickets it could could really hurt their chances of, of getting above that par score of 230. Yes, and uh, they've been on course to surpass that so if North Kildare can keep them under, even under 250, they feel that they've done quite well in the field. Funny 
choice not to run there. And Chris De Freitas, you'd have to think that uh, it was right between the two fielders they could have got through. When you see some of the singles they have taken already. And they've taken that one straight to the fielder. Really good backing up. That's fabulous backing up. Devanesh. Bounce Sally. Youngest member of the North Kildare team. Showing the advantage of youth and fitness. These two now have that difficult choice of rebuilding or going for it. I don't think we'll watch Nathan Rooney defend Imran al Haq for too long. <laughs> he, he won't be able to resist having a bit of a dip. So it could be either a few runs being scored or a wicket very soon. Leaves that one on width. Willie Clark signals nothing but two left in the over. Hesitation in the run. <laughs> That's all happening with these two. They didn't run a run when it was clearly a single and now they've run two that have gone straight to the fielder. just feels like something's going to happen, doesn't it? It does. There's, there's definitely an anticipation. It's not pressure building, but there's an anticipation that something's going to happen. It's an exciting over. No, no, no real runs or wickets from it, but plenty of confusion. 36 gone, Valbrigg and 177 for four. No surprise to see James Smith continuing from the Wellfield Road end. No, he's picked up a wicket in his last over. His captain will be hoping for something similar here now. Numbers five and six for Balbriggan. They've had a little shut in the middle. I'm sure it's just saying there's no panic as yet. No need to go mad. They are taking quick singles, which might create an opportunity in its own. Well, I wonder, are they, have they sorted out whatever the confusion was? I don't know if they discussed running the straight to fielders, but uh, you usually have to decide beforehand if you're going to do it. Super delivery from Smith to start the 37th over. Perhaps that's why the captain held them back. As they knew that most experienced bowler, to bowl at a time when Balbriggan might be looking to get on with it. I sent back again. Confusion between these two batsmen. Well, there's a usual um, kind of rhythm to a bowling team, uh, isn't there? This you've got your opening bowlers, you kind of know who's going to come next. So at the end of the season, I'm sure James Smith probably knew he'd, he'd come on as the sixth bowler. But uh, that's one of the difficult things about captaining representative teams, isn't it? You yeah. <laughs> to figure out who should bowl when without really knowing all the players. Well, you end Chipped up with in. a situation whereby you might have more than one, more than three opening bowlers because they've come from different clubs and they're used to opening for their clubs and suddenly you as provincial captain or selector is sort of saying, well, actually, you're going to be second change. And it's managing that, I suppose, is the tricky thing. Yeah, well, it's usually the best players from their clubs mm -hmm. coming in. They expect to be in the top order and bowling all the time. It's, I find the younger, the younger you go, the harder it is to decide on batting and bowling orders. Played back. Top. Oh, misfield makes them think of the single. It wasn't enough of a misfield, and don't run on a misfield. Was well, that a bit of gamesmanship, perhaps? I think it may have been encouraging the throw. <laughs> Was he Valley pretending like he's missed it, but actually just trying to get the run out? <laughs> I, I was thinking it the other way. The batsman calling for a single in an effort to make him throw it when there's nobody at the stumps and nobody backing up for 30 yards. <laughs> 
Uh, the games we play. Uh, beautifully lifted over middle's head. One bounce over the rope. Four runs. Now that is a super shot. Christopher just, has just planted his foot down the track, followed through with the bat. Lovely arc. And it, it was, as you say, just the one bounce before it crossed the boundary. It seems to be a strength of his. He's just waiting for that extra bit of length, a bit fuller, to lift it over. So James Smith drops the man back at long off. Just look, starting to look a little bit ragged in the field now in North Kildare. Not quite the clean pickups that they were affecting earlier. Uh, here's that shot now. Great extension through the ball. He knows he doesn't need to run as soon as it comes off the bat, just walks down to his partner. Says thanks for that. 37 overs gone. Val Brigham 182 for four, just inching ever closer to the 200 mark. As we saw yesterday, Marion's total of 262 was enough and probably just above par, 250. Yeah, I'd say, I actually would say today the par is 250. It's, the wicket just seems to be playing a, l a little bit better. Um, so 250 is par, but I think in a final anything over 220 for, for North Gold would be a huge ask. So they'll have to bowl out of their skins for the last 13 to keep, keep it keep below that. under that. A few wickets will help. Just has a habit of stepping inside the line, Nathan Rooney. But gets, gets that one back with a square and comes back for two. Maybe Andre both has managed to, to tame him a little bit. We haven't seen any <laughs> wild swings and he's been in for, you know, He's been in for more than 10 runs. That's but he went miss out on that one. Shortened down leg, four runs. Again, one of those shots came off the bat, didn't even bother running. He knew he's found the gap. And the ball had enough pace to find the boundary. I don't understand this field for what Imran Ulhak is bowling. He's got the field set straight, so that means he, he wants to bowl on off stump, really, but he's, he's been operating on leg stump for Nathan Rooney. That's better. It's more where he wants to be bowling. You um. can't bowl spin without a square leg if you're going to bowl on leg stump. The fielder is in deep mid-wicket rather than square, so he needs to bowl a bit more outside off. I think his field is set for that, <coughs> for that sort of delivery. But I think in his mind, he's very wary of giving Nathan Rooney anything he can swing his arms to. Has a big swing, takes the outside hedge, but it's safe. There'll be a run out chance, but Rooney is quick between the wickets. So it comes back for a second. Well, there is an example. Yeah, that certainly wasn't where he was aiming. But it took the edge of the bat, flew through the air, but he picked up two runs from it, but it will offer encouragement to the bowler. Good placement, too straight again, but it won't go to the boundary. It will be a, it will be a couple. Thirty-eight overs gone. Palbergen, one hundred and ninety-two for four. Willie Clark, quite correctly calling left hand. Christophasius will face Smith with twelve overs to go. And perhaps the conversation now is more about putting runs on the board rather than putting a partnership together? Well, I think they'll just try and cross 200, these two, and then we might see them free the arms a little bit. 
light blue touch paper. Step well back. Lofted into the onside over the ring. That's down to the clubhouse for four. And picked up with no effort at all. Such elegance. Transfers his weight onto the front foot and really just a flick of the wrists. Lifts it over the infield and that's a quite a dismissive shot actually. Beautiful boundary for Krista Freitas. Back to back oh. boundaries, strays down leg side and you can't bowl there to Krista Freitas. Four more. That was lovely placement. Just knew he wanted to get bat on ball and that brings up 200 for Bell Brigham. And again, they've picked up eight off two balls without not seeing too bothered about it. A bit more zip about that from Jim Jam. Pushes it across the left hander. I think that's a better area. It's, it's unusual, Christopher Freitas, for a left hander in that he doesn't look like he loves it short and wide. <laughs> I might might be proven wrong now. No doubt he'll cut one away to the boundary before long. But uh, he looks to looks like he prefers the ball up to him. Oh. And misfield again in point. It does get something on it, so it keeps it to one. Good work in the deep by Wakar. That's the sort of fielding that exasperates a bowler. You're bending your back. You're doing your best, and when it's played to you, it just trickles through you. He just didn't move his feet and point there, the youngster. The the longer the game goes on, the the more leaden footed North Kildare have, have looked. I thought they were good in the field up until probably two or three overs ago and they've just started to allow a few mistakes to creep in. Nathan Rooney on strike. A half a hand in mid wicket. That's Good work there in mid-wicket. Sadiqi making good ground. Pick that up, keep it to a single. These two bats nice and settled now. Again. Ready. Perhaps at 40 overs, they really will push the accelerator, but they've already taken nine off this over, so they're not going to get much quicker than nine and over. And finishes with a dot. We might see a change of bowling, I think, coming soon. That was an expensive over for James Smith. He's bowled six. It's one for 34. Not too bad, but uh, Christopher Freitas has taken a liking to his bowling. 39 hours gone now. And Paul Brigham, 202 for four. And Christopher Freitas has moved quite smoothly onto 21, mixing power and touch. And Rooney has already moved on to 15. These two have put on 30 in quick time. I think um, coach Andre both will be pleased on the sideline with how these two have come together. They had a bit of confusion at the start, but they have run well. They've run a good few twos, not just looking to deal in boundaries. Nathan Rooney dances down. Good control, though, to, to not play at that one, really. He wasn't there, and perhaps in the past we would have seen him have a, have a wild swing. That's nicely played, nicely bowled. You get the feeling Rooney is coiled spring here. He's just waiting for the right delivery. <laughs> Goes for it, but doesn't get enough of it actually to get it to the fielder. He's waiting for the catch. It wasn't really the delivery to do it. It was probably too full. He's lucky though that he didn't get all of it because I don't think it would have gone over the fielder. No, the trap was set. He was just a bit 
luckily for him, a bit more tentative than perhaps he would have wanted to have been. The reverse sweep comes out again, but straight to the fielder. Again, strange choice of shot. Yeah, really strange because the fielder on the boundary on the leg side is, is deep mid wicket. So there's a huge gap at square leg if he wants to play the yeah. conventional sweep. Got much more bang for his buck. This time just played out square on the offside. See what comes out of the bag of tricks this time. Beautiful shot from Nathan Rooney. The fielder is very wide, but it's slow down the ground, so he'll cut that off. Doesn't manage to keep it to one though. That's Imran Ul Haq's spell for the day. Ten overs he's bowled. He's taken one wicket. That of Greg Ford. He went for 45. So 40 overs gone. Palbergen 206 for four, and I'll leave you for the moment. Welcome back, Finton McAllister. And Nathan Rooney, 18 not out. That also signals the end of the 10 overs from Imran Al Haq. 10 overs, no maidens, one for 48. One for 48 off his 10 overs. It's not bad in the context of the game. Welcome back, Finton. Thanks a million, Craig. Good to be back. Bit of a stint off there now. And Balbriggan looking like posting a, a big total. Well, with 10 overs to go now in this innings, they're already past 200. And with six wickets in hand, and these two well set, you feel that a big total is in, in their sights. Yeah, these two building a nice, nice partnership. They dragged it back for a bit there, did the Norkel there, and these two are just building nicely. Change of bowling for Norkel there, coming back into the attack and doing so this time from the Willfield Road end of the ground is Devanch Bansa. He took a wicket in his first spell. His captain's now given him the Willfield Road end to bowl from. Yeah, and keep her up to the stumps. Left arm over. Nobody behind on the boundary to save the runs if the keeper does miss it. He's bowling to the left-handed De Freitas now. Oh, another misfield. There's too many of these for North Kildare now. Yeah, I think they'll be a bit disappointed with how they've probably failed today. There's been there's been a couple of couple of misfields that have leaked runs for them. Now each one each misfield might only be costing a single, but they are adding up and they do spread throughout the team. It's almost like it's catching. They are, and as well as that, it just takes that. That bit of pressure, if you're building a bit of pressure in an over, it just takes that pressure out of it. Especially with a right-hander and a left-hander, it makes such a difference if you can just keep rotating the strike. Rooney showing a certain amount of self-restraint uh, here. Yeah, I don't think it'll be too long before he starts uh, freeing up the arms. Vanch, bowling well. He's a young lad, but you can see why he's in their first team. And left arm over, of course. Any of those we find, we look after. And they're, they're golden. <laughs> the running between the wicket of these two has been perplexing at times. They've turned down runs that were there, and then gone for ones where you think, oh, direct hit would have them in trouble. <clears throat> Just a 
single. Gets yeah. it to Fraser's off strike again. And again, now they have the right hander with the changes in the field. And the van just started off nicely in his in his spell here. Oh, slightly manufactured shot from Rooney, getting his head out of the way. Nice bit of improvisation there from Rooney. Knowing that any bat on it at all would result in runs. Will Houston calls over. That's 41 done. Now, I'm going to tell you the score says 2-11 for four. But of course, the Pembroke score box not always up to date. Although, as it matches the score on your screen, we'll go with that. De Freitas has moved on to 24. North Kildare coming back into Rooney the now on 21. St. John's Road into the ground is their captain, Manjeet Singh. And as Andrew Blair White tells the crowd here at Sydney Parade, Captain Manjeet Singh bringing himself on now from the St. John's end. He certainly had an effect in his first spell where his second ball took a wicket. The wicket of Farak Nazar, who will be disappointed that he was out for naught in a cup final. Awful feeling. To leave that fine leg area open here. You'd wonder if a little paddle sweep might be on the cards. Starts with a dot. Push out to the offside boundary. They'll get two for that. Just on the distance the ball travelled, on the distance the fielder had to go to get it. Yeah, well picked up out, out there in the deep by Manil Patel. Fielded in the ring. Cry of catch was somewhat optimistic, and instead the ball has just skated past the fielder and hits the sports hub advertising. Yeah, just thrown up a bit, a bit more there by the bowler and quick wrist, quick wrists. Saw that go to the boundary. I do like Manjit's bowling. He's he's not afraid to give it some air. But at this stage of two set batsmen. They're looking to take him on now. Another two. Just as Merrion's running yesterday really did propel their score. It wasn't the amount of boundaries they hit, it was the amount of good running they did. Yeah, well, the boundaries are the same today and they're quite big, so you really have to push those men in the deep. Oh, a good over there for Bob Brigham. So, 219 for four, eight overs remaining. Two set batsmen in. We reckoned earlier on that 220, 230 would be par, but I think they're going to go well past that. Yeah, it looks that way. Oracle, they really need a, a breakthrough from this partnership because these back through for another five overs could be a big total on the cards. Again, you don't get the feeling that they've gone mad. They haven't started playing. T20 shots or baseball or just just sensible cricket shots picking out the twos I'm quite but lucky that the, the batsmen before them have kind of built that platform for them absolutely oh he's disappointed with that 
Rooney has just lifted it into mid wicket's hands. James Smith takes the catch. Yeah, the fielder play, placed perfectly for that. Probably either side of him there now that was running close to the boundary, but good catch. Rooney doesn't look happy with himself how he got out. Probably knows he was in for a, for a big one there. Well, those two together put on 47. It's just the sort of partnership that Balbriggan wanted, but they would have hoped that Rooney would have been round for another few overs anyway. With the Balbriggan score on 219, Nathan Rooney departs, caught by James Smith off the bowling of Devanja Mansali for 21. Important breakthrough that for an Oracle there, something that they, they really needed at this time. And the incoming batter for Balbriggan is Dylan Louise. Dylan Louise, another left hand up. I'm sure the plan here from Balbriggan is to, is to get a ticking over straight away. They're in a position now where they can kick on, so I'm sure they're looking to have as little dots as possible. That means I will give Dylan that one. He's had his sizer. <laughs> <laughs> now we want runs. And there it is. Intent shown straight away. Pulled to the mid wicket boundary. Yeah, off the mark, second ball. Confident shot. Rocked onto the back foot. And again, it's what he would want to do is to get his partner on strike. De Freitas now on 32. Two left-handed batsmen and a left-handed bowler. Where would you see it? Beats everyone. Ricochets off the keeper's pads. About eight pitches away. Well, Houston signals by. Oh, he's waving somebody off at the airport, one or the other. Batsman pulls away. Where's Houston? Flailing arm, signal dead ball. And we'll go again. Nicely played into the offside. That will let him have two. They take on the arm. Yeah, plenty of tools to be picked up out there on the boundary. I'm sure uh, the Norkel there, batters will be watching that as well. Yes, one, one hopes that they do learn the lesson, that it doesn't have to be sixes and fours all the way, but you can accumulate big totals just by keeping the field running around. Captain Manjot Singh will bowl the next over from the St John's end. Round the wicket to the left-handers. Yeah. 
played through the ring. Despairing dive by the ring fielder, not enough. We get another two. Yeah, he used his crease very well there and hit it through the covers. It's nice to see them placing the ball around and not just trying to hit the cover off the ball. Short boundaries here at Sydney Parade are the straight ones today. He's given that one plenty well, that of air. Was, that was unusual. Plenty of air, but it did get some turn as well. I'm sure the batsman will be hoping for another one like that. This time he just lets it go through. <coughs> but he really tossed that one up. Big appeal. William yeah. Clark having nothing to do with it. Two remaining in the over. Well, it either hit his pad or else there was an inside edge that just clipped onto his helmet. Well, this has been a fine over by the skipper. This is what North Kildare need at this stage of the season. Uh, season. <laughs> Well, it's this stage of the innings, indeed, this stage of the season, it's finals day. Forty-four gone, six to go. There hasn't really been the acceleration I'd have expected at this stage. Yeah, true. Yeah, I think Manjeet, and um, credit to him, he's 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 bowled good over there, and he'd be looked to be backed up here. And by the bench here and the following up the over. If they can string a few together, a few overs together here, maybe take a bit of momentum coming off into the into the second innings. I certainly will want that. They know they've got a big total to chase already. Oh. Davanch and Sali, he's been the most expensive her over going for nearly sevens but his captain has faith in the youngster that's great to see yeah an exciting prospect uh, for the future is the van chant things go well for him today could find himself bowling in the premier league next year Yeah, I'm balling really well from this end. Came back with a good first over back at uh, last one, and he'd be looking to follow that up. Comes down the track. Bowler pulls back his length. Means it's just forced into the leg side for a single. Yeah, well fielded out there by Patel. Quick off the mark. De Freitas certainly looking to take on the bowlers now. Taking those two steps down the track. And it's the same. Dylan lose. I think we can honestly say that the acceleration is being looked for now. Yeah, I think they're going to be starting to look to hit boundaries here. <laughs> it's big. There's a man out here. He's running into it. It's going to bounce just three yards in front of him. I feel if he hadn't been chatting with the crowd, he may have been a bit more alert for that one. Yeah, it was in the air for a long time there. Had it gone in straight away, could have been a could have been a chance. The bowler certainly felt so. <laughs> They're going to take two here now. Yeah, they've run their twos very well today. They have indeed, picking up the runs. Boy. 
It's a bit short. It's lifted out into the leg side. It clears the ring. Not hard enough for the boundary riders to catch. And another two. These two's mounting up. And there they're building. Freitas now nearly scoring at a runner ball. 45 gone, 2 3 4 on the board, so par has been reached and passed. And De Freitas has moved on to 40. <laughs> Captain will bowl this the 46 over. And St John's End. The cloud has actually lifted. There's still the same amount of it. It's still 10 out of 10 coverage. But the top of the mountain now far clearer than it was earlier, which is always a good sign. Powerfully hit to the wide ish. Mid off, uh, wide off. He's. Um, not quite as wide as he was earlier on when he was at the other side of the scoreboard. Yeah, and you would think that um, Balbregan would be looking for probably 270 plus here, you would imagine. Everything happening here. Slowly flighted ball in. The reverse sweep attempt missed. Hit pads, leg by. Get the feeling there are going to be fewer and fewer dots now as Belbrigan try and score off every ball. This time the reverse works. One bounce brings it down to the clubhouse. Great shot, picked up on that really nicely. There was intent and he went for it. Once again, just waiting for that ball. He saw it was wide enough, played the shot, and it was safe enough. No fielder down there. <laughs> it's not a bad option, that. He's frustrated with himself, but I think it's the right option. There's a vacant fine leg area there. If he does get anything on it, he can see it running down to the boundary for four. Yeah, nobody from mid-wicket all the way behind square. Is that a fielder? It is, isn't it? Deep square leg. Another reverse, another boundary, and that's proving to be a profitable shot. Dylan Lewis, obviously spent some time in the nets perfecting that shot. Yeah, he hit two of them here very nicely. And again, that's eight for the over quite quickly. Now brought a man in, one feels for that reverse sweep, but he's in the ring, and each time loses cleared that area. This time the boundary rider, as it's hit in front of square, picks that one up. That's a fine over. 46 done, scores moved on to, I suspect, 246. We'll wait for the scoreboard to update itself. Just 24 balls remaining in this innings. When a ball gets them up to 270, they'll be looking for more than that, I think, at this stage. Yeah, you'd think so, and in prime position to do that. Now, a few less, a few less seagulls on the on the ground here here today. Still early in the day. Still wait, early. To, wait for the second innings. The the, f the flock will be down. And they usually come in later on in the later on in the day. Yeah, it'll be feeding time later. We'll be picking all the worms out of Dale's ground. Oh, that's full toss. He's onto that quickly. Well fielded. Somehow has stopped that crossing the boundary. Yeah, great bit of feeling um, down there, fine leg. Made a lot of ground to cover that and got the dive, got the hand out, stopped it going over the boundary. Bit of a free hit. Full toss on the hips.
Oh, he's picked that up beautifully. That is a super shot. That's a fantastic shot there. Well, it had timing and power, and that was six to possibly the longest side of the ground. Uh. And it wasn't even a half volley, really. It was it was more kind of Yorker length that he picked that up off. That's a fantastic shot. Right, picked off half his toes. Six runs the result. And 250 up for Balbriggan now. They certainly will be pleased with this innings. They get the two with a slight misfield, slight fumble by the fielder. Allowed them to get back for two. Keeps loose on strike. Bit of a fumble down there at mid-off and the, the pass more quick too. They're pushing the fielders very hard here in the deep and it's paying off dividends for them because they've, they've ran many twos. Those twos are adding up. The score's moved on to 2.55. Just is now looking for runs all round the ground. He's proven a hard man to bolt. He's hitting it in um, in different areas and all around the ground. Doing a fantastic job here for Balbriggan. Another one that he's hit straight. And oh, it just gets beyond the hands of James Smith. For all intents and purposes, the batsman had given up on that one. But the ball just fell to ground. Yeah, it went quite high. It can be one of the harder catches, I suppose, running over your shoulder. Um, trying to catch. Probably the hardest catches in the game. Over your shoulder and very outstretched arms. Make it so difficult to take those catches. Fine bit of fielding in the deep, keeps it down to a single, ends the 47th over. 2.59 now. De Fraser's edging closer to good half century here. Both batsmen, I think, going to get dry gloves. And a couple maybe of bats being brought out as well. Yeah, maybe bring out the, the heavier bat, try and get the bottom hand in. <laughs> He's hit a couple of big balls and they haven't gone as far as he wanted, so perhaps he's now looking, as you say, for a bat that's got a slightly more weight in it. Wicket keeper now leaving his helmet to the side. Oh. That really is a sin. They've made the wicket keeper go all the way over to the tents to get rid of his helmet. Not one of his teammates willing to do the running for him. I wouldn't be happy as a keeper myself now with that. I'd be calling someone over. For North Kildare coming back into the attack. This time from the St. John's Road end of the ground is Muzzlemill Shazad. Shazad who opened the bowling. Seven overs, none for 36 so far. Bit of interest is that. Uh, run rate, economy rate of 5.1. I think if he can keep it at 5.1, his captain will be very happy. Again, no fine leg here. They've got kind of deep square, so that is going to be an area for them to target, you would imagine. Beautifully played out, well fielded. He'll keep it down to a single. I'm surprised the captain hasn't gone back to Wasi Valley. He's only bowled six overs, but he was only going for three and a half. Again, this vacant area at fine leg can be dangerous. It, it's definitely an area you would imagine that these batsmen are definitely going to look to target. Anything on the legs here will be four runs. And Lewis is obviously aware of that fact, the way he went to play that one. And he was just trying to get an edge onto it. Plenty of empty space down at fine leg. Yeah, he just needs one one there to get away with that, and he's 
You can see he's quite good on the sweep, so it's probably going to be no problem to him. Wouldn't be surprised if he goes again for a shot like that this over. He's certainly glancing over to the leg side. That's his intent. Said he gets the ball down the offside. Nobody's going to stop that single at this stage of the innings. But that brings De Frazers back onto strike. He's out in the middle on 44 now. North Cordero have five outside the ring now. Knowing that at this stage of the innings, protecting those boundaries is important. So they've matched Merrion's total from yesterday. Yep. And we know that was a winning score. Powered away through square leg. There's two fielders after it. They will pick it up inside the rope. Siddiqui with a good throw. Nobody at the stumps. But with somebody backing up, no cost. Yeah, and the fray has just given himself a bit of room. Last couple of balls there. Probably looking to target over that mid off area there with the with the man up. Right, what are the what are the odds here on a on a paddle? I'm gonna go for it. It's up in the air. Nobody's gonna get to it in time. They just take the single. Another one falls to ground. And that's forty eight overs done now. Balbriggan having won the toss and elected to bat, have certainly made best use of that. And they're now on 265 for five, with two overs to go. Chris De Freitas has moved on to 47, and he's being ably backed up by Dylan Luz, who's moved on to 29 in quick time. Seems to be some debate amongst the North Kildare players as to who should be bowling and who still has overs to Two go. Overs to go in the first innings of the Buakish Championship final between Balbriggan and North Kildare. And to bowl the final over the innings from the Wilfield Road end of the ground for North Kildare. Coming back into the attack is Wazi Fali. Well, we say it here, it happens there. Wazi Mali so far, six overs, 21. Yeah, and as you said earlier, Craig, I'm quite surprised that he didn't didn't come on sooner. That he hasn't bowled his ten. Yeah, yeah, that he hasn't bowled his ten. Strange when uh, everyone else seems to be kind of gone at the five six marks that someone who's gone at trees doesn't come back on. Very much so. It certainly has been the most economical of the. North Kildare bowlers. That one's a bit short, lifted down to the scoreboard where it reaches the fielder on a couple of bounces. He keeps it to a single. 266. Well, with 11 balls left in this innings, you can certainly see Balbriggan powering through 270 when we said that 230 was par. It's certainly going to take some effort from North Gildare in the second innings. Another one short, played into the leg side. Keepers fetching this one. They're thinking of the second and deciding against it. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a big total for um, Norkel there to, to chase here, but they do have the firepower in there with Manila Patel and Wakar Azmat. Well, 
Oh. Lewis, knowing that there are only a dozen, less than a dozen balls to go, he gave himself too much room. If you do that, you've got to make contact. He didn't. And the ball just crashed into the stumps. So, Lewis departs for 30. Yeah, and a good bit of bowling by um, Ali, you have to say. Basically, if Again. a few miss, I hit. Score on 267, Dylan Lewis. Why wasn't he? Back on early. Ali for 30 from 25 deliveries. 30 from 25 deliveries. That's just the sort of knock you want from your number seven, especially in a cup final. Yeah, great little cameo for his team there. They'd be they'd be quite happy with him there in the in the change rooms. New batsman taking guard. Few changes to the field for the new batsman as Ali comes into bowl. Very distinctive action he has, Ali. Seems yeah. to coil the spring as he's running in. And definitely been the pick of the bowler of the Norco there, bowlers. Again, it's a, to me, it's a sin that he's only bowled. This will be his seventh. He's out to where long arm will field it. It will be a single. 268. North Guild there may fire, feel that they've actually dodged a bullet here because 300 was certainly on the cards earlier on. Well, certainly after 30 overs, you, you were thinking when the two lads were set there, you were thinking that they were going to go on and make 300 plus. So you never know, they might come in feeling confident enough or happy enough. Still a big toll to chase, though. Scoreboard pressure will play its own part as well in the second innings. But at the moment, we're just finishing off the first. And De Freitas is just two runs short of a well-deserved half-century. And 49 are gone, and he's at the non-striker's end. Great over by Ali there. I think he may have a few words with his skipper later on about... Leaving three overs available. Yeah, might have missed a bit of a trick. So six balls remaining, 268 on the board. Just in case nobody could read the scoreboard or nobody knew what the state of the game was, Willie Clark announces 50th over. Clark's going to signal this as a leg by, turning down any appeals. And North Kildare will feel that that's a bit of a win for them on that delivery. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see a few bombs hit here now by the Padbrick and Batsman. As I say, De Freitas now. He's on strike. He's 48 to his name. Five balls remaining. More concerned about getting his team score above 270. As shown by just taking the leg by. He's disappointed with himself for not getting any bat on it, but again, the team needs come first. 
Yeah, um, well, um, well bowled there, right up on the block hole, really. Almost followed him across as he went to make room. Smart bit of bowling. 270 on the board now. This is the 50th over, not the 49th that the scoreboard is telling us. That's very well bowled, but very well run as well by De Freitas. Tell you, that looked like it had an extra bit of effort in that ball there. That, that really came through. He bent his back there and it flew through to the keeper. Yeah, keeper took that at shoulder height. And De Freitas was alert to the fact that he could get down the other end. Super over this so far. It's time a bit too short. It's going to be cut off on the fence. But that's enough for De Freitas. And as you can hear, the Balbriggan supporters, and indeed even the North Kildare supporters, congratulating De Freitas on his 50 off 50 ball with five fours. That's a super knock. And it's been just what Balbriggan wanted at the tail end of their innings. Super knock from De Freitas. Well appreciated by the Balbriggan supporters and their team. And that's just powered through. Again, they're looking for a third on the arm. They're going for it. And they get it comfortably. And that's superbly done. Three runs. And now, how many times does the mood of a fielding side change with the last ball of an innings? You can Last Paul, where's he going, Craig? Where is he going? Straight. Straight, that's where I'm thinking. He's as aiming well. for Mick Cotter, I think. Mick Cotter standing just to the side of the side screen. Well That's a fine catch at Cow Corner. Super catch. Manil Patel. Superbly done. He's probably been the pick of the fearless today for the North Calera side. So that concludes the first innings, 276. They got there losing seven wickets, but they also got there with three half centuries between Christopher Freitas, Gregory Ford, but right up at the top of the innings, Connor Fletcher. Three half centuries. Yeah, and I think Balbriggan will be quite confident with that score. They'll, they'll be happy going into the into the second inning. So. Another, another comparison with the Premier League final yesterday where Merrion batted first and had three half centuries. Yeah, true. And an impressive total. And that was enough for them to and defeat Pembroke. Uh, I think they'll be very happy with that now. All the big players really stood up today for Balbriggan. So, as the, players, as the players leave the ground, they'll take a half hour break, which will give us, or well, at least 20 minutes anyway, so we'll say thank you to our viewers. We'll leave you with the highlights package that Niall's running at the moment. And when the action is back, we'll be back. See you soon.
captain Greg Ford. So welcome back to the second innings of the Buakit Championship final between Balbriggan and North Kildare. Balbriggan won the toss and elected to bat. It was a really good first innings performance from them. They made 276. And uh, I think that'll be a difficult total for North Kildare to chase down. I'm Isabel Joyce, joined by Finton McAllister. I think you'd have to think that Balbriggan will come into the second half confident. Yeah, I think they will be confident with that score. Um, I think the, one of the best things for Balbriggan was that, uh, that everyone really chipped in chipped into the total, you know, there was, there was there was runs from all their top order, the big players really stepped up and and scored runs for their side, so I think it's going to be a difficult task for, for Norkel there to chase. Well, it's above par, we think par is about, what, two, 240 probably today, because it's, the wicket just looks a little bit easier to play on, but um, 276 as well above that, 276 for seven. For North Kildare. Yeah, it was shared around Connor Fletcher, 81, threw his wicket away really. Greg Ford, 61, Christopher De Freitas, 53, not out. And Dylan Lewis, 30 from 25 at the end, a handy little knock from him. And opening the bowling for Balbriggan and doing so from the St. So, John's Yeah, I think a lot, a lot of rest on the shoulders here of, um, of Wacker and Manil Patel. So if they can if they can cash in, you never know. But again, it's going to be a difficult score to to chase. So opening the batting, facing the first ball will be Wakar Azmat. He's just getting a few more stretches in before he faces the first ball. That's going to come from Dylan Lewis. So that for going to bat it so well at the end, he'll ball his off spin from the St. John's end. The field is either long on and deep mid wicket. This is kind of more like a, what we were used to seeing in T20, really, uh, an off spinner opening and two fielders out on the leg side. Really good fielding in mid wicket from Nathan Rooney. Excellent dive to the right to stop that from going for probably two. Yeah, and seems to be a great balls around the, the Balbriggan field in the unit here, straight from the get-go, so... It's probably one area that they think they can capitalise from... Oracle there. Deft touch from Wackar. He's chased down, good fielding in the deep. Just the two runs, not enough pace on, on the ball really to take it away for four, certainly not in September anyway, maybe in the heat of July. <laughs> Immediately Dylan Lewis moving around the wicket. And you're likely to see Wakar Asmat continue to, <laughs> to stretch through this whole innings, even knocking the bales off as he's getting the wrists nice and loose. Yeah, and Wacker, okay, he can be very entertaining when he gets going. Yeah, he so. strikes a very clean ball. He always favours that, that long on area, and you can see they have a man out there straight away. Yeah, the problem for Wacker is his calling between the wickets is suspect on occasion, so you can, you can be a run out candidate. Probably suits him to be batting up the top when it's mm, more hitting through the field. They're going to change the change the field now with Dylan bowling around the wicket. They're going to put in a slip. Greg Ford goes in there. He's going to push it across the right hander. Yeah, and good to see them with a big score on the board that they're trying to be attacking. Wacker just hitting along the ground, along on there. He looks like he's going to come out and go quite hard at the ball here today. Nicely flighted delivery. The first one to Manil Patel. It's a good first one for Balbriggan. North Kildare, three without loss. 
There's no panic really though. And two, 276 is a big total on this ground, but it's not a huge total in general. They won't panic North Kildare. They'll, presumably these two will look to kind of repeat what uh, what Balbriggan did and mine their wickets and try and turn the strike over. Yeah, big time. I think uh, Balbriggan will be looking to get themselves off to a good power play here and really put them on the back foot. And opening the bowling for Balbriggan, and in doing so from the Wilfield Road end of the ground is Andrew Dark. So Andrew Dark, opening the bowling from the Wheelfield Road end. <laughs> right arm seamer coming in to bowl to Wakar Asmat. Chance down leg side. He's caught that fine Wakar, but uh, Connor Fletcher unable to take that one down leg. Thick edge. Yeah, think. thick edge, yeah. Good, good effort across from um, from the keeper. Um, looks like he's got a bit of pace about him here. This Andrew Tarach. He apparently taken some really important wickets for Balbriggan this year. Looks a good, strong, fast bowler. wonder if you were watching the game yesterday, um, pace from the other end seemed to be really the key hitting that kind of that ridge as we talked about. Yeah, probably a surprise to see him operating from this end of the ground, the Wilfield Road end, rather than from the St John's end. Who would have thought it would suit him better, but they obviously know something we don't. Yeah, <laughs> well. yeah good effort from Connor Fletcher there. Started well here of Balbriga. Yeah, really good start here from Dylan Lewis. Probably a little bit full in the first two deliveries, but he found his found his mark now. Balls, looks like he bowls a heavy ball, so if if someone's going to get something out of the pitch, it's probably going to be him. <laughs> Big appeal, but I think that's actually hit the inside of Wacker's bat. That's probably what saved him. Will Houston's uh, the standing umpire there. He is. Good at quickly letting the, the bowling team know when they've no chance uh, with an appeal. Yeah, good decision there. You could, you could, you sense that there was a nick onto the pad there. But um, yeah, they're actually bowling a super line here. Seems strange to me not to see Dwayne Harper open the bowling. He's did such a such a great job for Balbriggan over so many years. Yeah, he's been around around the scene a long time as as Dwayne, a great man. Well placed from Manjeet Singh. Just a clip off the hips. One thing that the Norkel there, but um, batters can definitely take from the first inning innings was how well actually that. Balbriggan ran their twos, they ran a lot of twos, ran big boundaries and 
and all them really did add up in the end. Yeah, they they placed it really well. Valbriggan over the infield, they were happy to to kind of chip it over. Rather, they, they knew it wasn't one of those grounds where later on in the innings you're going to be blasting loads of boundaries. So they just hit pockets and ran twos. So two overs gone, and North Kildare eight without loss. I'm going to see more of the spin. Dylan Luce S staying around the wicket to whack our asthmat. Rocks onto the back foot and hits it straight to the field. You're waiting in the deep. Yeah, they've obviously played against Wacker a couple of times. They, they know where, where the strong areas are, and that's that's certainly one of them. Towards that long on cow corner area. This game is just remarkably similar to the to the Premier League semi final yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. Albrighton come out clear favourites. Well waited for Manjeet Singh. Yeah, Belbrigan come out favourites. They they finished clear at the top. Uh, but North Kildare obviously came second. But uh, Valbriggan would feel aggrieved, I think, if they didn't win and didn't get promotion to the Premier League. Nicely That's played from Wackar through the offside. Real strength of his driving on, coming down the track and driving through the offside. But it's a big chase to, out to the boundary that the fielder will lose. Yeah, good chase down the deep, but a, a fantastic shot that by Wacker. Here's the gap, lovely, and trickled its way over the boundary. Yeah, Belbergen finished actually 20 points ahead of North Kildare. They finished on 134.5 points. Played 7-1-5, one no result and one loss. That was to Railway Union. North Kildare won four, so just one behind Belbergen. They obviously lost to Belbergen. And uh, also Terran Europe. Sorry, excuse me, they lost to the rush. Um, so yeah, Belbriggan will feel like they were the best over the seven games, but that's, they've taken a first wicket bounce and turn. It comes back well with a wicket of Wacker as he's bowled, and he's got to go for 11. And you can see just by the reaction of the Belbriggan players how, how important they know that wicket is. There's the boundary. Just With the North Kildare score on 14. And there's Wacker the wicket. The part, bowled by Dylan One shot Lewis. too many. Yeah, it looks like he gave it, just gave it a bit of flight there. There was a bit of turn and just went between went between bat and pad. And the classical off spinner's dismissal. Yeah. Looks like Owen Birch run a few drinks on for the lads in Balbriggan. Great to see the youngster getting involved. Uh, always has a smile on his face. And I'm sure he'd be delighted to be part of the day. So Manal Patel comes out at three, joins Manjeet Singh. <coughs> it looks like a tricky customer to face around the wicket. He's pushing it across the, the right-hander and turning it back in. And he really just clipped leg like stump, actually. That's how much turn that, that delivery got. Yeah, I think we were chatting about this yesterday, is just how many more spinners are, are coming around the wicket with with their off spin. It takes it, it, it kind of takes away the sweep shot a little bit. It's quite hard, I think, I think, to, to judge the length when the bowlers are coming around the wicket, to judge the length um, early, so you can't get down quickly. <coughs> Forces you to, to play straight with the, the ball coming across you and then sometimes coming back in. Already got over a successful one for Balbriggan. Three gone. North Kildare are 14 for the loss of one wicket. Yeah, they'd be delighted with that wicket there and that um, and that over. Um, but yeah, definitely something you've seen. You seen more of. I don't think ever you've seen that back in the day with spinners coming, right arm spinners coming around the wicket. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a T20 thing, isn't it? They, they brought it in trying to take the arms away from right-handed batsmen. It's actually something we was discussing the other day was uh, how, how much I like facing off spin but I don't, I don't think that I've faced much of it around the wicket I think it'd be much much more difficult prospect 
you always know where the offspin is going to they're going to bowl on the stumps aren't they so you yeah. kind of have an idea where it's where it's going to land you can plan your attack so second over from Andrew Dark Manjeet Singh just steps inside the line of that one clever batting places it into that big gap on the leg side he wants three but sent back by Manal Patel Yeah, nice little whip off the whip off the hip there. Probably was three if Manel had wanted it. I think if they ran that a bit, a bit harder, I think they would have got three there. Yeah, because the man in the, in the deep there had to come all the way around and field it on the boundary. He wasn't attacking it, so it was a long throw in. Steps inside the line again. Manjit Singh, this time off the pad. No real danger, though. That was hit him far too high for an LBW shout. Yeah, far too high. It sounded like it sounded like it came off the tie pad. Umpires have uh, been very good over the last two days, I have to say. Yeah, our two today, the two Wills, Will and Willie. Will Houston from the Wilfield Road end, and uh, Willie Clark at the St John's Road end. It's beautifully played through the offside from Manuel Patel. Classy shot. Just a bit over pitch from Darisha and hit straight through the covers. Yeah, he can't afford to get that full the pace he's bowling, unfortunately. Ball coming nicely onto the bat there for Patel. A great catch behind the stumps for Connor Fletcher. He knows what that means. A fist double fist pump for him. Great comeback again here from Andrew Dark. Boundary and then a wicket. That's a super take from Connor Fletcher. That ball came quickly and it just came off the shoulder. Looked like it came off the shoulder. A bat dive into his right. Fantastic grab. Yeah, well, I think part, partly the celebration afterwards was because he was delighted to get the wicket, but also he was pumped up because of how good that take was. He is a, such a talented player, Connor Fletcher. Disappointed for him that uh, he didn't go on to make a century. There it is there. Moves to the right. Actually in slow motion, makes it look a little bit easier than it was. Off the bowling of Andrew Dark. Good take. He's having a good day is, is Connor Fletcher. He certainly is. Ah, they'll really have their tails up now, Will Balbrick, and they'll know. That's two two big players for for Norkel there are now back in the hutch. Absolutely. That's huge for Balbrick and if they can just snag a third now, they'll smell blood in the water. A big wicket cut behind there of Manel Patel. Fletcher took the catch and now we have Husnain Maruf. Just lets that one go through. Probably th thought it might be a judge to wide. But uh, you could just see Will Houston Dipping his head to the side, going, mm, not quite, maybe the next time. It was so frustrating, I hate that as a as a batter. If it's going to be wide next time, I think it's wide this time. No, oh, definitely. It's, it's a bowler's game, anyway. It's a bowler's game. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Big appeal, a shake of the head immediately from Houston. I think that's pitched outside leg. And uh, really good over there from Andrew Dark. Four gone. And North Kildare in a spot of bother, 21 for two. Yeah, quite similar to, to, to yesterday's kind of story at the moment, isn't it? 
just a couple of wickets down on the power play whereas in the first innings that, that there was none down and runs were plentiful yeah absolutely and similar to yesterday just more um, dangerous looking bowling attack the the opening bowlers just look a little bit more dangerous than than the North Kildare ones did prodigious turn really for um, this man Dylan Lewis and when Dark gets it right it seems to be quite a handful so we're going to see Dylan Lewis again with his right arm off spin around the wicket Anjit Singh looks to favour that uh, square leg area very wristy player yeah just took that in around the corner well picked up Floats that one up a little bit and almost affects the wicket. Just changing it up slightly every delivery here at Dylan Lucy. He, he's actually rushing back to his mark. He's trying to get through his over as quickly as he can. I think you can see what the two wickets has done to the to the Balbriggan um, fielding side there. They're full of energy, full of balls out there, rushing through their overs. And you can also see what it's done to the North Kildare contingent in the tent. Looking a little crestfallen, it has to be said. Yeah, it's going to be a tough ask. over the wicket now and takes the outside edge but played nicely with soft hands that one's racing to the boundary but it'll just be two so another good over from the off spinner five gone and North Kildare 23 for two and the question is are North Kildare going to Echo Pembroke yesterday who went really slowly it has to be said from around this time for, for a few overs trying to rebuild or are they going to attack we, very difficult to, difficult to get batters out who, uh, who aren't really taking the bowlers on so Balbriggan might struggle to take further wickets if that's the case Yeah hopefully they still try and show good, good intent and trying to go after this total in a final That's the thing about a final, isn't it? There's no bonus points. There's no. There's no reason to hang around and just try and get to a total. You might as well go for the win. Uh, but I'm not going to do it playing like that. That's straight through. And that's the third wicket for Balbriggan. Husnain Maroof played all around that one. Yeah, just as you said there, is he just went all around it. Yorked. Looked like middle stump was hit, and he makes his way back. I think it's the angle it's done from there. He just his head went to the offside. You always want your head kind of in line with your front foot, and uh, it's almost horizontal there. Yeah, he's having a great, great spell here. I'm loving the celebrations as well. You can just see what it means. Then we were talking to some of the supporters there, and uh, they have have the bottom floor or the bar or some kind of room back booked in uh, in the hotel in Balbriggan. That's right, the Bracken Court. Yeah, Bracken, Bracken Court. So no doubt there'll be great celebrations there if they continue the way that they are. It's looking more and more. If we had one, of, what is it, the wasp? If we had a wasp here, I think it'd be almost all the way over for for Balbriggan. Yeah, you'd feel that they. Nearly have one hand on the trophy. So 
So Imran Olhak, the off spinner, comes out at number five. And straight away on the defence. Practices the pull shot afterwards though, so we might see him have a bit of a dip here. He's not gonna die wondering. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Well it's kinda like yesterday, wasn't it? It was Paul Lawson and uh who was he with? Hopkins, was it? Yes, Ryan Hopkins. Ryan Hopkins really took the game to Marion. I think if there had been 20 or 30 runs less, then there would have been some nerves for Marion, but it was a really tall order at that point in the day. He doesn't play that pull shot. He defends it and goes down to third man. He's off the mark with that one. <laughs> Practicing his footwork. Love to see uh, someone play play something and then practice something totally different. Yeah, a few dance moves. Yeah. I thought he was good when he when he was bowling, old hack. Looked like he was always in the battle. Yeah, he was super. Oh, that one's too good. Too good for for a sing. They've really just come out here, bang on the money. Have Pat Brigham with the with the ball, ball on great areas. Just ball on dots. Well, that one was probably the perfect length and. Uh, Singh did well actually to miss that. Didn't push at it really, so that's probably what's what's helped him survive. But uh, misses out then with the full toss. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? When someone's bowling well, if they bowl the loose delivery, you're not really ready for it, so you don't capitalise. Yeah, probably disappointed he didn't get that one away to the boundary. That's a very tight field on the offside, so. May not have got it through anyway. Yeah, they're a good, f a good feeling unit. You can just see the the field is going square and square as the game goes on. Extra cover is basically in cover there. So there's a, a cover, a cover point, and then a backward point. But that's the end of the sixth over, and uh, North Kildare in real trouble now. Twenty four for three. Yeah, great start from Balbriggan. They'd be delighted with how the power play has gone so far. But they just keep on doing exactly what they're doing till till ten, and assess then. They're, they're going to be in a great position. North Kildare score at 24 for three. There's going to be a change in bowling. The first one for Balbriggan. So a change in bowling for the first time from, from the St. John's Road end. It's Campbell, Campbell Davies Webb. Webb. Right arm seamer. It's quite sim two quite similar bowlers on at the moment. Yeah, and a bit of pace from this end proved yesterday to be to be quite difficult to face. Well, this is what might be why we've seen. Might be why we've seen Dark operating from the uh, from the Wellfield Road end is because they were saving the ridge for Campbell Davies Webb. And again, just strays his first ball wide down leg side. No ball called by umpire Willie Clark. Hands on hips from Davies Webb, but if you overstep, that's what's going to happen. A no ball is called. Yeah, true. That's the price you pay for overstepping. Um, probably just look to settle into his into his over here. Yeah, not what you want when you're coming on for your first over in a final. But to see the captain going over to him and just having a quick word, maybe checking what he's going to bolt. Probably just be a normal delivery, trying to keep his foot behind the line. That wild swing from Ola Hack doesn't make contact, so it's well bowled. Amazing how often those uh, free hits go for no runs, isn't it? I was about to say, what I don't know what the odds on it uh, will be out of percentages, but 
I was told in a game recently that I was playing, I got three free hits, would you believe, and every single one of them I was caught. Everyone, right, under three, yeah. the umpire said he'd never seen that before. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad to have provided you with something that you hadn't seen before. I'd rather be hitting them for six, but... Uh, <laughs> Definitely, you just grip that bit, bat a bit harder, don't you? The head goes up, and that's a, a lot of the time it can end up in a in a dot or a. It just seems to sharpen the senses of the bowler as well. They tend to bowl their their best ball or their change up or something, so it can be quite difficult. And he's been good since that no ball, though. There's two really good deliveries. Yeah, come back nicely. The fielders out, our third man and. Fine leg, third man going very, very straight, almost on the on the edge. Plays right across that one, but uh, managed to scrape to fine leg. It always amazes me when people say, "Don't miss that one." <laughs> Don't miss that one because if you do, you're right. It's kind of the story of the game, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely a well used saying in cricket, anyway. You generally trying not to miss, aren't you? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you hear it a lot being a sweeper people say don't miss that on the sweeping <laughs> <laughs> I think it's supposed to be a sledge but it's not, not a very effective one in my opinion anyway uh, he's operating in a good channel here Davies Webb since that first wide the first ball of his spell There is one catcher there, that's Nathan Rooney, Nathan Rooney and uh, it's actually a good fielding position. We, said, we saw it yesterday in uh, Marion's innings, they they had a slip in a gully and the gully actually was a good good way of stopping uh, Pembroke just dabbing the ball down to third man for a single. Yeah, it's good, it's giving them a, a chance at both there of a wicket and, and stopping that single as you say, so... a real loose delivery yeah he hasn't settled into his into his spell yet is that a change up or just didn't just slipped out of the hand L looked like it just slipped out of the hand and, and went down the leg side perhaps just searching for a wicket sometimes that can be the way isn't it if there's three wickets down already <laughs> you want to get in on the action yeah true It finishes with a dot, an eventful over. Seven gone, North Kildare 28 for three. Two wickets so far already for this bowler, Andrew Dark. Darich? Darich? Darich. Darich. Apologies, I've been saying his name wrong this whole time. <laughs> Feel free to correct me in the future, Vinton. Beautifully bowled. Really beautifully bowled. You just the old hack after that went past I mean he didn't look like he'd been punched in the gut he just collapsed forward he knew how close that was he's having a fantastic opening spell here there's that sound in the gloves again that you mentioned earlier it's a good sound of the ball thudding in yeah, when you can, you know, when you can hear from the from the sideline that the keepers the keepers caught it cleanly. You can just hear that that thud, as you say, off the gloves. I've actually never thought of it before, but uh, since you've said it now, it's it's something that I'll notice forevermore. So <laughs> thanks for bringing that into my life. <laughs> Absolute beauty. He is putting the ball on a Euro coin here at the moment. 
something I'm really enjoying watching as we uh, go through this weekend is the, the speed gun operating on the far side of the ground. It's such a good idea from Bua Sportswear to, to bring the speed gun and uh, let the kids find out just how fast they're bowling. You can see them proud as punch afterwards. They've got their numbers. I bowled 54 miles yes. an hour. You yes, certainly can. I can see lads and girls that we that we, that we coach on that are usually spinners are, are steaming in from the back end <laughs> off a 20 yard run up and <laughs> trying to get as quick as they can. It's actually it's just it's something that you you never really know, do you, until. I presume at the professional level and men on the men's side anyway that's when you, you clock how fast you bowl but I've never known my career how fast or slow I should say <laughs> I was bowling <laughs> it's a really exciting thing for any youngsters around just steps inside the line of that one all hack R great timing that one's raced away his first boundary of the day yeah, beautiful shot. Just kept still at the crease and, and wh whipped it off his legs. This time, Olhak opts to put the bat on the ground. Is beaten so well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic finish. spell, has an, an, an absolute string here. Yeah, beautiful bowling, and you can see he's happy with how things are going. He's walking around with a bit of a spring in the step. There's the four, and that one. I will say, don't miss that because he's played right across it. That one, just how does that miss the stumps? Mm. It's always coming in, just not quite early enough. So. Eight overs gone and uh, North Kildare moving along to 32 for three. It's that wickets column that's the problem. Also not really scoring at the rate that they would need to with uh, three of their top batsmen already back in the tent. Hamill Davies Webb will bowl his second. We'll be having Jim Bennett back on comms hopefully at some stage this inning, so no doubt our viewers will be looking forward to that. Two straight from Davies Webb, flicked off the legs, but it'll only be one for Manjeet Singh. Yeah, good feeling there. Got around to it nice and quick. Yeah, and Jim, Jim had a few, few good yarns to tell. Yeah, he's just a laugh a minute, isn't he? Proud Hills, man. Pride Hills and Fingalian. Frustration for Davies Webb just strays outside off this time. He's been good when he's online, but uh, just a little bit loose. Yeah, I think if now that they're just small, a bit loose, maybe just trying a bit too hard. If just come back and stick to the base, what you've done for for a lot of the balls and stick to that line and length. Exactly what we've seen from the other end. <coughs> this time a wide down. <laughs> the leg side. So the, the fi final ODI between Zimbabwe and Ireland is taking place tomorrow. Looking for will you get to watch that or? Yeah, hopefully can 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 get to watch a bit of that now as well now, so it'll be a big game for Ireland. Yeah, huge. Very unfortunate. The last day to get pulled with rain, I think they were gonna go on and win that. Yeah, I think again if we had a wasp that would have been probably been at ninety or close to maybe eighty for in favour of, of Ireland. Really good batting performance. Number of people putting their hands up. I thought Lorcan Tucker in particular batted really well at the back end. Yeah. 
Again, just goes a little bit leg side, and Al Hack this time gets through for the single. And giving us runs, yeah. Yeah, I think he's just kind of yorked himself there, played it into the ground. So no real damage being done, it was a bit of a loose over, but uh, just a few from it there for North Kildare. Uh, nine overs gone, they're 36 for three. Yeah, one over left to the power play. Bad Brigham will be delighted with the start that they've made. Yeah, and North Kildare, it's actually, it's one of those things, isn't it, when uh, you've got the power play, only two fielders allowed outside the ring. Um, do you think Balbriggan will keep all those fielders up? Will they drop the field out? It might become easier to score actually outside the power play. Maybe, yeah. I still think that they'll, they'll probably go quite attacking. Um, there'd be no reason not to do it. Yeah, they won't want to let these two off the hook. Does confusion. Manjit Singh sends Ulhak back and it's lucky the throw wasn't quite good enough. Connor Fletcher it was scampering up to the stumps but was uh, going to have to be very accurate to run him out. Yeah, a bit of confusion there but yeah, I would say personally I'd probably just keep the two out and, and stay with the until they're starting to do something different. They've got plenty of runs on the board to play around with there. So Yeah, I completely agree. I think Greg Ford should keep his field up and he's got pl plenty of runs to, to play with as you said and it's quite hard, hard to pierce the field here. Uh, they're a good fielding side. Yeah, I think there's only been two two boundaries, two three boundaries so far in the, in the innings. So, yeah, that hasn't. Re I mean, we saw Wacker pierce the field, but outside of that, it's been loose deliveries really. I'll just hurry, dull hack there. Rocked onto the back foot, but too quick for him. No doubt he's just dying to rub that yeah. <laughs> on his show. Nope, the show opposition, me. any weakness though? No pain, show no pain. Remember the first time I played men's senior cricket was against Balbriggan and it was Dwayne Harper there in mid-off who was bowling. First ball hit me in the ribs. It woke me up. <laughs> Scored a 50 that day though, so I had the last laugh. Yeah, fair play it is. <laughs> I'm pretty glad I was facing Dwayne and not these two. There's slightly more pace about them. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if we've seen Dwayne Harper coming into the attack soon enough now. Once yeah, well, the power play is done. You can see him now shining the ball there. He wants to make sure there's still a bit of swing around uh, when he comes on. They're going to look for two here and They'll get there easily. Farouk Nazir doing the, the work there in mid-wicket. Disappointment for him, really. He's the only batsman who, who missed out for uh, Val Brigham. He went for a duck. Yeah, he came in. I think he just, just pushed at the ball a bit himself. Um, played it out in front of himself and, and got caught. Short cover. It's pr he's probably the only one that we've seen in the two days do that and it is a wicket that can draw you into that shot. So amazing that we haven't seen more dismissals like that. Edged and oh. down. It was in the hand but just popped out as Connor Fletcher hit the ground. Yeah, good attempt at the catch. Probably be disappointed he didn't get it. He got the good hand to it so... He just, he seems to take it when it goes past him a little bit. His body ends up in front of the ball and I wonder if, if he can just, if he could have just caught it a little bit in front so he'd roll onto his back, would he do better? But it's, it is traveling quite quickly. It's traveling quickly. Look at the a small bit on him. I'm sure he's probably still would have said himself that he, that's something he'd be looking to, to swallow up.
so that's the power play done. Ten overs gone and North Kildare 38 for three. A life for old hack. And for now I'll leave you. Craig Senior will join Fenton McAllister. Thanks, Izzy. <coughs> well, not quite the start that North Kildare would have been looking for. Yeah, I think Balbriggan will certainly be the happier of the two two teams after the first power play, the, first the second power innings. Play of the reply in the Bukit Championship, North Kildare have moved on to 38 for three. Same stage, of course, Balbriggan with 53 for naught, so a bit of a contrast there. Yeah, it's been pretty similar to yesterday's game. Very similar, isn't it? Yeah. Two totally different teams, but cricket's a strange game. So the required rate is somewhere up at a run a ball at this stage. 240 required from 40. So the captain now, Manjit Singh, facing. It's going to be a tough ask for North Kildare from here. These two are certainly going to have to put a stand together. Yeah, big time. Big time, tough ask. Don't say it off well. I, I don't know how many, how often it happens. Um, usually when they say that the teams that win the power plays, something like if you win your power play, you've both power plays you have 70% chance of, of going on and winning the game or something like that. Yeah. If not even more. Shorter certainly grew on Munjad Singh, not the tallest of batsmen, but he's played that out square on the offside. Takes his single. I see that the seagulls are starting to return now in the afternoon. Yeah, we had a seagull who got hit yesterday by a ball. He obviously hasn't gone back and told his mates not to turn up today, anyway. <laughs> yeah. They'd be looking for danger money. <laughs> Bottom edge forces it past the keeper's despairing dive, but it's picked up before the boundary and just a single result. Speed guns doing a roaring trade down in the nets at the moment. Yeah, it has all the kids down there anyway, that's for sure, they're, they're fascinated the, by it. That's all it. the kids and a couple of adults, I think. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, we just mentioned that earlier, that you, we've kids that, that are usually bowling spin down there are, are coming in off 20-yard run-ups at the moment. Yeah, give them a speed gun. Let's see Something what to be measured by. So that's the end of the 11th over, the score is 40 for three. Imran al Hock has moved on to 10. And Captain Manjit Singh, he's on nine. Andrew Durrock. Now on at the Willfield Road end. Distinct like a dart's going past today. Sunday service. Summer day trippers to Bray have ceased. It's too cold for that now. Oh, that's a good ball. Batsman looks totally unperturbed. 
Yeah, he's been on great form here today now. He's really bowled a, a nice tight line and length. Hasn't gone from any boundaries at all. And he's just bowled on that nag and length. Looking for and occasionally finding the edge of that bat. Yeah, he'd be looking to find the edge here again. You it's imagine. in place for him. Good attacking move by Balbriggan. Even though we're now out of the power play. The mathematical genius is on the Balbriggan side, working out it's over six and a quarter runs and over required now. That's a good match, that. It is. Dividing my 39's never been my forte, that's for sure. Oh. Well. Keeping too well to get down to that and use yeah. some of the part of his body to take the momentum out of it just a very odd one or two just just keeping a bit low can be a tough job for the keeper so i feel for them there but it's, that's a it's been a good start there it's the balbrig and coach on they both are pacing the rope yeah he's done a fantastic job with balbrig this year it's great to see such good coaching talent in the country I yeah remember him, to. I remember him scoring his century against Zimbabwe 2007 I was fortunate enough to be at that game I uh, without a doubt one of the best um, best players that came to Ireland at club level he just dominated international level he was unbelievable he's, he's been a great servant to Irish cricket and anyone in chat in Balbriggan is, is just full of praise for him so He's obviously doing a great job down there. Smacked away on the leg side. It's being chased by the fielder and the dive pulls it up short and keeps it to a single. Yeah, he went abroad to coach at one stage, didn't he? Um, yeah, he's, he's from South Africa, Andre. He went, went back there for a while and yeah, back in Ireland now, so it's, it's great to see him back. He's part of the North County side that they were really unstoppable um, at one stage. That North County team definitely up there were probably, I reckon, one of the best all-time club teams ever. Yes, they dominated club cricket back back in the day. They did. Well, they had the likes of the Andre, they the the Moonies, the Armstrongs. Uh, Dwayne Harper actually played for him for a while as well, who's, who's playing here today. Um, but yeah, they, they're a phenomenal side. It's amazing how these things go in cycles. I mean, my own my own club, Pembroke, are in the middle of their golden era, um, which is great to see. But I remember sort of back in the 80s, YM were the team to beat with Alan Lewis and Angus Dunlop and a rake of very good players there. Yeah, well, yeah we're, we're, we're a team to beat then. And it does, as he said, it just just goes in cycles. Now, Brigham will be hoping that come five years' time we'll be talking about them in the same breath. Yeah, well, they've invested heavily in their youth and it's been fantastic to see, so... Yeah, I think they won what I would have called the under-11s cup this year, which shows that good youth structure in place. Yeah, definitely making their, their way up through, through the ranks. Um, I mean, it would only probably be a couple of years now since they were kind of the senior two cricket, really. And now obviously pushing for a place here to go up into, into, into the, the Premier, Premier League, League, which is which is a fantastic achievement in such a short time period. They'll be taking the place of Leinster, who this year finished bottom of the Premier League. How is it? Is it one or two? Yeah. Just one up, one down now, isn't it? Yeah, one up, one down this year. Um, previous years, when you did a full season, it would be there'd be one down, one up, and then it would be a playoff between second, second from bottom second and bottom. And, uh, and yeah, second yeah. from top, which is a good way of doing it. And but unfortunately for Leinster, yeah, they went down this year. 
shot round square leg nicely one hand pick up and return yeah, a great bit of feeling out there in That's the deep gone well yeah it was a straight shootout between phoenix and leinster in the last game of the season to to see who would who would go down in the league Wow. So. I'm going to take it that's the game that Phoenix got home in. Yeah, they won. They, they beat um, Leinster in that last game and and survived in the Premier League. Amazing to see two ties in this year's campaign, campaign both of them involving Clontarf. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That was, it's a very tight league. Um, the Premier League it always always has been. Anyone on their day can beat can beat each other. But I think the right side probably won the final yesterday in the Premier League, which was merry and they've been dominant throughout. Yeah, Quite. one felt it would have been a travesty of justice if Merriam having dominated the league campaign had fallen at that final hurdle. Yeah, and Balbriggan look like they're well well on the way to doing that at the moment. And they've they've been fairly dominant in in the championship. Yep, just the one no result and the one defeat. Other than that, they were deservedly top of the table. They lost to Railway Union. Second game of the year. Yeah, Railway, kind of like Balbriggan, have, have been always there thereabouts for kind of playoff spots and and up the top of the table, you know. They've obviously Kenny Carroll, who's been doing the business there in Railway for years. And still... And still doing the business, Just yeah. Just ticking off the landmarks as he goes, really, at this stage. Yeah, reached 10,000 runs this and season. Fact, which Railway must count themselves unfortunate. I mean, they tied with one of these teams and beat the other one. So they beat Balbriggan and tied with North Kildare, and yet so they finished third. So the results against the teams below them is what let them down. Yeah, they probably... Last two games there, which they might have expected to win. So you mentioned him earlier, and now Dwayne Harper from Wilfield Road End, bowling up Manjit Singh. Plays yeah. him down to third man, just for a second. <coughs> yeah, Dwayne's been around a long time. He's plenty of experience. He would have played with his coach, Andre Bolte, in, the, in that... North County team, that successful North County team, and he'd be looking to swing the ball here. That's been just letting that one fly past. But a seasoned campaigner is Dwayne. He'll just be trying to put it on that line in length, get it moving about. Well, Houston just checking the ball. He's heading off to the other umpire. The two wheels will get together. Some discussion going on now. North Gildare captain, Will Houston. William Clark. <coughs> Now we'll confer with his partner. I think they might have the ball gauge out. Well, they seem they're happy enough with it. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was about. Maybe just went out of shape a bit. Huh? Bit of the seam missing or something. Well, seem happy enough to carry on. Slightly slower delivery, just kept out. Still discussions going on between bowler and umpire. Still this blanket of cloud enveloping Sydney Parade. Oh, and just kept a bit low. It's 
Just 37 overs left of the 2021 season now. Clipped away off the legs very nicely. There is a fielder down there, so it'll only be a single, but it was a nice shot from Imran Al Hook. So does the off-season become quiet for you for development work, or? And um, we'll be back in. We'll be back into our schools in the in the off in the off-season for the winter, and we also do, we do winter winter programs with the with the underage underage teams, which are which are headed by by Brian O'Rourke. Certainly, his certainly aware of how much training in the underage, and in fact, the elite squads do in the off-season. Sometimes it comes as a surprise to us weekend cricketers. Yeah, uh, during the winter now we we'd go usually on Friday nights. They'll be starting back. Just I think it's the the last week of September. Uh, be getting going back with the with the with the Friday nights. Because um, of COVID, we had to do them. We've been doing them outdoor. We usually we usually go up and use the indoor facility up in North County. But since that's been uh, put on hold for a while with with yeah. indoor sessions, um, the clubs have been brilliant around the areas and. Uh, and letting us use their facilities in the winter when it's quiet, so I think that's a nice delivery. Also, correct Lancer have, have a lot to be thankful for from the clubs. Just thanks a million for to all them for their for their help and support and that and well, providing grounds. Let's be honest, it's very much a you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. There's benefits for all, everyone in the involved. Yeah, most uh, most of the. Most of the kids around will be will be from the clubs anyway, from from the clubs that were that we'd use. So that's brilliant. It's great right. to give them out some winter Ho cricket. Hopefully now, COVID will take its place in history. It's something we talk to our grandchildren about, and nothing more. Yeah, and we can get back to something a bit more normal. That's a oh. big, big attempted slog sweep. It just fell over here. He's done cramp. his calf muscle. It, it Whether it's cramp, it, it appears to be cramp. It looks like cramp is rolling around on the ground here. That's not pleasant at the best of times. Just that whole calf muscle wind spasm now. You'd have thought somebody would be running on with some water for the poor chap. Nothing nice about an attacker cramp like that. Oh, here comes one of his teammates now. Oh. He's going to be very wary of taking any quick singles now with the calf muscle gone. Yeah, I wonder if we'll, if we'll see the sweep shot again in the yeah. next while. You get the feeling it'll be a stand-up, legs-apart stance. Might just put it in the back pocket for a while. It's the sort of break in a batsman's innings that often leads to their downfall. Lack, just a drop in the concentration on the job in hand and more thinking about the, the cramp. Yeah, sometimes you see it after drinks. How often you see a wicket after drinks, just a little break in concentration and... Yeah, we'll just have to switch back on here now. But well, seems to be fine after uh, after a little rest there. Uh, the magical po powers of water demonstrated again. Quick sip out of the water bottle. He's back up on his feet, ready to face again. As I say, unlikely we'll see a sweep shot to this one. And just showing how the mental part of the game is, is as important as anything else. He obviously premeditated that he was just going to defend that and then realised it was a ball he could have gone after. Instead, the bowler finishes with two dots. 
That's the end of 15 overs. The score's moved on to 45. <coughs> this stage, I'd like to thank Finton for his stint in the commentary box. And I'll be joined by Stella Downs, President Cricket Leinster. Good oh. afternoon, Craig. Good afternoon, Stella. How are you today? I'm very well. Enjoying another cricket match in the middle of September. What's not to like? Mm, yes, indeed. The longer the season goes on, the better for me. But I couldn't agree more. There you go. <laughs> now, this hasn't been the start that Balbriggan, uh, North Kildare would have wanted. 45 on the board is fine, but three wickets back in the hutch. Yeah, I... Th I think they'll be disappointed with the start because um, I think in, in Wakar Azmat and Manil Patel um, they would have been two that they'd probably be relying on to, to make some runs up at the top. Um, so it, it's a major rebuilding from here and with 15 overs gone it, it's a monumental task I think is probably the best way to describe it. Yes, Manjot Singh the captain here. He led by example when he took the ball. He now, certainly did. Now he wants to with the bat. So Stella, is your your year runs January to January, is it? Um, that's a very interesting question, actually. <laughs> Never quite sure, really, because I took over in a time of COVID when it was kind of delayed and delayed. So it should have been last year and I kind of did bits last year and then it, it sort of spans some of the winter and I think I hand over in October but I wouldn't swear to it. Um, I, it's a case of I'll have blazer and I'll kiss babies until I'm told to stop <laughs> doing so. Um, but it's been, it's been really enjoyable and I know that I'm, I'm handing over to an absolute gentleman so... And the best um, part of the job? Oh. I suppose at the start of the season the best part was actually being allowed to watch cricket because I could put my name forward and say as president I need to be at all the lightning matches and nobody else was allowed to be at games and uh, the lightning were elite sport and so I was able to, to get to some cricket when nobody else could watch it so that was probably the best part early on. I think it's um, getting to see cricket at all levels, that's what I've really enjoyed. At, I've seen an awful lot more women's cricket in the last few years, but particularly this year. Um, and the same with youth cricket. I've started watching a lot more youth cricket, but certainly in the last year I've seen an awful lot of, of youth cricket. And it's nice to get to clubs that, as the first 11 scorer, you don't always get to see. So Absolutely. That's been, a, that's been a huge bonus for me. So there are lots of positives. Very hard to pick one. And and have you managed to source a replacement for the scoring in Clontarf or do you slip back into that role now? Oh, I definitely slip back into that role. I did warn them all that this was a temporary hiatus and I have managed to get some of the games done this season. Um, a career break almost. And that would be, yes, <laughs> as, a, as an ex-civil servant, that's, that's how I would describe it indeed. Um, a career break with working occasional days as an unpaid substitute, you know, so, yeah, it's... Um, well, the, the working unpaid days is certainly not civil service. No, like. no, well, that's, that's <laughs> very true. But I understand true. entirely what you say. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's <clears throat> it's been tough on everybody who... Well, in fact, it's been tough on everybody, the whole COVID situation, coronavirus, but uh, we seem to have managed it quite well. I, th I think the... the We've been really lucky and I think it's probably great credit to the people in the office in Cricket Leinster that they have managed to pack a season full of cricket for us within the restrictions. And so um, we got started as early as we possibly could and they've done everything in their power to squeeze in as much cricket as they possibly could. And I think that's great credit to them. Um, and certainly it has given all of us a lift. It certainly it has. It has felt something akin to a normal season, despite the restrictions being there. And, you know, we'll, we'll have our drink outside and watch our cricket. Yep. It really doesn't bother us. Um, and so, I, I, yeah, I think it has been a great lift after a couple of very long winters. I think the, the cricket season has been a real antidote to the gloom and doom that was brought by COVID. So it's been brilliant. It certainly has. 
Um, and I think you're quite right. A huge amount of credit has to go to Cricket Leinster. I mean, the number of forward planning plans they must have put in place, plan A, B, C, if we can get out on this date, if we're allowed to have people this date, etc., etc. So to come up with the T20 at the start of the season where clubs could play two games on their ground on the same day meant that the most, most people were getting out to play cricket. And I, I really do think that the planning they put in paid off. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think I think that was a really smart idea because we were always going to start with with some level of restriction. And if we were to play 50 over cricket, you were probably going to get to play twice a month. We were able to move almost seamlessly into our getting a game every weekend by having two matches in the day running the T20s at the start of the season. So I think that was... Uh, a very smart move to keep people involved in the game as well because you know if you lose more than half the season for the second year in a row it's hard to keep people involved and motivated and, and keen to come back stop them finding something else to do oh, exactly <laughs> jigsaws even D you know, diy stores yeah. made record oh, profits yeah, sourdough bread <laughs> <laughs> trial by spin out there at the moment well as we saw yesterday spinners are a good way of just putting a little bit of a choke onto the run rate there's now 17 overs gone the score has moved on to 53 uh, Imran al Hock has moved on to 21 and the captain um, uh, Manjit Singh he's moved on to 11 and although that total of 267 seems a long way off now, while these two are putting together a bit of a partnership, and they've already put on 30, so North Kildare hopes will still be there. I think it's great to see these two sides in this final, um, because both clubs have been very progressive in recent years in terms of trying to bring standards at their club up, that certainly looking at what Balbriggan have done they have completely transformed their ground I would say in the last five years and they've had ambitions to move to the top level and they do look ready for it you know I think they've they've got in some new players but they also have a very strong youth section coming through they've won a couple of youth trophies this year and so I think that will all go well for the future for them because it's a huge step up from the championship to the Premier League. It, it but I don't, is. I don't think if Balbriggan come up, I don't think they'll struggle. Um, it'll be tough for them, but I, I think they will be able to hold their own. Um, North Kildare, I think it's probably showing today that they're maybe a year behind on that particular journey forward. And I think getting here today will probably give a huge fill up to the club um, and, and show them that they're going in the right direction. So therefore, hopefully they will continue on their upward trajectory and you know, they, it'll be their turn next. But I think this is Balbriggan's turn. So it's certainly be. looking that way on this game today it now. It is, yeah. Balbriggan are, are taking the chance to enter into the Premier League. Uh, whereas you feel with North, Kildare that they may be building for the future. Indeed. And uh, Albert Harper was saying it's a very auspicious day anyway. I don't know if you were hearing earlier, but it's it's his father's anniversary. Yes. It's the wedding anniversaries of both of his brothers and so on. So it's a, an important day in the family calendar and Albert has been, he's synonymous with Balbriggan. Um, it's very much his baby and has been for many years. Hey. You, you very seldom arrive out to the Jack Harper ground and not bump into Albert. So um, I was I'm fortunate to have him. Albert on the mic um, ah, here good. for the under 11s final that was finally rained off and then played in Balbriggan. But uh, he was giving me the lowdown on, on events in Balbriggan. And you can see the club as a whole, not just the first 11, but as a whole, are moving forward and moving up. And it's great to see. Absolutely. I think it's a huge positive because um, cricket tends to go in cycles in, in clubs and if, if you see some of people are on maybe a, a downward trajectory at the moment, it's great to see that the opposite of that is happening as well and, and there are clubs that are thriving and moving forward and so I think we can all constantly learn from each other 
as to how to keep our clubs moving forward, growing, thriving, increasing the numbers in the sport and dealing with the challenges that that throws up because it, it does throw challenges up for clubs because as our numbers increase, the, the requirement for facilities increases as well and uh, that's always going to be a challenge. So I think we'll have a lot of questions to answer in the future, but they'll be very good questions for us to have. So, yep. you know, I think it's positive for cricket. And again, to talk about the good work that Cricket Leinster have done and are doing and will do. I see that they're advertising at the moment seminars for the off-season that will help clubs with fundraising, administration, all the stuff in the background that might not actually be what's happening on the pitch, but it helps strengthen clubs. Absolutely. I think it's crucial because infrastructure within clubs is so important and it's not, as you say, it's not just down to the players and the coaches. There is so much more involved, whether it's child protection, whether it's fundraising. Oh, that's a good shot. It's, it's hit is. out to Cal Corner. Oh. I think it's a that's one bounce four and that's what William Clark is signalling. Heading straight for the power. car park. It certainly was. You have to keep your eyes open on the wall, even with that hoarding in front of you. <laughs> it's a tough, tough, tough boundary to reach, but he managed that with a fine shot. Scores now moved on to 55, and Imran Al Hook's now facing again. Treating the next ball with a bit of respect. Indeed, a judicious forward defence. But yes, uh, I was saying to Finton uh, just before you came on air, Stella, about the great work that the development officers are doing, and he was outlining the hard work that they do over the winter. That's a nice shot by Imran Al Hogg, just plays it around the corner on the leg side, and he's going for two, and he's going to get there as well. But yes, the development officers and the work that cricket lends to do with the schools, because uh, again, the youth are the future of cricket. Absolutely, and you know that's how you get young players into your club. And I was actually I was talking to Andre Botha, who's the the Balbriggan coach, and I was talking to him about the importance of getting development officers or a club development officer in particular into the schools to to ensure that people are getting the message that if you're enjoying this here in school, why not come down to your local cricket club and give it a go, even if it's just you run summer camps or Easter camps or something like that, just constant taster sessions because we've got to appeal to to the young players coming through. And if we can manage to do that and keep them coming in, there'll always be a percentage that stay within the game. You'll lose a percentage as well because you know the competition from other sports is fierce. But I think one of the huge positives in the last couple of years is the number of very talented sports people who are making cricket their number one choice. Well, that's, um, that's the important thing, isn't it? There it is so much is. choice for, for uh, the youth of today. Is to, and it's not just sport, but things that occupy their time, keep them occupied, help them grow. Uh, cricket is so good at that. Yes. Um, but, you know, again, the, there is a huge fall off. And it's not just cricket. It is at all sports that when uh, the kids, the youths reach a certain age, life interferes. And, and they're making new discoveries and wider horizons. Oh, that's, that's close, but Willie mm. Houston, a little shake of the head, sort of gave away Willie Houston's decision very quickly there. I think you're right about um, the retention of, of teenage players in particular, but I think actually if COVID has had a positive effect, that's in one area one area that it really has. I've noticed in, in Clontarf and my own club that all those that, that are playing are now down supporting each other, watching each other play, watching other teams play you know, and coming down as a group. Uh, yeah, um, it's more of a community now. Exactly. And because there have been fewer things for them to be distracted by or taken away by. No yep. Gwail talk. Yes. Huge, no, no foreign holidays, you know, another huge one. But it meant that they've been thrown together for two summers and they've discovered friendships that, that might have been fractured a bit during cricket season because there's always people away. The last two years, those people have always been there and so cricket clubs have become the place to be, yes. to hang out together. And uh, 
I think that's true. I haven't seen that since the 1980s. It's also so it's great. It's also great for the parents because, let's be honest, there's, there's very few places safer for your kids to run around for a few hours than a cricket ground, six acres of land, but it's it's away from the main main of life, from people walking through or whatever distractions. So, no, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You've enjoyed your year anyway. I have, I have. It's been most enjoyable. Um, I can recommend it to anyone. If it's offered to you, don't be afraid to take it up. Uh, you get such a warm welcome. I think, welcome I think when you go. fewer chosen, Stella. Oh. <laughs> Pembroke, though, Pembroke feels like a second home, really, because um, I did my years as Clontarf president and then straight into this. So I feel I've spent every Friday night here, basically, <laughs> for, for the cricket season for the past number of years, which has been really nice. Always get such a warm welcome here. But I've found that no matter what club you go to, the welcome is incredible, so wow. and I think that probably augurs well for for cricket Leinster as a body. That that you know people may disagree with things on occasions. They may have questions and queries about things that we do, but ultimately they're four square behind what we're trying to achieve, which is to make sure that we get as much cricket as possible for as many people as possible. And that certainly. A plan that Cricket Leinster have followed well and have done well in. Well, Stella, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, I will leave we'll you to get you on with it. We'll see you at the presentations. Indeed, you will. Thank you, Craig. No problem at all. Well, that's left me all alone in the commentary box for a minute. Jim, Sher uh, Jim Bennett, President elect. He'll be joining us in the box in just a minute. Jim. No, Jim, sitting down there. I said goodbye to Stella. I was expecting Jim here, and he hasn't quite made it over. Oh. Having prematurely ended the session with Stella, we'll get her back into the box now. If you have any questions for her, feel free to text me. Put it up on Twitter. But certainly, yes, Cricket Leinster have done some magnificent work. Now, while we've been chatting about cricket in general, the game has been going on. This is the 21st over. It's 65 for three. Big appeal, and Winnie Clark has given Imran Al Hook out. LBW, he's not happy with the decision, but he has to make his way the long and lonely walk back to the tents. Willie Clark having no hesitation in sticking the finger up, and now it's 65 for four. Stella, welcome back. I misread That's my good. schedule. That's so all right. We have each other for a bit longer. We do indeed, and you know what they say about walking for wickets, so I apologise to North Kildare. As soon as I stood up, the wicket fell. Um, but that's a, a fine wicket for Balbriggan. Indeed, Willie well, didn't have any doubt about that. LBW to Farouk Nazar for 31. So yes, uh, that's another wicket down and that's going to be... That's making the task tougher, I'm afraid, for North Kildare. Yes, as we said earlier, it seems that Balbriggan are the team more ready for the Premier League and it's showing here in the Championship Final, the Boer Kit Championship Grand Final. And that's certainly put a spring back into the Balbriggan steps. They're one step closer to the Premier League. Yes, I'm sure they'll be hungry now to, to get on with the game and uh, see if they can take more wickets quickly and I'm sure North Kildare will be determined to prove to them that they can't and yes. to hang in there and keep accumulating the runs. Well, Emmanuel Hook there was out for 31. It was a decent knock from him. He hit some nice shots, particularly down to the leg side boundary. 
He also had the sense not to go chasing after runs, trying to hit everything to the rope. It was quite a measured innings. It was. Intelligent batsman. But that brings Belrigan one step closer to the Premier League. So that's 21 overs gone. The score has moved on 65 for four. New batsman has yet to get off the mark. And Man Singh, uh, Manjet Singh has now moved on to 13. He's, he's proved to be the one person staying in, watching f partners fall around him. But he's not exactly standing in the sky at scoreboard alight either. So as we go forward into the 2020s, we're into 2022 already. Wow, how time is flying. And uh, there's certainly some big, big challenges. Change of bowling. Dylan Luz, who scored a quick 30 earlier on. He'll be bowling now. Another spinner Roland. by the look of. Yes, they're certainly posing all sorts of questions to the batsmen here. They really are. And talking about challenges. What sort of challenges do you think face Jim as he takes over for the next year? Um, I think, I don't think Jim sees anything as a challenge. I think he sees everything as an opportunity. Why oh, isn't that a great um, attitude to have from the start? I, I, I couldn't agree more. He's a phenomenal cricket man. He, he knows so much about the history of the game. He's universally liked. He, travels from club to club, usually with his trusty sidekick, Martin. Um, <laughs> I got into all sorts of trouble with him yesterday because I asked him to do the man of the match. Um, oh, just lifted over the bowler's head and Dylan Lewis nearly Let's picked go. up a wicket with his first ball, but instead he's conceded a boundary. And the difference between boundary and wicket was about eight inches because <laughs> that's how far over his hand it went. He won't be too upset seeing the ball in the air like that. No, he'll be hoping that another one comes a little bit closer to him. Jim will be a fine president, I feel. I mean, he's instantly recognisable in that hat. He, he certainly is. It seems to be. And he's, he's held so many roles quietly over the years. You know, he's done a phenomenal job with child protection and the training of, of so many people in so many clubs. But he's just, he has always been Mr. Hills, Mr. Fingal. Um, and I just think that it's time for him to be shared with the rest of Leinster. <laughs> so uh, it, it, he's a lovely man and I can't imagine anybody better to take over the, the role. Um, so in, you ask me what challenges he'll face. It'll just be the demands on his time. And oh. it's as demanding as you let it be. Talking of demands on your time, I mean, the one thing about COVID and your presidency, Stella, is you didn't have... 35 dinners to attend this is very true you know and I, I have received a number of dinner invitations from clubs which have subsequently been withdrawn um, so my waistline will certainly thank COVID for that I think <laughs> um, one of the few people who are thanking COVID for exactly <laughs> that way most it, of us have put bounds on it's it's just it's tough on clubs you know because that that, that end of season get together is a real, it's almost a rite of passage. It's the end of the season. It's when you hand out your awards. It's, it, it kind of marks another year. And so particularly, I think for some of the elder members in clubs who've never missed a club dinner, for this to be the second year on the trot when they haven't missed one in the previous 60 yeah. is, I think that's tough. Um, but hopefully, We'll be, we'll be heading back to some level of normality for next season and maybe clubs will be able to organise something in advance of the new season, a delayed celebration of 2021 before 2022 starts. I always feel that, especially a club like Pembroke where, where we give up the ground to Monkstown during the winter and there is no sort of winter get-togethers, I always feel that it's important that the new season starts with a club function that gets everybody involved. Exactly. Uh, and let's everybody meet up again. For, for Pembroke, it was always the St. Patrick's Day coffee morning. 
Ah, right, very which, good. Which, just before COVID, had almost become a, an episode of Bake Off, with everyone bringing down their best, best <laughs> efforts at the cakes. And it, it, not only was it a, a small fundraiser for the club, but as I say, it was just a community event that gets, gets people down, and you can hear how people's winters went, and who's not around, who's new around. And you get uh, to taste Becca Gallagher's latest yeah. recipe. Becca's, <laughs> Becca's cakes, yes. I've become one of her pesto customers this season. I heard a whisper in the official's tent that she made the best pesto in Dublin, and so I decided I should sample it, being president, and this is my opportunity to tell people it. that I am fully endorsing it, absolutely. So, uh, in fact, I have a number of jars of it. I've had a number of jars of it over the oh, season. Well, so Errant throw from the field. I guess the keeper's stretching, but he does a very good job there. One of the bells comes off. Willie Houston will replace that with his deft touch. But yes, uh, I happened to mention, I was talking with Finton uh, during yesterday's game about the, the youth Sunday mornings in Pembroke and that Becca runs a coffee shop and, and uh, Becca's cakes. Um, and I got a text from her. Oh, from very good. Promising me free coffee for the winter for my... <laughs> my uh, endorsement of her services. Oh, excellent. So well, expect to get a case or two of pesto now <laughs> uh, through the door. Indeed. Well, the best pesto in Dublin. I'm afraid I'll have to, to down any other recipes. Becca's is definitely the best. That had been said, of course. I'm sure, Stella, you, you wouldn't refuse anybody else's offerings. Well, obviously. <laughs> you know. No, and indeed, you know, we're all gratefully received, though they probably won't be happening. They won't appear. Now, once you hang up the blazer, you become invisible. Well, you that's know? it, isn't it? <laughs> Back isn't to it? just being me, just scoring well, and being invisible. They are a lovely blazer, the Cricket Lannister one, so the, the presidents do, do always stand out. They do, indeed, yes. I'm, it's, um, I'm, I'm too scruffy to wear. Such a prestigious garment. It'd be like the green jacket for the Masters for me. Well, I, I would be a little bit the same. I, I discovered having to wear a blazer when I was president in Van Tarf, and I discovered actually that it, it's... I would always be for casual clothes, but it, it's not as bad as I imagined it would be. And so um, I've become quite used to it, become quite attached to my little blazer now. Yes. So I have to admit, I've... I've been a fan of the blazer at cricket matches, not just because it looks well, but also goes well with my casual clothes. Yes. I look scruffy at the best of times. <laughs> but um, I find it very useful because it's got a load of pockets. Indeed. And you, uh, unfortunately, women's blazers are not full of pockets. They have false pockets, false which is pockets. such a, a nuisance. That's a sin. It certainly is. Having said that, if I had pockets... I'd be carrying just about everything in it, so it's probably just as well that I don't. I was looking on Twitter earlier and somebody had posted a picture of Dickie Bird and he'd spread out on the table everything he carried in his pocket when he was umpiring. Oh, well fielded. And it was quite funny because Will Houston commented, there's no ball gauge and there's no back gauge. So even <laughs> over the years, what umpires have to carry is increasing the whole time, so no wonder they wear coats with loops and pockets and clips it's very true if you look at the list of things that you never imagined that they might need to carry yeah. you know you get things like nail scissors well, the strangest thing i saw in dicky bird's collection was a weighing scales little pocket weighing scales they okay. used for weighing the balls, weighing the sure balls still yeah. within the tolerance Oh, that's a bit high. Mm. The bowler stifling his appeal before it came out it was the last ball of the over 24 gone now 72 for four. So we're nearly at drinks now, and North Kildare need 205 from 26 overs. Again, not an impossible task, but one has to feel that it's very much an uphill task. I, I think that's probably understating the, the monumental nature of the challenge. It, it's a huge ask, but having said that, I think they need to they need to post a reasonable score here so that they can they can go home at the end of a game and feel we've given it our best shot because it's a great achievement to get here.
to be in the championship final. Yes, when you see the um, other teams in the championship. Indeed. You'd have expected Railway Union, North County, Rush, all to have been pushing for this place, and North Kildare got to this playoff ahead of all of them. Indeed. There are some very well-known clubs in there who you would have imagined would have been challenging to move back up. Some of them that were in the Premier League in the not-too-distant past. Um, but th that was the point I was making earlier, that it's good to see a, a couple of clubs that, that haven't been in the Premiership before, but have the hunger and have the ambition and have put in the work to give themselves the opportunity to get there. I think that's hugely positive. So, And if you do read the the programme notes that are online, or you have a copy of the programme, as you can see, a new name on the trophy today. Neither of these sides have won the championship. The figures I have in front of me are from 1993 onwards. Contain such clubs as the, the unfortunate, no longer with us, Carlisle. Indeed. But you see, uh, Pembroke in 2012, 2001, Railway, Leinster, YM, Phoenix, all the names of clubs that have won the Premier League and, and the First Division and Senior won over the years. And it's amazing, actually, what I've seen before is people winning the championship, moving on and keeping the momentum going and winning the Premiership the following year. So, you know, anything can happen when you have a positive mindset and when things start to go your way. Um, if you can keep that progress going, it's surprising where you can get to. One suspects that uh, certainly, as they call drinks, and the score is now 76 for four, myself and Stella will both leave for good this time. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and we shall let Finton McAllister and Gentleman Jim back into the box. Thank and we'll you, see you later. Thank you, sir. Um, Thanks to Craig and uh, Stella there. And bringing on, it's myself and the McAllister back with, with Jim Bennett. Well, Jim, it looks like it's probably only going one way at this stage anyway. Yeah, it's looking like it, unless somebody gets well in, and it's very hard to see them getting, what, 200 runs and 25 overs. Yeah. That's, that's a good sum. 25 into 200 goes how often. Yeah, yeah it'd be a big ask. You've enjoyed the last two days, anyway, of the of the of the cricket. Be fantastic. I, I can look at this, Fintan, because I really don't care who wins. You know, from the point of view, you're not involved emotionally. Yeah, it's of course. totally different to when you're looking at your own club and you're worrying and so on. You know, this is just you love looking at cricket. And, and I mean, I was in Stormont on Friday. I was in Stormont on Wednesday. And again, you look at it and enjoy it. It's great. And you've got plenty of uh, you've got the plenty of matches this year yourself. You've yeah, we've seen a lot. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of youth cricket as well because with Stella and very involved as well, at presentations, we've seen a pile of youth cricket, a pile of fine youth cricketers, boys and girls, very very good. So it's and I mean I've seen all the hills matches. So that that uh, looks after the year. It's great. It's great. Well, it's a long winter. True. Yeah. True. We'll be back into the into the youth programs on, on the the Friday nights now with all the with all the clubs. Yes, yes, yeah, and, and, and it's it's something that's very necessary because uh, you have okay, I've seen very good cricketers, but I, I, I'd you know I'd have a concern about going forward, the whole promotion of excellence, the pursuit of excellence. I think we need to look at a little bit at this stage, you know, with our young cricketers, um, you know, to, to produce on our own. Can we can we do the continue to produce good young cricketers? Of course, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Long break, isn't it? The old uh, drinks break take taking a bit of time here now. Yeah. Who who were you most impressed with here today? Connor Fletcher was very good, it beautifully, and the the runs at the end, where the acceleration, uh, the Freitas, uh, lovely knock as well, 
and and who was the the other other man got to runs very quickly as well. Of course, Greg Ford. Greg Ford, Greg yeah, Ford. he came in with, with great intent straight away, didn't he? He did, he just... did yeah, and, and look as if he was batting on a different wicket some of the time to the other players. I mean, was very, very good. Uh, that type of acceleration where you have momentum is a killer on the on the opposition. Yeah, I think I think the big thing for for um, Bad Brigham was I think every, everyone really chipped into into the party, didn't they? They did, yeah. They, they, they all got some runs. You know, and, and and there was a fair level of acceleration, but a stand of sort of over 90 is a match winning stand. Yeah, big time, yeah. I think as soon as that score went up of 276, it was always going to be hard to. Well, we were here yesterday, you know, and you were saying 260, big, big score. There's no one to come near it. No, when, when you see that being bettered today, uh, it's very. And the early North Kildare lads didn't get runs. Has the other lads under serious pressure? True, I think a lot relied on on the likes of uh, Manil Patel there and, and Wacker Azmat, and they went in the power play, which you can see from the celebrations from the um, from Bad Brigham. Bar- all players, big time, yeah. They, they and there was a great catch behind. Brilliant, yeah. Super catch. You as a outstanding wicketkeeper would appreciate that, Finto. You know, <laughs> great, you know, brilliant catch. You know, yeah. what I mean, I went all stick. You know, at your day, you know. It was, yeah, Connor Fletcher. He's having a he's having a fantastic day. Oh, with the bat and behind, and behind with the and gloves. Behind the stumps, yeah, he's a decent keeper. Yeah, he's been he's been very good. Players just taken back to the field here now. Looks like we're going to start now in a couple of couple of moments. More spin, is it? No, numbers make it makes it difficult, doesn't it, to, to identify players? But uh, yeah, to identify looks like it's still in. Luis is it coming back for back on here now at the moment? And um, yeah, we were only chatting chatting earlier on there about um, we said Dwayne Harper. He's, he's been around for a long time now. He's been a great servant with Balbriggan, and he's played played with his coach as well, Andre Bota. Oh yeah, that's, I mean I can remember uh, 1999. Uh, the Hills had a very fine under-15 team and they played Balbriggan in the Leinster final and uh, we beat Balbriggan in that. In that. Balbriggan were very, very strong and we then played the All-Ireland against Dunhamana. First three balls were hit out into the wood by Dunhamana. Game over. Our, our opening bowler, whose name I won't mention, pulled the hamstring and didn't bowl anymore after the third one went into the wood. <laughs> uh, he'd had enough cricket for one day. Uh, but um, Dwayne was playing at that time and he has been a great servant of cricket. You know, to see a lad playing cricket 25, 30, it's, it's wonderful to see that level of commitment. You know, and it's, it's not easy nowadays when, when lads are at ground so early. You know, with visualising from about two hours before the game starts and that. So it's it's, it's not easy for lads with family commitments and work. So it's, it's, he's, he's a great lad. Yeah, big time, yeah. Completely agree. Yeah, and when we look up at the left there, there's Brian Harper. Now, I taught him in my first job in Balbriggan. Right, OK. There, yeah. there he is. So that's, that's my links with Balbriggan go back a long way. <laughs> so that's, that's the, the great Brian Harper. You, you know by that finish, the refinement that I had taught him. <laughs> Yeah, plenty of ball breaking support here today, I'm sure. Oh, big appeal goes up there. Going down leg. Looked like it could have been could have been straight down the leg side. Definitely enough out there and good decision from, from Will Houston. Just clip down the ground for one there towards mid on, and that brings up the 26th over. There we are, we're 79 for four off 26 overs, and Balbriggan certainly looking like they're going to be doing the business here. And I have to say, the, the Hills had a, they had a great year themselves as well, didn't they? The Good year, Fendo. We're very happy with it. Um, three games in five in the, the T20. Uh, one game abandoned with weather. And um, really the only bad game we played... Well, we were well beaten by Merrion, I must say, a good side, and didn't play well against yourselves. But, you know, you play as well as the opposition lets you. 
and Malahide were very good that day. Uh, some big scores that day, wasn't there? A centurion. There was, yeah, two centurions, yeah, Matt Ford and Callum Callum Rich right, yeah. yeah, got yeah, 140 yeah, that yeah, day yeah, as well. Yeah. So. And, and you're sort of out of the game when, when there's a score that big. Two umpiring persons are in the act here. What would you think it's for? And just a bit of a conference going on here at the moment. Might have been a couple of things, yeah, but two umpires just meeting R to get it to nip it in the bud. R or the danger area would it be perhaps the batter on the... Britain, I suppose, like Marion, have been the most, uh, probably the most dominant teams in in, in both leagues. There, they and have, they and, and when you think about it, wouldn't it have been severe for a team that wins a league by a lot to be beaten in the final? True, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, I mean, Balbriggan have been very, very good all season. Uh, good batting side, good bowling side, and you know they're, they're being coached very well by. Andre and the lad, they've said to me how you know how committed they are now to practice. Players are turning up for nets and so on. You know, they were said even this week they had they had three grass wickets for the lads to practice on, and that has made a difference to them. You know, so it's it's a, it's it's great, and there'll be an addition to the to the Premier League. Yeah, I think they're they're very much ready for it. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've a good side there. They've shown to Adrian Harper earlier on as well, and. Like you said there, he says there's just plenty of lads going training now and it's it's just a given that lads go training. It's what you do, yeah. You know, I mean, if you have 15 for nets, you have you have selection. If you have six for nets, you can't do anything about it. You have to pick the other five whether you like it or not, you know. So but you can have great discipline when you have people turning up and committed to your side as well and committed to, to playing. And Andrew would be a serious cricket man. So he'd, he'd want lads to play cricket seriously. I mean, we've passed him a few times now today and we were suggesting to him three or four times, you know, that you should declare... He said, no, no, you never have enough. No, and we said, yeah, we were starting that about 180. Uh, no, no, he said, you never have enough. And, and you know, that's, that's cricket played seriously. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and that spirit he inculcates into the team as well. You know, that you, you know, he also would have them talking more about themselves rather than about the opposition. You know the way you can talk yourself out of the game? Oh, that fella, is a, that fella always gets me out and he always gets runs against us. Concentrate in your own game. Yeah, very, very much true. I think just focus on, on what you do well, and that's all you can really do yeah, as well, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than just talking yourself out of it, that oh, he's he'll always get runs against us, and you know, he's turning it square and all the rest of it. No, we'll concentrate on what we do well, and we'll take it from there. You know, so so he has brought that positive outlook to the to the club. You know, so interesting now with three. Fingal teams in in the Premier League next year. Some some local derbies and yeah, they good. Will. Yeah, there'll be there'll be a few local derbies there. All right, um, that's a bit, it's a tight league up at the up in the Premier League as well. One one or two wins can you can bring you right up the table, or else one or two losses on the back end of that can can bring you right down. Oh yeah, and you're terrified, and you sort of start the, unless you're a very strong team. You start the year hoping you won't be relegated. That, that's your first target, you know, rather than think about winning it, you're saying, right, if we can get four wins early on, we're safe. Now we can think about going forward to win. But if you, if you lose the first two or three games, uh, you can be on the back foot for, for the, you know, and now you're, now you're in trouble because, because when you, lads are lacking confidence and then, you know, the commitment can be slack then if, if you're getting into trouble. So no, it's, it's vital. To, uh, to get a few wins early on because it's a very com now it's one of the problems with the league actually it's so competitive it's very hard to bring players on because you can't blood them every game matters yeah that's true yeah you know no, I suppose the possibility if it went up to a 10 team league there might be a little bit more leeway but with an 8 team league if not, and especially if, if it goes back next year to two teams down you know two out of eight going down quarter is, is, is a lot true yeah, yeah. That's well played here. Nice shot, yep. Yeah, just got inside the line. And it's down for two. 
And you've you've obviously uh, Jimmy, you, you've been around for for many years watching cricket. Have you have you seen the game develop now much over over that time, or have things changed? Yeah, the, the, when the fielding is way better, the standard of fielding is appreciably higher, uh, and the level of intensity. Um, I know there'll be a school of thought that says the bowling is not as good. That in an era when one two fellas bowled. You know, uh, there was no such thing as a weaker bowler coming on as the fifth change or whatever, you know. So you would have that. I know they would have said about the likes of Dougie Goodwin and Malahide that he bowled from April to September. You know, uh, and I can remember asking some of our lads about different cricketers and they would say the bowling was better. Yeah. Uh, that there was no one that you could say, right, we'll wait till he comes on. You know, but I mean, you know yourself, you're involved in youth and you're involved in development. You want to involve people as well. So if you've only two people bowling, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. But that would be I mean, and again players think a lot more about the game, you know. And then we have the fact that there's a pathway. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you were playing underage, you know, you weren't really looking at a career. And now we can bring boys from 13, 15, 17, 19 into the youth setup and higher. So there it, it that structure, it, it, I mean, you couldn't see 10 years ago, even 15 years ago that we could possibly have a professional setup. You know, yeah. so that that's the biggest of But I don't know. You, I mean, you've played right through the bit. I mean, do you? What, I mean, the bowling would be the one that I would ask. Is that better? Um, yeah, I, I probably a bit on the on the on the fence about that. I mean, um, you de- definitely like bowlers back back in um, back a couple of years ago as well. Especially with we haven't had pros, I suppose, in two years as well now. Um, you come across some fantastic prof- overseas professionals who are bowlers, and and that was hard to hard to get through, but. Certainly, as you say, probably um, a long time ago, there, there was no restrictions. It was just that's a right. ball from both ends. Ball over. Yeah, I, mean, I was at the Ulster, the NCU final now, with Simon, Simon, I met Simon Corlett, and he used ball 10 overs of quick stuff, and then ball 15 of slow stuff. He bowled one end. Right, so yeah. he, you had to have nearly eye surgery to take <laughs> the ball off him. So he, he bowled, and that was it. Now, so there wouldn't be an awful lot of involvement if, you, if, you're, if you're a bowler, you know. Um, and I mean, the lads in the hills would say the same, you know, that you lads bowled and, you know, you just stayed bowling until you got fed up of bowling and then somebody else bowled, you know. So it, it, it was, the, the, there's no doubt I think that if you, well, obviously you're dealing quality. If you only have two bowlers, you have a better chance of having two good bowlers than having five of a yeah. level. <clears throat> uh, so, but you want people involved in the game as well. They won't keep playing it if they don't get a chance to. So it's, it's the, it, it would be the only area that I would say is not necessarily as good the batting techniques have improved people think a lot more about what they're doing they're visualising and so on I mean definitely the feeling is there's no comparison yeah. I mean part of the problem then as well as you said t hundreds and T20s and these um, the bowlers you nearly be better with a bowling machine yeah, and yeah. send the ball up the other end and put it up to about 130 miles an hour now see can you put me into the stand because it's either into the stand or into the river uh, the bowler's really only there to put the ball up the other end to see how far your man can hit it uh, so you know what I mean so bowlers are getting well the bowlers have always argued that batsmen were always the administrators that every change that was brought in is brought in by batsmen by batsmen feeling, yeah. feeling restrictions everything is against the ball I mean for example um, why would you take off a baller who's doing well but you don't ask the batsman to retire when he gets 50 and ask him to go home but the poor baller is told yeah you have enough done now so the only so the ballers have always had that persecution complex uh, that they're I don't know what you'd I mean you'd, you'd be sort of involved in the chalk face so you'd <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, I also as a, as a batsman wicketkeeper, I'll, I'll never complain with with things going the batsman's way. Well, there for you that are. Here, you see, so. that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the only place that bowler ever get their revenge is they, they, a lot of them become umpires, and then they come into and then they come into their own. Uh, you know, but it, it's a hard call. You know, with the you know with the fielding restrictions and and now I have kind of I'm ambivalent about it because I think you need involvement. You know, so I I, I think you you if players were, were going on a Saturday not getting a ball and perhaps batting down the it's it's the downside actually of 2020 mm. I mean I'd met lads this year in the early 2020s and they were well into the August and they still hadn't had a bat I mean if you're number 6 or number 7 uh, you're not getting a bat no there's not a whole lot of point going out if you're only fielding in terms of pleasure so, I, so I, I'd you know I, I think the batsmen and just I think a little bit of balance is needed Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, know what you mean. Um, th- it takes a bit of a swing at that and head out towards Cow. 
for a single. Um, I have to say, Balbriggan, have, they've, they've bowled great lines and lanes here today. And are very disciplined. And, and decent feeling side as well. They're, they're enthusiastic and, you know, very, very committed. I mean, if you're applying the old rule of thumb that double the score to having 30 overs, you can see how, how, how short North Kildare are. Of you know, course, yeah. Of, of, you know, Mindel. That's fielded there by Nathan Rooney. That's the great Nathan, yeah. Looks... Looks like a Leinster, it looks like a Leinster Lightning shirt, number 10, and I'm actually going to go for I'm going to say that's an X shirt of John Mooney's, I would imagine. I think he was number 10. Very good. Would that be a soccer? That's the, for, for Leinster Lightning. Yeah, but it would it be a soccer? Would it be a number 10? Would that be why he had oh, the number 10? Yeah, I think he always just played with number 10, 10 the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the John boy. He was obviously doing his coaching out in in North County at the moment and, doing a good and, job there and batting very well and batting yeah and playing no, yeah, I mean, we, we even played against him now and he was very very good both days I mean the day we beat him we felt we beat him because we got him and the day they beat us we didn't get him uh, very very good batting beautifully and very composed uh, you know it's it's actually what the the Irish team at times is missing is, that, is a player coming in at 7 or 8 who's that good that, that will get your runs, guaranteed runs. Uh, no, batting very well and knows what he's doing. And, and I suppose you'd know yourself, the more you coach, the more you understand what you're trying to do. Yeah, John Mooney's been a fantastic servant for, for Irish cricket. Um, just a top ball there. It's a mid-wicket to captain Greg Ford. Yeah, North County probably a side that they, they probably would have would have hoped to been in and around about. I tell you, we're very disappointed. Um, but the days they lost, they lost badly. You know what I mean? They didn't seem to get a momentum up because you see about North Caldown, County and perhaps um, Railway, you know, that had potential. But uh, particularly North County, it, it, the season didn't happen for them. You know, it's uh, with good young side and, you know, plus John and Eddie with experienced cricketers. Uh, but uh, you know, I suppose that's life. And just brought the back to hit that nicely. Feel it gets round to it does well to keep it to the single. Still only a one, yeah. Yeah, they've been outstanding in the field here today, have have Bal Brigan. With a well set field as well. When you, when you see the lads hitting the ball to fielders I mean we, we I remember we were one of the lads that they wanted him hard as the Irish fielding coach because he was the best man they ever saw hitting fielders with the ball <laughs> and the harder he hit them the more they hit the fielders so the lads said if he, he, he would be the man to employ as the next fielding coach they never saw a man better at finding fielders <laughs> and, and I mean going back a long time Eddie Burrell came in to talk to the under 13s for me one day and uh, the lads said, you know, said Eddie said what do you do what do you do first when you come out oh you look around and Fourth, was it? Yeah, well played. Just kind of, yeah. kind of paddle sweeped it around the corner there. It is John Mooney shirt. Think. Yeah, but Eddie said to the lads, "Oh no, no." He said, "You look where the fielders are," and they said, "No, no, no. You look where the gaps are." You know, and and so that's to say, our man that was good at hitting fielders. That was his function. He was great at hitting them. Hitting them, yeah. That's uh, in, that's an interesting co concept. Looking more on the on the positive side of by looking looking at the gaps rather than, yes, than yeah, actually that's looking. Yeah, that's where you want. And he was great on that. That you always look where <coughs> the gaps are. You know, uh, rather that you know. And you, you see it now. I, I'd see the lads talking. You said about fellas hitting the ball too hard that it arrives to the fielder where it's only one, and if they hit it easier. It would be slower to get out to the fielders, and it would be two, you know. But uh, much easier to play the game from this side of the rope, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. Here's, here's, oh, here's wide. And the signal comes out for five wides from Willie, Willie Clark, and that brings up Norkel there's 100. 100 yes. And 
what will be the plan now for the winter for for yourself anyway, Jim? Not enough. Lot. Well, no, I, I, I'm... Well, as I say, my wife talks about my facility for picking unpaid work. So I have a good few things on, a good few projects. Um, I, I'm obviously president-elect, so that's that's one thing. But I, I'm hoping to get involved in setting up an archive for Cricket Leinster. We have an awful lot of material in houses that we want to put into the library down in Pier Street so that people will be able to access... You know, when people stop as secretaries or whatever oftentimes they wonder what to do with what the material so that's that's one of the jobs and uh, uh, Alan Little then asked me the stuff I had the Fingal stuff that I had written you know the history stuff will we make a book of it so that's that's another job and uh, Pascal Henchy asked me if I could be interested in doing a history of Portran Hockey Club right, you know, so okay, there's all so sorts of, of lit but the, the, the archive is an interesting one because there's an awful lot of material around 31 overs north that, that clubs have but clubs like don't have Brooke, storage there's overs, bounce, yeah. overs, and there is a very fine sports library in Pear Street so the athletics are down there the hockey are down there now the FAI don't because they have their own and the GA has its own and the rugby has its own but they would be get all the cricket material together yeah, it's, it just sounds like there's a, a lot of work involved in that anyway, and just in getting all the material from Yeah, well, Derek Scott, over the years. A lot of mercy on Derek. All his stuff is down in a shed in down in the Midlands, down near me at Thomas, in Stradbally, in Roland, Roland, just near Stradbally. Roland Bradley has it all upstairs in the loft. Now, there's a question of moving that from his loft somewhere else. Now, my wife has said it's not coming into our house. Uh, so <laughs> so we're, 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 but that, that's the go somewhere. Now, but they're not terribly interested in books. What they were, want our minutes. You know, they said today's match programme. That kind of thing. Quick single there. Just hit through to mid-wicket. Yeah, no, sounds sounds very so that's, interesting. So that's one of the jobs, Finto. So what are you doing? Uh, well, we'll be back now with the development in the in the schools. Now it'll be we'll be running our school programs from now until right, right throughout the year, and then um, we do our Friday nights with the, the with, elite squads, with the under underage squads. Yeah, so. Oh. Oh. And there's another wicket. Bold. Yeah. That's Mamazil Shazad. Oh, and that's the fifth wicket down. Yeah, certainly just a case of ball it down and if you miss, I hit. Yeah, incoming in to bat now is Martaza Siddiqui. Good first ball up front, nice and straight. I think that's the first thing you want to see uh, um, from a bowler, from a lad on their first ball, is, is making sure that they play. Oh yes, don't give don't give them a wide or a half volley or you know get, get them to play. But uh, it's a fair bit of pressure, and and it actually got dark. It has, yeah. The light the light has gone a bit here. But um, straight on the money there from the Freitas um, that, but that always be your thought as well now we've seen two tosses one and two two teams bat first in a final would that be oh, yeah. the thought for yourself oh, yeah. as well Run, runs on the board runs on the board and if you're good enough to get them more of that to you oh no yeah, uh, I mean the, the great Don Bradman you know nine times out of ten you bat and then the tenth time you bat as well you know right. so don't, you know, don't be oh, don't be codding yourself you know it's 
and you know yourself it's a different game when you're chasing when you're batting first you don't know what a good score is but the good old Fingal one when a fella asks you oh, is that a good score well I'll tell you at the end of the second innings whether it was or not uh, <laughs> you know so it's, it's uh, you know I mean 276 is when you're over 5 and over it's a big ask so you've seen two teams yesterday and today accumulate scores and, and particularly momentum at the end of innings where they look to be a smaller score and then drove it on another 40 or 50 and they're the ones that kill you yeah big time Nice, he stepped across the stumps and just worked that into the into the leg side and, 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 and well. his friend out and came back well for two there. I have to say it's been a, it's been amazing. Um, Bal Briggins, the transition they've jumped, they really jumped through the leagues, haven't they? Over they the have, last one. Uh, well, I mean, no I credit to them. Bowling for Bal Briggins coming back into yeah, back the back ten years. You remember when the divide was done away between junior and senior cricket? That they just became a senior club the last year of that junior senior divide, and then you know established themselves very well in the what was the old, we'll say, second division, and then when the Premier so established themselves. I mean, they've gone at it very methodically. I mean, they're now ready. You know, I think there's a real sense. I mean, looking out of that team now, that team would be competitive in the Premier League. You know, that they, they, and and they also have structures in place. Have, is this another catch? Another catch, another another wicket for Balbriggan. And it looks like that's caught by. Looks like Greg Ford, I think, down there. Tall man, and yeah. On the skipper. Manjeet Singh departs, caught by Campbell Davies Webb yeah. off the bowling of Dylan Lewis for 34. My apologies, it was Campbell Davies Webb who took the catch out there on the boundary. Hater, who was keeping in the first innings for Norco there. Deep square. And Nathan Rooney picks up for one. And Jim, would you have a favourite game now you've been to this year? Could you could you pick one? That you uh, we, good game here against Pembroke. 
vital, a vital game uh, about a uh, fortnight, three weeks ago. Okay. And we had been well beaten on the Thursday night by Merion. And uh, there were thoughts of relegation, you know, because lads tend to go very negative as they get a beating. And uh, Murray Cummins had got no runs for us of any consequence and came into form that day. Very, and Pembroke hadn't been beaten. We had a great mm. game against Pembroke. And then that was the start of a week of cricket because we played again on the Monday night. Good game against Leinster. Good tight game. Murray Cummins got runs again. On the Tuesday, we played Clontarf and beat Clontarf. And Clontarf would be... Oh, no, we beat Clontarf on the Saturday. Clontarf would have been our bogey team. If we are going to lose to anybody, we used to... So, what I said, a game against Pembroke. Um, very competitive Pembroke side. Gutsy team. And our lads were very, very good on the day. Very complete performance. Batted ball and field well. And it's, it's a rare day. I mean, I heard the national coach saying about the Irish team up to a while back. They had played good cricket, but they had never played consistently good cricket. Some days they bat well, some days they ball well, and some days they But that, that would be a day when our lads, where everything went. Everything went, yeah. And you have those days in, in cricket for sure. Oh, yeah, and you, and, and you need to value them because you'll get the days when everything goes against you. And, and uh, you, know, you kind of don't want to remember them too much during the winter. Big shout. Looked like he stepped across, probably going down the, the leg side. Um, good decision from... Will Houston. I think we were chatting about this um, during the day as well. I think the umpire over the last two days has been has been really really good. Good, yeah. It's uh, you know, all you ask is the same as with a soccer referee that they get the big decisions right. Now that's all you ask. You know that they manage the game. I mean, we're here to look at the lads playing. That the lads manage the game, manage it well, and it's unobtrusive, and that's what you want to see. Good umpire, get the big decisions right. And you know, any more than that, you can't ask for. And the, the, the four people that we've seen in the two days have been very, very good, very professional, very competent. And that's you know, it, it's a different game because if those people play down the grades where you have no umpiring, it tends to be a very exciting game. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been quite impressed. I have to say now, both playing and. Um, we cricket in the league this year as well with the, with the standard of umpire. And I think it's been I think it's been really high. So fair juice to the lads who are putting their work in behind the scenes on on that front. Yeah, I, it's something I suppose I would have argued for over the years. You know, was was well cricket Ireland nearly has an, you know is an elite panel of, of umpires. You know that the, the players are putting an awful lot into it, and they deserve the very best umpires at Premier League level because you're talking careers and everything. So it, it's you know and. If the umpires have to be, I suppose you need to be incentivised as well to improve. But with the same sort of rate of pay at all levels, it's uh, it, there's not an awful lot of incentive then. To, so, so I mean, elite. I mean, you can see cricket Ireland has done it now. They have four people full time, uh, and they're great. They can do in service. They can walk around with the other umpires and improve them. And you know, I mean, you want it, it's a long afternoon for a player who gets a bad decision. So you, you want to give the players every chance and you also want, a bit like this my day job, you know, substitutes get a hard run for their money because they haven't earned the respect. Uh, cricket umpires who are valued rarely have trouble because they're, they're respected from word go. They, the, people don't try things on with them. So I, I, I think that's what, that's what the game should be about, is every element of the game improving. Yeah, exactly, and that comes. That brings up the end of the thirty-fourth over, and Norkel there are one hundred and seven for six. And continuing from the sand is Dylan Lewis. <coughs> and what about uh, a man yesterday did very well, next Hills man, the Max Sorensen, did very well yesterday? Oh, yeah, I was going to give him it actually because he had been a Hills man, uh, but I thought <laughs> I might get run out of the place. Uh, <laughs> And that will be seen as bias, but uh, I know Ma Max was a great servant to our club. I wouldn't have a bad word said against him. Fantastic character, lovely man, you know, very good yesterday. As a batter, could take the game away from you. Uh, and But in fairness, Stephen Doherty was 
superb. Yeah, you know, he certainly was. Batted very well, took two very good catches, and uh, I don't know if we could have given it to Max, I would. You know, I mean, <laughs> Fingalians look after their own. Uh, I'm kind of struggling a bit today, but uh, I, I, I could manage that as well. We'll see. Uh, but I have the car actually up at the gate, so I'll be moving swiftly. <laughs> I have to say, I really enjoyed the, the post-match uh, presentation anyway. We'll have another one here today. Yes, yes. Well, now I, I'll have to speak to the people about it because I got into trouble for not being properly attired. My wife spoke to me very firmly last night. You you, wouldn't, you weren't speaking to people dressed in shorts, were you? Uh, so oh, I sent, Beautiful sent, shot there around shot. the corner. Just got down on one knee, hit it around, swept it around the corner, and that brings up the end of the 35th over with Norkel there. 111 for six and with that and um, just thanks very much to jim and myself will be jumping off and bringing back isabel and craig thanks very much finton <coughs> entering the last 15 overs cricket at sydney braid this year not quite the close finish we'd have liked no it's i think we knew this uh that total that Balbriggan set and their bowling has been really really miserly that's the bowling card there I don't know if you can really pick a stand out there's been a few bowlers with uh, with wickets especially the two opening bowlers there dark and loose but it's Defratis again from the Wellfield Road end I think they've given up on appealing to Will Houston, <laughs> he's had an awful lot of appeals to his end and he's, I think he's yet to make a decision. Chris DeFraser's one of these left-handed bat, right-handed bowler, right-arm bowler. North Kildare have now reached Nelson. Don't see too many people standing on one leg. He's got him. Took the edge of the bat and crashed into leg stump. That's seven down now, and surely the death knell of North Kildare's hopes of reaching the Premier League for 2022. Yeah, really good bowling that from De Freitas, full and straight, and just creeps under the bat of uh, Hader there. You can see even the celebration muted at this stage. But, uh, Balbriggan take another step towards that Premier League place for 2022. Yeah, really exciting times for them. It's one, it's it's a funny one though. It's a tough league, the the Premier League. Uh, lots of work they'll have to continue to do in Balbriggan to to stake their claim. But a really good all, all around uh, team. This well balanced, led well by Greg Ford. They're certainly building something well, and something for the future. Having had a little chat with Albert Harper on one of my laps around the ground, he was outlining that uh, they'll certainly be looking to do more than just survive in the Premier League next year. Uh, although they do have a couple of South Africans in the side, they will be back for the following years, both of them studying four-year courses. That can only be good news for Balbriggan and Balbriggan cricket. And the incoming batsman well, you expect Gilder them to Mosival. be staying in uh, in Ireland then because they'll be studying presumably during the winter. So the new batsman is opening batter Wasif Ali and he's got a mountain to climb, still 166 required from just 15 overs. Yep, I felt he was underused as a bowler, had a fine opening spell. Actually ended up only bowling seven of his ten overs. And in fact was only brought back on because the bowler the captain wanted to bowl had used his ten. So I was most amazed that they hadn't gone to the most economical bowler they had. And now, well, they're sometimes hoping, now they're hoping he's the biggest batsman they have. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes I was going to say there's there are certain bowlers who just don't come back well. It might be the case with, with Ali. Um, or maybe he's just a nice kind of pace for the back end of an innings. He doesn't have, doesn't have, like doesn't clock big numbers, but quick enough to to help you get him to the rope. So we'll give the benefit of the doubt to the skipper. 
Fraser's in now. Big it's swing nice of the shot. bat has it in the air through the covers, but nobody there underneath it. Yeah, slices it really. It's a single. Oh, at least it gets them off Nelson anyway. And it gets Ali off the duck egg, and it's Kwaja Murtaz Sadiqi back on strike. He's on eight from 18. He'll have to improve that strike rate immeasurably if he's going to help North Kildare up to that winning target. A bit of extra play, pace from De Freitas there. Sends it up around the around the nose of Siddiqui. Just at the break in the over. Just to let you know, the Division 5 final is happening today down in Leash in Strad Bally. Leash posted 137 all out, which wouldn't seem like the biggest total, but civil service are now 79 for five. The Division 8 final in Chilstown Park sees Chilstown first all out for 113 and Marion Force are 93 for four. Could be more silverware coming back to Anglesey Road there today. Unfortunately, that's the end of the live scoring. Except Division 17 final, where Terenio posted 209 and Fingless thirds 143 for four. So that, that's kind of shaping up into a tight finish. Yeah, what a what a good uh, facility that is. That live scoring, big swing and big appeal. Umpire and the finger comes up Lily slowly, Clark. but up it comes nonetheless. And that's eight down now. Yes, that did look adjacent. That's the eighth wicket now for Balbriggan. And they're closing in on the finish. Have a look at this. Um, did turn a little bit, but it hit him on the back leg, which is, I think, what's done for him there. Well, he's certainly covering all the stumps. And William Clark sees him on his way. That's Siddiqui gone for nine. He decided to try and accelerate his innings, but failed and has gone at LBW. In at 10, we have it's James Smith. 13, Murtaza Siddiqui departs LBW to the bowling of Dylan Lewis. And the incoming batsman for North Kildare is James Smith. Yeah, so James Smith comes out into the middle, thought he bowled well in the first half of the game. Took some, took the important wicket and bowled six overs for 34. Took the wicket of the opening batsman, Connor Fletcher. Not known for his batting, unfortunately, for North Air. <laughs> very much a fast bowler. Thought he was really good in the field as well, actually. He fielded very well and they, they kept him in the covers. And he did a fine job there, flinging himself left and right. It's a funny one, this for a final, isn't it? That North Kildare are so happy to, to play a lot of forward defences. There's no prizes, no no bonus points for no. facing a certain number or to getting it to, to a certain total. So really you can throw a band into the wind and just see what you can do. See if possibly you might pull off a miracle. And a miracle it would be at this stage. Just two wickets left, 13 and a half overs. It's still over 150, over 160 required. And that's another LBW. William Clark again. He sees off James Smith, shuffled across in front of his stumps. And now the, you can feel the excitement on the Balbriggan supporters. They know they are so close now to capturing this Boer Kit Championship final. And the prize that goes with it, a place in the Premier League for next season. Well, they've just out, outplayed North Kildare today, and there's no shame in that. It's a really strong team, this Balbriggan side, and 
I think North Kildare can be proud of the fact that they got to the final. Um, they've, they're a really improved side over the last three or four years and plenty of uh, more opportunities, I hope, in the future for them to to make an effort again to get promoted. But it's it's going to be, at this stage, it's going to be Balbriggan who uh, get that spot, that coveted spot up in the Burkett Premier League next year. Well... I also have to say this, this, the traditionalist in me who says whoever finishes top of the table should be champions, but obviously modern sport is different now. But the two teams that have finished top of the leagues are the ones who are walking away with the silverware. So all is well with the world. I completely agree with you. I think it's one of those they'll be delighted that they got their chance to play in a final and have their supporters there and have the marquee occasion. But if they'd come out the wrong side of it, then they'd feel very differently, Belbergen. Um, they've been really good all season won the league comfortably by 20 points so if they had messed up today then uh, or if one of the North Kildare bowlers had had a, a really good day out early on then they would have felt pretty aggrieved but anyway well, it's not just the it's match itself but you, you, you have the situation whereby if, if Balbriggan hadn't put themselves in this very strong position to win the game would they have retained all their players or would they have gone looking for another club in the Premier League? And that would have been a shame and undone a lot of the good work done. But as it is, the number 11 plays that one out. Yeah, it's Devan Spensali. Places that one out. One experience for the 19-year-old, youngest member of the North Kildare team. His left arm over bowling. Over completes Dylan Louise. 10 over spell, 10 overs, two maidens, four for 30. Excellent spell of bowling there for Dylan Lewis. 10 overs, uh, four wickets, two in that final over of his spell. 30 runs, one maiden. Um, really good return for him and batted well early as well. A handy little knock, 30 from 25 deliveries. A good all round game for him today. It's going to be difficult for Jim Bennett, who was just on commentary, to decide who's uh, going to be player of the match. But now we have Chris De Freitas. Uh, he's going to continue from the Wheelfield Road end. You're absolutely right. There are a number of names in the frame for that player of the match, but certainly uh, Dylan Lewis has put his name front and centre. Well, his main competitor is the man with the gloves behind the stumps, you'd have to think. That's Connor Fletcher, 81. He did get himself out with a rash shot. If he'd carried the bat or if he'd made a century, then I think he'd be a certain two catches behind the stumps as well. But uh, there's a bit of competition now. Well, again, another similarity with yesterday's Premier League final. Opening batsman scored 80 runs. Took a couple of catches. Yeah, absolutely. It's honestly like a mirror image, isn't it? Like the, the wicketkeeper opening the batting and making 80. I think it's one run difference between them, was it? Yeah, I think so. Stephen Downey made 82. Good to see Ben Sally's looking to, to score. Just going to see how many runs he can take Chris De Freitas for. I think both sides, when they retire for the evening, will be happy enough with their seasons. North Cordell would have been delighted to have managed to come second in a league containing such sides as Railway and North County, Rush, Cork County, Terenure. All of them won three games. Yeah, but a bit of a dis just goes for a single there as the batsman is very keen to get off the mark and get off the mark he does. Yes, uh, actually a huge amount of similarities between yesterday's game and this one. Uh, if you didn't have any interest in the Premier League yesterday, you've certainly heard all about it today, so you didn't didn't completely miss it. Yes. <laughs> So similar the two games, although um, to be fair to Pembroke, they they did 
bat slightly better, well, a good bit better than um, North Kildare have managed today. And that's the final wicket. That's the game. Celebrations from Christopher Aitas takes out the, the cartwheel. He's taken the 10th wicket of the day. He's castled Sadiq or Ali. And the final wicket goes down for North Kildare. Goes for two. Valley bowled by Chris North Kildare Andrew all out for 115. And Balbriggan are one victory the Bukit Championship winners. final this winners of 2021. 2021. Big cheers from the Balbriggan supporters. And they certainly deserve that victory today. I think they've outplayed North Kildare. And they've shown North Kildare just the sort of level of play they're going to need for, the final for going into next season. Goes leg side, has a massive heave, and really was nowhere near that. Look at this celebration. Not sure he'd be getting 10 out of 10 at the Olympics for that, but uh, <laughs> a nice little moment. And this is the thing as well about um, getting the final. There's going to be a post-match presentation, a player of the final, and the supporters get to listen as their as their captain thanks them for their support and, and all the, the, all of those nice things. So um, I'll be delighted to have their moment in the sun well it's been a fine season and a fine end to a fine season what a wonderful weekend of cricket in Sydney Parade many thanks to Cricket Leinster for all the organisation but mainly thanks to the four teams that played at the weekend and provided us with such good entertainment yeah huge thanks as well to Pembroke for hosting of course Niall running around behind us here working so hard to bring you these pictures that man in screen as well Jim Bennett what a, what good times we had listening to him thanks as well to my co-commentators it's Finton McAllister and Craig Senior um, I think that's all the thanks for now Craig it is I'll I let, shall I'll let you I'll get let away him. because you've I'll got you a, wrap up a presentation to present correct thanks and so much. thank you very much Izzy and thank you very much for the education received this weekend. I know myself and Finton have thoroughly enjoyed our work and it's been uh, a lot of it down to very professional work of Isabel Joyce and the very, well, the great work done by Niall Walsh on a technical side of things. Niall now setting up for the presentation and uh, just before that presentation comes up, Noel Walsh now is going to hopefully show you the highlights from today's game. The big hits, the big wickets, the big catches. And the teams now, and they're over at the tents at the moment, but they're, they'll shortly be up to the clubhouse for the presentation. The presentation's now being set up. Yes, it's been a an unusual, historic, history-making year with Cricket Leinster doing some magnificent work. <laughs> and many thanks to the administrators of each and every club out there, because without you, we wouldn't get days like this. There's so much bureaucracy and paperwork that goes on behind the scenes that players very rarely see. And I tell you, the next time you happen to bump into your club secretary or your honorary treasurer or your president, just remember that these are unpaid positions. They're volunteers. And the benefits package doesn't really measure up. Free in to the finals, I suppose, is about the height of it. Or as Stella was telling us earlier, the wonderful blazer she gets to wear. But really, does that compensate you for the time, the effort? Stella, as well as being president, has also managed to score a few games for Clontarf Cricket Club. Yes, all in all, it's, it's been an excellent season with a fine finishing. So... As you watch the highlights of this game, the Championship Boer Kit Final. That was a lovely shot. We'll reflect back across a full season, really. Think of the times we actually had some sunshine. The times we played on through rain. And the times 
Yeah, she got runs and wickets. For me, it's been a fabulous season, thanks to the work of Niall Walsh. Without him, I wouldn't get to bore all 56 of you that are still with us. But it's been thoroughly enjoyable. But again, underrated and underpaid is Niall Walsh. Many thanks to Philip Byrne and Bavna Byrne for the work they've done for during these Cricket Leinster games. And uh, again, many thanks to the officials, including the umpires. William Clark, William Houston doing a fine job there. And it's been a fine weekend's cricket. So I'm going to say goodbye now. I'll hand you over to Izzy Joyce will be the next one you hear when she starts the presentation. When the teams finally make it across from congratulating themselves or commiserating with themselves over in the changing tents. And here's hoping that by the time next season comes around, we will once again be allowed to use the inside dressing rooms. Oh, the excitement. Ooh, no longer having to turn up for a game fully changed and ready to go. No longer having to spend the time after the game fully changed and maybe a bit honky. Anyway, it's been a fabulous season. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. And we'll see you again in 2022. But until then, the presentation with Isabel Joyce.
was in the state I was in yesterday. First of all, let me introduce our presentation party. We have Cricket Leinster President Stella Downs, Cricket Leinster President-elect, uh, that's Jim Bennett, and Hannah Quinn from our sponsors, Bukit Sportswear. So first of all, um, we're just going to have a word from our president. Good afternoon, everyone, and a really warm welcome to this final. I think it's it's been wonderful to see two new sides playing in the championship final. For so many years, it's the, the side that's gone down from division one, coming back up into division one again. And so it's really refreshing and really good for Leinster cricket to see two new sides in the final and putting on a really comprehensive performances right through the season to get to here. So I'd like to congratulate both sides. I think two clubs that are moving forward in a wonderful way and really pointing the direction forward for cricket right across Leinster. So congratulations to both sides on reaching the final. Last time in my presidency, I would like to thank Pembroke yet again for providing all the, the, their wonderful facilities for today's final. Um, we've been hugely appreciative in Cricket Leinster for everything that they've done throughout the season. Dale McDonough is a saint. I don't know how he has managed to produce so many wickets of such high quality right through the season. So a huge thank you to Dale and a huge thank you to all at Pembroke Cricket Club. A special word of thanks to our sponsors, to Bua Kit for uh, Bua Kit for the win. We'll give it the full title. Um, but to Bua Sports, that we really appreciate your support for cricket in Leinster. Uh, thanks to Hannah for being here today. Also, thanks to Andy for organising the sponsorship in the first place. Sponsorship is so important for our sport, and we would ask you to support them. And. To, to register your thanks with them as well because without sponsors our sport would be nowhere. So thank you so much to Andy and to Bula. <laughs> thanks also to the Cricket Leinster backroom staff. Done a phenomenal job this season. I think about 1,500 fixtures to be done on the spreadsheet. It's, it's no mean feat. Fair play, Simon Dyke. Well done to Kotze and also to Philip and to everybody in the Cricket Leinster office. To um, Niall and his team who've done a great job streaming all the finals and everything that has happened in Leinster, well in Pembroke since the start of the season. I don't think he's missed a mouse run across the, the pitch at this stage. Uh, thanks to Izzy, Craig and all the commentary team. Um, thanks to our umpires, our scorers, to all, to the officials, to just about everyone. It's hard to believe we're coming to the end of a season and um, well done everyone, but particularly congratulations to Balbriggan. I'm delighted for Albert. I know it's a very special day for him. He has been Mr. Balbriggan for so long and um, I think it, it's, it's great for him to, particularly, but for everybody associated with Balbriggan. Welcome to the big league. <laughs> Stella, really good words there. So first of all, thank you so much to our scorers, Alan and Ronan, if you can come forward and receive your medals. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And of course, our, our umpire is William Will. If you can come forward as well. And then you're doing this. Picture. Smile. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And now a word from the captain of the runners up from North Kildare, Manny Singh. I would like to thank Cricket Ireland and Leinster Cricket for organizing such a wonderful cricket season. And Philip Smith from Cricket Lancer. And I would also like to thank uh, sponsors of this, uh, in this tournament, Boa Kit. Uh, they have done a great job. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Pembroke Cricket for organizing two games in, in, in two days. That's been a, uh, and it's, it's been a great, uh, it's been a pleasure to play here for uh, today, uh, I'd like to thank scorers and the umpires, Will and William. Uh, I'd like to thank our support, uh, sorry, the supporters who have come in all the matches to support us. Thanks very much, and to the uh, ball breaking team. You've been great throughout the throughout the season, and then you have shown us today. Uh, you have. You have played great cr cricket, and then I think deservingly you are the top team, and then uh, deserve to go forward in the next in, the, uh, in Premiership. Uh, uh, I would like to thank my own team. It's been a pleasure to captain you all, guys. And it, it, it was tough starting this season when we lost six games on the trot, but you guys showed the strength and. Um, strength to come back and get into the finals. It's been a great achievement, guys. Uh, we'll do better next year. Yeah. Just that's it. Yeah, Wasif, Ali, James, James Smith, Devash, Osnan. And now the captain of the winning team from Balbriggan, Greg Ford. Just hang on one second, Greg. We have to do man of the match for <laughs> Sorry. Jim. He needs his moment. Come on. Thanks, Isabella. I thought it was off the hook. Um, first, I want to apologize. A uh, bit of domestic um, information. When I went home yesterday, and wife said, how'd you get on? I said, I got on great. I did the man of the match judging. I said, you're joking. You, you didn't give a speech dressed in shorts, did you? <laughs> I, I, I did, yeah. So um, was there any cameraman there? There was the photographer. I said, not only was a photographer, but it was filmed live. So that's why I'm wearing this today. I was put in the car, and it was insisted that I change into it immediately, not to let the family down anymore. So to everyone yesterday, my profuse apologies. Uh, and to this as well, now having been slagged by a man who's assumed I'm in court in the morning because I'm wearing a, a suit. Uh, so now, uh, will, I, will I stop now? Yeah, OK. <laughs> right, move, move on. So, um, man in a match. Uh, difficult enough, and it got progressively more difficult, which is why I moved my car uh, up to the top. The batting, superb batting. Connor Fletcher, 81. Magnificent performance, Connor. <laughs> Greg Ford, 
Lovely knock, 61. Christopher De Freitas, a 53, and Dylan Louise, 30 off 20 balls. So a 276, a fantastic total, a beautiful batting performance, and the third wicket stand in particular added on 94 runs, which looked like a match-winning score. The bowling for North Kildare was Eve Valley, 1 for 24, and James Smith, 1 for 34 off 6. Um, now, John Morgan, who would be my spiritual advisor, and his wife, who's been providing me with food uh, for the, all this season, which is why, thanks, Anna, um, they, they were advising me that that was a winning score, but I said no, I thought it might be chased. <laughs> I, I was always an optimist. Uh, now, North Kildare, there was a magnificent catch behind the wicket early on, which actually set the tone for a brilliant feeling performance. Uh, so. Bowling very, very good for Balbriggan, and this is what caused me all the dilemmas. Dylan Louise, 4 for 30, Christopher De Freitas, 3 for 11, Andy Dorrock, 2 for 19. And well done, lads, and brilliant feeling. On the batting, Manny Singh, uh, there was the biggest contribution for North Kildare, the captain we've heard him speak, 34, but difficult enough, but scoreboard pressure always has its own problems. Uh, so I, I, I'm not getting, now I would have a great affection for Balbriggan. I, I, another insight, my, my first teaching job was in Balbriggan. Actually, there's a fellow I taught here, you know by how the look of him, the impact I had on his life. Uh, but that was my first job, and of course I'm a Midlander, so I have great time for North Kildare as well. Uh, so, and I, I saw many years ago since I was in Balbriggan, I was in Swords a while back where I had a day job, and a fella said to me, I heard you were dead. And I, and I said, wishful thinking, my son, I'm still here to haunt you. So now, with all of that, uh, this is trying to defer. I haven't my mind made up yet. No, I have. <laughs> I was actually asking Philip for an old second prize, but I don't think the sponsors will stand to it. So, and I'm apologizing to everyone I didn't pick. Uh, is there enough suspense? That's right. Right, okay, right, okay. Yeah, get on with it, would you? Um, I think 81 and a magnificent catch that set the tone for everything. Man of the match, Connor Fletcher. Uh, hold on, I have to give you a bat, Connor. is not the greatest so I'll try to remember everyone I need to thank. Uh, firstly the sponsors, the scorers and um, the umpires and Pembroke for uh, the ground and obviously the good uh, batting wicket. Um, I'd also like to thank Damien, uh, Andre, happy birthday, um, Albert for uh, lifting everyone and uh, being a big part of the club. Um, North Korea, yeah, thanks for, for everything. As we've played you guys four times now, so we know you fairly well. Um, good luck to uh, Shazad on the Under-19 uh, Ireland uh, World Cup. And lastly, uh, Paul Brigham don't have a, a women's team, so thanks to the Melha girls for uh, looking <laughs> after the lads. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a it's been a really good season. Uh, the team environment's been outstanding, and uh, I don't know what else to say. It's just a, it's a, I'm I'm kind of sad that the season's got to come to an end. But um, <sighs> yeah. So um, can I call up uh, Andrew Derrick? Dylan Louise, Jenna Dara, Baruki, Fletcher, Savad, Nathan. 
Thanks, Ben Rooney. Just come right in, guys. Maybe two lines. Greg, you come in the middle. Greg, you come near the front. <laughs> so your 2021 book at Championship Final winners are Bal Brigham. <laughs> post-match presentation. Do you think uh, you can throw a point in there? Can any Balbriggan supporters and players yeah. please head on the Grant, pitch for a photograph? Yeah. Yeah. You've been summoned yeah. by others. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Just here. Yeah. Yeah. Three and four are in Maryland. Everything else.